Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the NECC. We are bringing you week one of our League of Legends season, and I, as well as Random Minion, are making our debut for the very first time on this stream. We've got a great slew of games all throughout tonight, but first up, we're covering Converse versus University versus Bay State Blue. We're tongue twisted. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a long name here, Zephyr, you know, so we might just shorten it to Blues versus Converse here, but apologies for the delay in the startup. There were just some little roster wrinkles here, but hopefully that gets moved out. And more importantly, Zephyr, we're going to get right into it shortly here. And I cannot wait for these teams because there are members of these teams who I do recognize and who I'm very much looking forward to back on the Rift. Oh, absolutely. Not just on what is both these teams, but the individual players themselves have a long standing history here in the League of Legends scene. Hopefully, as we get into more of the draft, more <laughs> into the games per se, we'll we'll give you both of our tall tales as we discuss where some of these individuals have come from, some of their successes, the stories behind them that have now carried here onto the NECC. So, yes, in that regard as well, RMC, I'm very excited. Mm -hmm. So, for these teams, for game one here, and it will be a best of three, Converse University is going to be on the blue side. And this esports program has surprised me. I'm not particularly familiar with the collegiate scene, but I did get a chance to talk to them a little bit. And they've got a huge program, uh, lots of players. They're in lots of different titles here. And this particular roster for Converse here actually has multiple ADC players, ADC mains, who are going to be flexing <laughs> into other roles. But from what I've heard so far from their scrims, Things have been going well for them. So high expectations coming into week one for them. And on the other side, Bay State Blue. Bay State College has multiple teams coming in. And Bay State Blue is more of their second team, their rookie team here. A lot of people newer to the collegiate scene, though some of them have some competitive experience before. Now, they're another team, you know, who they're looking to try and get some experience, gel together. Mm -hmm. Week one might be a little bit rough, but they do have an EU Masters coach. Wicked Rad coming in. So under her guidance, hopefully the team comes together very quickly here. I was about to say, that's a that's a pretty tall glass to compete against, I would say. I mean, she's got the expertise that will lead this team, hopefully to victory in the face of their new inklings. I will say there is one player that isn't completely new. Devil in that jungle has competed mm -hmm. with Bay State prior to. So hopefully some guidance from the trees there, some soft whispers as they approach the mid, the top, wherever it may be. Probably the bot, given that they are also a bot-centric team, will help them work their way through. But definitely a bit of a toss-up here as we look at something that's a little more experience maybe a little bit more put together in regards to commerce i love the fact that you're talking about soft whip whispers from the jungle here zephyr and i'm looking at devil's champion pool and uh th this fellow here plays aggressive things things like the corky you know viego kindred jarvin nothing soft here there's no ivern you know <laughs> no shielding no support he's going in for the kill and then when i look at you know the rest of the roster a name that i do recognize from the Bay state blue team is akira ho in that top lane there uh, i've seen him back in 2020 with the imperial knights this split uh, i've seen him on in the risen divine league with from ashes esports in fact he just won mvp of week five in that particular league here so he's an aggressive player as well with such an aggressive top side i'm curious to see how this works because you've got a strong top side you've got a strong bot lane as well and you know what maybe you can play through both of them you kind of have to pick and choose though which side of the map you want to play to well, like we said, bot-centric, top-centric, that is in the same regard as well for Converse. They do have an True. equal setup, Gummy Hat being a recent swap, but a successful top laner that will hopefully provide true for this team, as well as Alistair, a hot topic that we'll be able to discuss a little <laughs> bit more, though. But for now, I believe we are going to work our way into that draft, start getting a little bit of a sniff of what champions are actually going to be making their way here onto the rift. For sure, and now both these teams have already pro drafted their teams here so we might not be seeing uh the exact pick order in which they picked here so keep that in mind if you do start seeing a some sort of top down approach here which is what i expect approach here which is what i expect for now we did see a little bit of those first bands start to work their way out here so the irony a sense of things get to see them beforehand so maybe we maybe got a little bit of a background before we even get into this one but a lot of them coming through a big focus towards that top side especially on bay state so akira the player that you just brought off already being walked down 
Mm -hmm. Now, makes sense. You want you want to take out a lot of these strong picks, and you know things like that. Irelia can also go to the mid lane here for Kawo. So I like the band. It's just a generally strong band in the current meta here. The Echo though, that is more targeted. We talked about the fact that Devil likes these more aggressive junglers, and Echo is something that he's been playing a lot. Well, hopefully it will work out in that regard. You did talk about the soft whispers not quite being them whispers, more of a roar to behold. So, well, you know what? <laughs> Maybe they will have something to play with in that regard. And yeah, it's not quite the echo, but you discussed it. He's got a pool to work with. It's not quite an ocean, but it's definitely a lot more play to give here. Once again, though, as we start wrapping up these final bands that come through, Talk again, more towards Akir. You see that Camille come out already, as well as what will be, I believe, another band towards what is going to be that bot side. Rocks 908, I believe that is a sub coming in here. I did not catch that one right off the bat. Yeah, potentially here. I mean, Rocks was listed as a potential Rocks substitute for the team the team here. Okay. So uh, I guess that's what so, they're pulling in, uh, and it's not going to be Shao Odin, who uh, is also their coach here, and we'll have to see how that changes things. But bands coming in, it's going to be the Thresh, Yone, and the Bard as well, uh, coming through for base state against Converse. And the picks are, as expected, quick here. Once again, reminder, it was already full drafted. So these are according to lanes. It is going to be that set into Orn in that top side uh, for both these teams. And right off the bat here, Zephyr, I'm a little bit worried about the Zorn because set is one of the best Busters in the game. The Definitely has a lot of great early presence. And if we talk about how this team likes to play, Converse discussed with us before we got into it that they like to throw a little bit of those ganks towards Gummy Hat to kind of mm -hmm. start things rolling. And if it does come through, they will play to a further extent. You throw the set high early game presence into Orin, something that can be dominated within those first few levels. Pair that with Daydream coming in. Suddenly, there is a monster on the rift that you have to deal with for the rest of the game. Now, that isn't their complete win condition, but it is definitely a route that we will have to watch out for. Yeah, and, and I mean, you look at that Jarvan, you look at that Oriana. I don't know what their bot lane is, but I don't need to know what their bot lane is here, Zephyr. Converse have already put their hand that they want a nice big wombo combo here, and they've got the pieces. You can pair almost any AD carry into that composition. And you're good to go. On the other side, though, for base state blues, we're not quite sure what it is they're looking for quite yet. It's just very standard picks here. The Kindred pickup is interesting because in the current meta, your bot lane doesn't have to have to eight, uh, pardon me, an AD carry for your team anymore. You can go with a mage or even double support, which we might see as Seraphine gets locked in for Wicked Rod. Yeah, Seraphine coming out there, definitely playing to what you just evolved here as well as that's going to be the Yumi. It's also double heavy support coming through. And hey, it's not to shy away in that bot lane in any regard. They can make quick work, especially as Devil, which is that most experienced player here on this roster, can come through eventually. Now, I will say their focus is very single target oriented. You don't have that kind of wombo we just discussed out of Converse here. Base State definitely will have to play around finding what is those individual or unique picks to then build upon because sadly, it's those major team fights that might collapse unless you find what is that really, really good call of the Forge God or find what is the Encore. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that difference comes from that mid lane, right? The fact that you don't have an Orianna. Sure, Silas can still steal away that shockwave, yeah. but you, you don't have the ball. So it basically is the, the sombrero for Silas. He has to be in the middle of everybody else. There is a lot of AoE CC coming through with the Orn, the Seraphine, and the Yumi here uh, for the side of base state. But ultimately, like you said, the damage is single target. It's from the Silas. It's from the Kindred here. And that's what they're going to try and do is lock down targets. Silas, Kindred have to find priority targets. Whereas for Converse here, their damage itself is very AoE oriented. It does a lot of general team damage. So uh, I would, you know, like to see them take advantage of that, especially with that Amumu support that we've seen come into the meta. He's best with a mage, but you don't have to do the mage. The Curse of the Sad Mummy is still so, so strong. Oh, absolutely right. And in, in its own regard, it's enough of an ability to get the job done. But speaking of getting the job done, Notably, Alistair looking to test the waters coming into this first match. I personally consider Tristana one of the limit busters here for the bot lane tempo. You get in the face with this champion, and 
Personally, I've had the lovely opportunity to work with past and cover Alistar for the past year mm. on teams such as Lotus Esports before he made this move to the lovely North Carolina region to cover Converse as well. And this guy has such a presence. He's steady, he's consistent, but if he wants to make a statement, he's got those champions. He's got that Tristana on his belt to see if he can run over some of these lanes. Now, yes, there's a lot of safety right into the face of, say, something like a Seraphine and Yumi, but... Oh, yeah. I, I'll, I'll, like I said, it's the waters. He's, he's dipping his toes in right now. Is it cold? Is it warm? He's going to take a dive either way. Uh, I, I don't know about that one. There's a, I'm a little bit scared if he's dipping his toes in because uh, Seraphine and Yumi, they can just rip that toe right off here. There's a lot of sustain, there's a lot of sustain coming in with this duo. So it negates a lot of the kill pressure that Tristana has early. And from the late game, when Tristana can become that very safe auto attack carry from the back here, Seraphine and Yumi provide so much heal. You put that onto the Kindred with the Lamb's Respite as well, and suddenly you're facing an AD carry who just simply will not die and that's not even taking into account the silas or the orb who are both going to get fairly tanky in their own right i am a little bit concerned about how much sustained damage converse can put out and i wouldn't be surprised if we see alistair pick up something like back in slayer instead of the more commonly seen shield bowler build and Right now, we are waiting for the speculate right to count down 30 seconds here. We've talked a lot, Zephyr, about we talked sort of uh, team compositions, what each team are looking team for. But I want to talk a little bit more about the lanes. We talked about the fact that set into Orn, very set favored. He is a tank buster here. But in the mid lane, Oriana versus Silas. I like Oriana because she's such a safe like pick uh, She just nullifies every lane pretty much, and so Silas might struggle a little bit into that. And that to me is an opportunity. You push out that mid lane, you unlock Daydream to look for ganks, especially into that bot lane, because while Tristana might struggle in that 2v2, when you start adding the junglers, that might be enough damage to overwhelm. Oh, I see you decided to expand upon the dive a little bit, and me, myself, I took a dive in my own regard here for myself. But hey, I, I hear your qualms about the Tristana. I have my faith in my boy, Alistair. And I have my faith, of course, as well as this team as a whole here from Converse. So definitely a, a bigger presence that I'm definitely going to be putting my faith into for maybe even this series here. That's my bet. That's my bet. That's what we call this when we start talking about League. Those are the predictions that come out here. RMC, do you, you willing to wager on your own regards? You got some coin to put down? Oh, you know, oh, that, that's, you know, that's really rough there, Zephyr. Um, it's week one. We don't really don't know enough about these teams. And oh, come on. As we get into game, you it's don't need right. to know. Fine. Fine, Zephyr. I'll take you up on that. You want to support Alistair. I want to support Alistair, but I'll go with Bay State Blues instead, just so that we've got a little bit of a balance going here. <laughs> Alistair, I love you, buddy. Don't hate me, but <laughs> I'm going with the double support mm. bot lane. I, you were bringing this up before I even managed to get back into this. You said, oh, no, Zephyr, the, the, the thought of the Tristana, doing a little bit of the check, the toe, the dip, the touch. No, 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 double support, strong, sustained, going to kind of wipe this lane, poke constantly. There's not going to be much room for Alistair to move, but think about what you said after. Think about what you said after the fact that you've got those ganks, you've got those wombo combos, those team fights that are going to accelerate what is the performance of this man here? That's the faith I'm putting this into. The skill combined with the combination of Converse as a whole, that's where we're at. Fair enough. But let's remember that Wombo Combo compositions have a fatal weakness, and that is that their damage is front-loaded. So if you don't kill somebody right away with that, Yumi, Seraphine, they're just going to sustain backup. And hey, Zephyr, you know what? You put your faith in Alistair. Alistair will have to shine through. We did speak about that there. Sure. He will have to hard carry the rest of said fight here so they're on a bit of a timer we've got to see them make those early aggressive plays and the other issue is grievous wounds sure that's all great and well there's plenty of options for that <laughs> but yumi and seraphine also give lots of shielding and that means serpent's fang is going to be necessary who's going to carry that on the who's side here of converse alistair probably doesn't want to build it daydreams dummy hat dummy maybe i you know what i'm not going to read into it that much you're you are the serpent in the tree here you're wary you're yes, you're leaving yes. me with doubts <laughs> yes. to work with and i don't want to play upon those here as we finally work our way onto the rift for any of you who are just joining us this is of course the first 
series, the first game here of Converse versus Bay State Blue. I am your play by podcaster Zephyr, joined, of course, by the lovely random minion cap. Not so random this game, unfortunately, Zephyr. Um, so I, I was hoping for a little Zephyr. bit more craziness. I mean, that, hey, double support is pretty crazy. A move with support, that's pretty nice as well. But unfortunately, no level one invade. And if there's anything I love to see, Zephyr, it's blood in the water. And we didn't get it. It's a standard safe start. Both junglers starting at different moves. No surprise there in that regard. We'll see where they might come out and evolve here. Now, you did set up what is going to be maybe this early struggle here. I will point out that we do see an already early setup from Alistair being into this lane. Now, that, of course, is going to give the knowledge that Daydream is on that top side. What base state does with that, we'll have to wait and see because it definitely gives presence towards Akira to play a bit more safe. But for now, we'll see what level advantage, what can come through here is hopefully they're able to play around maybe some kind of early kind of stem for those first couple minions or so interestingly enough though alistair actually is picking up a longsword to start so that's less kill pressure a longsword doesn't give you as much lane strength as a duran's blade does and that suggests to me that alistair might just be looking to play kind of safe just you know farm up rush those items a little bit but as i say mm. that they're going in not a as chance I I already in. expended what is the flash the exhaust the heal all out for the count there all in trade for just rox's flash that's got to feel incredibly good yeah completely not what i expected either i mean yes justan has got some early pressure as well but seraphine and yumi the poke is extremely nasty here and while amumu's got great engage potential he does not have good sustain so i was expecting them to play safe as they were look for level two look for level three and then start to poke up not having any of that makes them vulnerable and j4 such a strong early gangler as well depending on how they set this up they could look for an early dive they could look an early dive may not work here but for now you have that Kindred finally gracing the present mid. It is going to be that double flash. Aria will walk for now, but like you said, it's just that one auto. It's a good shield, but not enough to secure the presence and survival. And meanwhile, though, look who it is. Look who it is. <laughs> Alistair. Ari securing a kill. And now, look, Presence Jarvan working his way into the river. I love that smite to get the health back to turn this one around, waiting for the team to show up. Now it's time for Alistair. Big flashback round. Oh! Bombs onto Silas. And yes, there's one dead on the back, but it's not before the Kindred falls here. Yumi on the chase. Amumu a little bit slower on the lag. One quick chain would stop this mummy in his tracks. And it's going to be just oh. that big stun chain to follow and the kill to boot as well. What an absolute slaughter here is on the top side. We also get one. Yeah, just action happening all yes. over the place and the action top lane action i think surprises place. me the most here zephyr because it's akira on this orn clapping the, the set orn. we talked about the fact that set for gummy hat should be the type buster ends up going down early and bay state blues they're off to the races here they've got a nice strong start look at that kill allocation both the kills going over to devil and devil is there any carry and devil that's definitely rough you talked about how you can kind of push what is that double support but you have to have what the the absolute presence of that ad carry in that kindred to make use of the double support and they're already on such a good pace to take advantage of that just four minutes into the game now i don't want to write off those deaths though in any other short regard in the fact that alistair is still sitting 2-0 already on to that executioner's <laughs> he's gone <laughs> which by the way yes i i know you giggle that is as aggressive as it gets to stop this lane in its tracks aaron that's what I love about this man. He takes those dives. Yeah, no, and you know what? I love the execution of calling. We talked about the fact that he's starting with the longsword, right? He gets the double kills. He goes back, and that execution is calling does double duty because you're up against both the healing supports oh, so good. in the lane here. So I absolutely love the adaptation. And I'm looking at Roxu just hiding in the alcove. He's been there this entire time, and now this is kind of risky. This is easy. Seraphin's looking low, but oh, Alistair's going to pay the price. An excellent gank there from Devil. Now Silas with the TP to finish the job and make sure it's a double here for Devil. The experience becomes even stronger. The AD carry battle that we're seeing here, Zephyr, is scary. It's an arms race. Who can get up there quicker? And Alistair was looking good, but now Devil is way ahead. And I was worried for Devil to Grey that he was falling behind. You know, Daydream was just power farming the entire time. But now he's coming back. And if your jungles 
not ahead. Your bot side, you know, isn't exactly winning because double supports don't need to be equal CS necessarily. Your mid lane's behind and your top lane's behind. Where does Converse look to try and start generating some leads? To try and start generating some leads. Well, Converse still has presence in that bot lane. I'm not going to count Alistair out just yet, but the rest of these lanes are, yes, akin to what you just bring up, starting to falter. You don't see the early presence from Gummy that we were expecting, that tank buster. You don't have the opportunity to work into what is the face of maybe good rotation Jarvan just yet, but that doesn't count their mid game out. It's still one of their strongest points. They play around those windows. They manage what is trying not to be caught out by some of these single target champions or into the face of the lambs or spike, and they might have a chance. But for now, oh. it's Silas returns. Yeah. One quick hijack, one quick sombrero, and another kill here on the devil. I mean, Zephyr, just as you're talking about that mid game, yeah, those big AOE wombo game, combo big ultimates, big it's base, Bay State pulling the trigger first, and now they're collapsing in on that J4. No cataclysm oh. available. No cataclysm available. And yes, Seraphine oh, is going to wow. fall from the blast there from Alistair, but it's not at the trade of Daydream himself. So one for one. Oriana coming through, though, with a great teleport to get off the no shockwave to stop this in his track. But the damage is pressing here from Kao to keep this one going. Kindred oh, under. Wow. to pick up another response you do have alistair turned around on his yeah, back well, end but that lamb's respite well, keeps him alive for that much longer no heal to follow but oh, it is the falter there another double seven in one and just to wrap it off a quick gift in the top lane as these two noodles keep continuing to fight and actually oh, secure a kill here on akira I, I don't know what noodles you're eating there, Zephyr, but that was a stiff one-two from Akira. That's true. And he's not even the one with the one-two passive. That's the Orn coming through. A second solo kill as well. TP also available for Akira. Bay State Blues right now. They want Dragon. They can take Dragon. They have all the control necessary. And I want to talk a little bit about Devil Degree right now. We talked so much about the fact that, okay, Bay State Blues just needs to survive the initial engage, but Silas? Looking worse for rare but he does find his way under turk oh well he stepped back over a second i feel like if there was just the one auto for daydream he might have landed a successful kill there Whew. okay my, my heart needs to yeah, yeah, come yeah, this game is way too intense it's eight minutes we're already 15 kills up that's less than a kill per minute whoa just yeah that, that's more than a kill more minute. more my apologies my grammar fails here <laughs> Cast your math. Never try math and stream. I Counting is math as well. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> Let me live. <laughs> okay, we go back to Devil because I want to okay, talk about the fact that, that because ultimate, the ultimate, the Lamb's Rest, that is so important for this team. If you nullify the upfront first, you basically nullify everything that Converse is trying to do with this com this composition that they've drafted. And even worse now, we've seen the dive strength of this Kindred, who is now 7, 1, and 3. I don't know how many marks he has. But I'm sure it's a lot. And it's only going to get sure worse as that and range goes up. And for Converse right now, they need to start right now, invading that jungle or finding some sort of pressure right now. If you're just sitting back and letting this Kindred right scale, she will outscale your Tristana. She will outscale your Tristana. Well, it's definitely nothing good here in the hopes for Converse 12 to 3. It's definitely a stack oh, deck. Dude. Gold isn't too far. And yes, I hear your worries. You get to see Akura not quite pick that one up gummy lives for another day but this turret might not be great response here from the rest of converse you see the devil to grayest topside looking threatening that dive looking for the turret you go for that dragon right away there you're trying to answer back and for bay street blues right now they're okay with this you don't care too much about that lone mountain drake you can stack them go for it but if not no big deal in fact they're actually summoning the herald which they already took earlier to look for an early first turret and again they can still look for you pushing and maybe threaten even that second turret pushing and maybe threaten even that second turret absolutely could push that one out even further you do see gummy hack coming back to lane so i don't think yeah orange's gonna back that one off so no double turret to behold here as of yet but Still, the pressure, just to show that, 10 minutes, you're already running down these lanes to the Tier 2. That is insanely accelerating. Mm -hmm. And I'm just worried that once you unlock that Orn as well into the lanes, we've not seen it come out here. And you don't pick Orn to win the lane. You pick him for that team fight. And now Akira is looking. Has, it's starting to head down oh, towards no. the bottom sides. But Dan coming in. We do see Cataclysm locked down here as Mumu comes through with the Bantosh oh, nice. for an easy, easy cleanup. It's a nice shutdown to behold there, and it does find its way over to Daydream, which 
personally, I would have loved to see that maybe more in the hands of a lag, but personally, you, you got to do with what you can. Oh, Rocks, though, getting caught out here. And, oh, actually does manage to find a way. Flash out. Nice clean up. Ooh. Easy, easy, easy. Now maybe, maybe, maybe position for the bottom turret. Let the wave crash. Maybe <laughs> not. Just dive either way. You've already got a cure coming through there. Here. One quick forge god, and that'll be it for Alistair. Oh, and Alistair took too long to get out. There's no safe here. TP's coming through. Encore charm and big slap there. It is a Kira's kill to behold as Kelly comes in very late with that teleport. Not much to work with. Yeah, I, I, in a way, you're kind of lucky you got out as well, right? Like, you can dive one, you can dive two. Lamps just but still available as well. And that's a strong diving tool we're talking about. Great steal away from Daydream to at least secure his red. I, I mean, yeah, secure the red. <laughs> I would love to see maybe a little bit more from this roster at this point, but you got to take what you can get. <laughs> baby steps, Zephyr. Baby steps. You take what you're you are right. I mean, you're right. They got the shutdown on Camel. They get the red buff. They got a dragon here. It's rough. You're down 5,000 gold, yes. But right now, ornaments aren't coming through, so there's no invisible gold or the side of base state blues. <laughs> you still have your big wombo combo, and I'm just waiting for the first set of mythics to come through. And then that's when lag stream is really going to start hitting. But for now, Gummy Hat might not be able to get away. I was going to say, how can they even work their way into getting mythics if they can't even oh. survive in their own jungle? Devil, once again, another kill there. And oh, wow, that was <laughs> unlucky to say the least. <laughs> uh, lucky or, un or unlucky, depending on who you're looking at. On Daydream's part, uh, yeah, you're lucky. You <laughs> got out alive, are very man. lucky. Go to the lottery, buddy. Head to Vegas. <laughs> Oh man, smile. Uh, you know what? You still deserve a smile after that one. You did manage to find a pick, like you said, in their own jungle, and it's buying space for Akira. Oh, lag extreme. Oh, I have nothing to say. Continue. <laughs> we'll put that down to lag. <laughs> it's okay. in the name. But Akira has been unlocked in the top side, continues to punish that turret, and with the demolish proc, Orn's pretty fast. Now they're diving mid lane between turrets. No way. I was about to ask you, what can you even do at this point? In, in, not even in terms of this game, but looking to reflect on where does it all go wrong. But when you have the ability to sustain through what is constant dives, rush into that back, go past the tier ones, into tier twos, and there's no safety, whether it be lane or jungle, it doesn't even feel like Converse get an opportunity to kind of have their own, hilariously, respite. <laughs> I mean... A lot of this is because of the way Bay State Blue have played it. They're pushing the tempo, and they've been doing really, really well. This is a good hits-up play they're trying here, but... Oh, they actually have enough wow. burst. I did not expect that. I was going to say, the burst from Alistair was very surprising. Now, in response, you might find two to fall there. You do see what is the drop onto Rocks already oh. in a big flash clap there to maybe lock down Tristana. Oh, the no! Cataclysm oh, put him in, but at least the jump came through in the nick of time here. Jarvin might be the next to go, but oh no, the chain does follow under turret as, yep, devil on the side here. Going to make quick, short work. Another kill for the king. Once again, really clean play from Bay State Blue there. They just seem to know what they want to do, and they're executing it better. Props to Converse, though. I did like the fact that they went for that turret dive, because when you're behind, even if you trade one for one, it's definitely worth it. You get bounties, you get to step behind, and it's easier to play catch up, and daydream as well you know buying the time i was worried honestly when that cataclysm came down i thought oh no it's a i'm j4 and i'm helping situation no it wasn't it really did buy enough time and alistair did have to rocket jump did barely survive and you're okay with that but for converse right now they need to make more of these heads up plays and they need to make them all over the place a little bit cleaner here look for the squishy members look for the seraphine look for this silas I know there is a statistic. I, I don't usually play off it too much as it, it, it's, it's a bit broad, but there is a certain amount of gold. Oh. Once you surpass that, there is no coming back. And we're getting to the point where 15 minutes, almost a 10K gold lead. I, I would hate to say it, but RMC looking towards that next game because stacking up against what is 11 and 1 Kindred here already, you've got to ask yourself, what do we do better? And I think a lot of this, this game state that we're at right now was caused by the early game. The fact that Devil to Grey got it's only been the early game. <laughs> True. I mean, we're we're so early in. still. It's 15 oh, minutes. It's crazy. It doesn't feel early when you're doing this, though. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Legendary Devil to Grey. 
twelve one and four right now. And okay, you know what? We'll call it the super early game. The <laughs> super, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's that super early game. That's it's what we got. It's a lot about on. not letting the kindred snowball quite this aggressively playing a little bit safer here because when that kindred who's not meant to be an early game champion gets this far ahead gets this accelerated you really don't have a lot of options especially when you're a wombo team comp who can't push the kindred out of the lands respite here so just you know it's one of those unfortunate things where it's like okay this game bad early game lost the coin flip early move on next game you don't necessarily have to change too too much the comp is good if anything maybe you just ban the kindred a little bit yeah <laughs> if it if it ain't broke you know what <laughs> you're gonna have to break it yourself so maybe throw a ban that direction get rid of the problem and maybe converse comes out a lot stronger and the craziest thing is it was just the two kill pickup there very early for devil and that wasn't something too crazy that's still buildable Converse can work their way back into it from that mm -hmm. but the extent past that when you see the pickups those those one-offs that this comp is literally designed for that we discussed in draft continue to come through in full fruition to the point where we're sitting at 15 kills at what eight minutes with 12 of those being allocated towards base state you're overstepping you're over bleeding you're giving away way too much of your presence and wealth and at that point it's just a wipe so now second herald secured it's on the hands or my apologies in the hands here of devil and one quick launch into one of these lanes, a push to follow, maybe the team to group up, and I don't know how far it'll go, but it'll definitely be tough to defend. And for base state, they're not in a rush to drop oh. that herald. I mean, the longer, the longer the game time goes, the more effective that herald is going to be. They might even wait till you know closer when Baron spawns, and you can drop it bot lane, Smart. send everybody up towards the Baron instead. And for Converse, they've got to deal with an issue on both ends of the map and for converse right now they don't have a lot of initiative they don't have a lot of agency great job that alistair managed to get that bot lane turret because it will be on the shasana bring them back in but they also need base state blue to make some sort of mistake here to really come back in and so my eyes are more on base state right now you had a really good early game you did not take your foot off the gas how are you going to close it out now are you just going to stall out for two minutes and wait for baron or are you going to try and pick them apart and catch them in transition well, it already looks like they've caught out the oh. one here. Lag taken out from an instant. I believe that was three. Three autos to count there from the short dive under turret. I mean, a big point that I like to look at it for teams, especially as we start viewing the NECC as a whole product here, is how can you close out games? How well are you able to transition those early leads? And this is a really, really good time to impress me here from Bay State Blue. So already crash, and you've got the full presence of Devil running even past her to keep these guys far out of the wheelhouse here. Yeah, and we are sub-20 minutes with Harold just pushing in. We might even see a dan Oh, never mind. I was going to say, you might even see a dancing Shelly, but Daydream, uh, well... He, he destroyed my dream there with a nice quick smite, but that's still a Nexus turret now going down. And if they engage on this, oh. I don't know if they win it. Call Forge God to follow through. Cataclysm locks him Ooh. in, but it's their grave that they find themselves hold through. Sets in the back with a great showstopper to launch through it, but it's not on the devil, the one you need to go down. Meanwhile, he didn't even sweat. Didn't even have to get rid of the lamb's respite. So in that regard, we might just be seeing a sub 20 here. <laughs> they are out of minions. They're actually taking a lot of damage here. And, oh! oh! That not only just shut down Devil Degray, that just shut down this push, and that was just popping off. I love Ali. It might be a rough game, but we still get gem <laughs> like this. One quick triple before he goes down. I don't know if I'm going to say that'll change the pace of this game, bring it back in, but I love seeing it. You know what? Alistair just bought them at least a minute. <laughs> With and that respawn yes, timer is coming back up. Yeah, so you, you take those, right? And if anything, that just gives me hope for game two as well. Alistair, right. seven, four, and two has still been performing extremely well this game. Sure, they're falling very, very far behind, but the AD carry is doing his job. Alistair is not the problem. If only they had a bit more time. Maybe Alistair could turn the tides, but now they stay blue, almost all up and available. Akira just spawning now has teleport available, and Baron is up zephyr there is no reason why they shouldn't do it well maybe a small detour to pick up dragon but after that baron is free real estate 
Well, for now, it looks like we've come to what is maybe one of the few lulls of this game before the setup into this one. Now, Bay is already on top of this dragon. There's no contest to behold. It, and personally, at this point, it doesn't even quite matter because it's not even a sole point drag. We're still seeing at three only on the board. One, two for both respectively here. So, yes, it is the pickup, but I'm more worried about the inhib Baron now on the map. Yeah, and it looks like Bay State, they, they don't care about Baron. They're not even going to give them a oh, chance keep to try and contest them. Yeah, we've seen this before. They did it in the mid lane before they got all those kills, before they got the turrets, before they got the inhibitor and the Nexus turret even. So if anything, their push now, even more important. You look at their items, they're like a full major item oh. ahead and Akira with just a zoning ultimate here. Yeah, not even to start off what is that engage. Can't even quite hit it, but a great Ooh. curse of the sad mummy might turn this one around. Showstopper, wicked rad down the chase to ensue. Devil's doing Which a devil? great job to kite this one back as Orn is now the front to work with. Continuing the dive, the oh, uni on his belt to keep him healthy. Oh, he Alistair does manage to take him out before he can get the burst that he needs to sustain further, but can he stop the ensuing push? He's got to respond to those minions in the mid lane. Zephyr, we said that for Converse to come back into the game, Bay State Blue had to make some mistakes. And right now, I wouldn't call them mistakes, but they are giving gold. And Alistar is becoming a bigger and bigger monster right now. The only person on the team who's not really behind in gold or items oh compared boy. to what Bay State has here. And uh, huge props to that burst of damage. Devil degraded, not expected. Lamb's Respite is still up and available. And sure, the knockback from Buster Shot can push you out of that, but that wasn't what killed him. He just got caught by surprise. Explosive shot plus the, the three proc damage from the Kraken Slayer mm -hmm. was enough to take him. And now Bay State, they're playing it what I thought would have been safer. They're going for Baron first. Well, they still have a massive lead to work with, so you can't quite count them out just yet. And like you said, the Lamb's mm -hmm. Respite is still available to work oh. through, so they technically can fight any team fight that they want, but just to draw it back a little bit, I got to give major props to Rox there. That was, I know we discuss yeah. a lot about Alistair being as incredible as he is on that Tristana, but it was that excellent bandage curse of the sad mummy to really initiate. He saw the grouping. He saw how far forward everyone was on that squad. And he was able to pinpoint the most supreme engage, even in the face of sitting at what is what zero and seven into that zero six beforehand. Mm -hmm. I mean, you talk about the items not having them. It doesn't even matter. He's still got the tools to make it work. here. Yeah, really amazing catch. Now, the question is, can he do it again? Yeah. <laughs> because now they're Only barreling one. down Shame with on you. Baron. Yeah, but fool me twice. I'm hell impressed. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, for now, the call of the Forge God this time will hit. You do see a deep engage there from okay. Cow, which will be punished for being so separated out. Now, it won't stop that inhib just okay. yet. It does take the set coming through the back. It is a good charm here to stop the Tristana for just a little bit longer. We're going to have to watch and see if Devil's going to throw down the respite anytime soon, but he continues oh. his assault forward. Yes, the Jarvan goes into the back, flashes on his own way out, maybe to lead him on a goose chase, but it's not enough to stop the onslaught. Alistair, only one left alive. Now the Baron means they're the ones to grace the oh. inhib turrets and... Oh, oh boy, yes, it's outside. the spit, but Alistair might not. But the good buster shot into the wall, no the way. double to follow into Yumi. It's another triple. Alistair, this man is absolutely cracked. A triple kills effort and a triple back to back oh. defense of the Nexus. Alistair is single handedly, literally 1v5ing some of these fights right now. And the buster shot, I thought, okay, great. Devil didn't die on the Buster Shot. He still dies outside the Lamb's Respite there. And Converse might actually have a chance. That is a Baron push they just denied. Sure, your base is in shambles. Sure, you don't have a single inhibitor turret left standing. But the <laughs> Nexus still stands. Until that Nexus falls, baby, the game is not over here. Alistair. An absolute monster here. You yourself were asking me before we even got into this first game. What is what what makes this man so great? We we've had the lovely opportunity of seeing him on Lotus before. Now he's gracing the presence of Converse University. At what point do we get to see this man absolutely pop up? What what differentiates him 
this this differentiates them the absolute mad lad 1v3 constantly carrying the weight upon his shoulders to make converse thrive that's what makes him an incredible ad carry now Zephyr, all those defenses were in the base it's bay state blue trying to push in and end things here at the dragon pit it's oh, okay i was gonna say at giant pits an open ground i don't know if converse will win it and we're not going to get an answer to that question because Converse no. isn't going for not it. A they're going to give over Soul Point and they're going to be okay with that because they're still looking to defend right now. And it looks like it's once again, the ball is in Bay State Blue's court. They're the ones who have to try and push in. And this time they need to make sure that nobody gets caught first. Cowo dropped early. And so that was a 4v5 push they mm -hmm. went into Converse. I think that's why they kind of lost that one. This time I want to see them group up a little bit Cabo split pushing right now, but I want to see them rejoin the rest of the team before they start going for these big inhibitors. Well, Cow not there for the time. You do see that Call of Forge got to start this one off. It is yeah. a triple knock. The Encore not quite landing, so that's a big ultimate to expend. They do secure what is going to be that next inhib. The mid is still up, but Cow should be on top of that real quickly there to make Ooh. all three knock here. So just that single turret in the nexus to behold. Okay, Converse, for one minute now, we'll have, we'll not have the double super minions pushing in. But once those double supers start coming in, the outs will be back up. The Encore will be available again, as will the Call of the Forge. Whoa, God, but the fight's kicking off early. The fight's already going down, RMC. Oh, a big kill to start us again. off as Devil's down. That's your major carry. Alistair continues to kite this one out. Buster Silas with the chain, a triple one. to follow. Now back on to Seraphine. She's already gone. She doesn't want to deal with the cannon gremlin, and that's enough to stop the rush how i don't understand how devil keeps getting burst down that quickly here i didn't Ugh. see it, the cc roll down but i've got to assume that's what's happening there like you said zephyr fool me once shame on you fool me twice shame on me and this is the third fool time me third time as well <laughs> i don't know what happens number three usually that's the magic number here <laughs> i mean it's been three times though that devil has been caught dead with lamps respite up and available here and that is an issue if Devil is down. They just don't have the pushing power. They don't have the dueling power to deal with Alistair on this Shasana. Your double support is great. It's good. It's meant to keep you alive. But the moment the carries are dead, your double support isn't going to be able to do anything by themselves. Right. And that's, that's the issue we talked about when we came into draft here before the game started. You're putting all of your eggs kind of into that single target basket. And the thing is, that basket was full, filled with the eggs. It was Easter, baby. But now <laughs> the time has passed. We're moving towards like 4th of July, and it ain't working anymore. You know what, Zephyr? If it's 4th of July, it's time for the fireworks here. Double super minions pushing down all the lanes here. You're going to have it in the bot lane, a four stack potentially coming in. And base I was here this time. Yeah, true. They're, they're going for it yet again here. I want to see them just wait 30 seconds, 30 seconds, and your supers will be in their base. Well, for now, you've got Jarvan set. They're not quite there ready, but those are the two tools that you have to worry about in terms of engage. Usually we see the call of the Forge God to start things out here, so I won't think this will be any different, but yes, they are waiting, so it is going to be those doubles. Okay, bottom has four. Oh, and move, it's a move, move kicking things off again. Curse the sad mummy. Big ultimate. It is the respite down oh, very, very early on, in. and they can't quite find Tristana, so she continues to launch forward. Yes, Anaka, but a double for Alistair. Silas goes deep in that back line to make sure he secures the response there on to Rocks 908, but it is a lockdown here on the Gummy Hat, which is the not the shining. target you want. <sighs> Another three kills here successful and yes the supers are crashing yes the nexus is low but that's still not game random it isn't but props to the base state blue re-engaging i think they made the right call there sure they lose cabo oh. off the back end of that but the whole idea was you distract them long enough and at least the supers took down the last remaining nexus all right the only thing standing right now is a half broken top lane inhibitor and a nexus a wide open nexus right now. If Bay State can find a way to get the double TP from Akira and Cabo, they might be able to take this. And that means Converse, you do not get to contest for the Baron. Your Ocean Soul is about to come up in about Ooh. a minute. You don't get to contest for that either. And you don't get to farm anything outside your base.
I'll be honest, I would be more of a shame to hear that if not for the fact that Commerce has literally just been giving them every tool that they want for their pushes. I believe that's that second Baron now, correct yep. me if I'm wrong, and the first one didn't look good either. True, the, fir the first one ended a little bit prematurely <laughs> here, and you know what, you can take it slow a little bit, sure, you don't have double super minions, but you also have Orn, who's only level 50, not all the ornaments are in, you've only upgraded two other people at this point i believe it's devil of course getting the first Cow upgrade and, and now cabo as well so the supports you know they can still look for the upgrades as well you add that with an ocean so and maybe it'll be enough healing maybe it'll <laughs> be enough stats to keep devil alive past the first five seconds just maybe at this point rmc <laughs> just have devil run in there throw down the lamb's respite right onto that necklace and just go to town you've got the damage to delete True. it before any inhibs can come into play anyone can take you out and the buster shot something you got to worry about but it's at least something it's just the nexus come on <laughs> now the inhibitors are respawning soon as well so oh, for base they, they want to continue applying the pressure while there's still supers uh coming in right now and they're looking for it they're going for it keep your eyes on rocks though these amumu initiates have been beautiful you have the starting call of the forge god oh. deep in the back and they've got to worry about devil he does throw down the spit as orin continues to attack what is this nexus but into the face Devil's of alistair again. there he's going to be taken out now the rush ensues as cow is trying to work his way forward out of the gold he comes as yumi pops down for a quick what? removal into the hands of alistair and silas while he launches back forward it doesn't matter one quick bounce another three here for alistair and get this all three inhibs up as well your faith has been rewarded zephyr and for the first time this game somebody has more kills than devil the gray alistair has so alistair has... oh my god oh sorry my mic cut out because i was so excited about alistair there for the first time this game somebody has beaten devil the gray's kill score alistair has more kills right now and he's been patient he's been waiting he is full build ready to go and the next time base state gets aced i think we start seeing the counterattack of converse they push in and they're going to be looking for their own nexus turrets finally we see that mid lane turret fall which that's great here we didn't even expect this game to go on that longer and i can't say the same for converse either i think they themselves were saying all right boys we packed that one up a long time ago but <laughs> Alistair had different plans for everyone coming into this first game. And honestly, like you said, my faith is rewarded. My prayers are answered. My shrine I keep back there behind all the AM <laughs> equipment as I pray to Daddy Alistair every day is finally coming true. Oh, Zephyr. <laughs> I don't even want to know what other altars you've got hidden in the back of your closet there. But the next big fight is what I want to focus on here. Because I, I do think at this point, we're 33 minutes into the game here. The objectives don't really matter. We've seen Bay State <laughs> Blue pick up all yeah, the that's objectives. True. That's true. And they still can't win. But there is one objective that could turn the tides there. And it's being pinged out <laughs> heavily by the side of Converse University. Elder Dragon. That 20% or 25%, whatever the execute threshold, I forget what it is off my head, top of my head, might be enough for you to kill Alistair. And Bay State Blue at this point just needs to throw everything in the kitchen sink at Alistair. I don't care if you lose Devil to Grey on it. If you kill Alistair, it's worth it because you've still got Kawa as backup damage. Converse University doesn't really have anybody else but this Oriana, and she's 2, 11, and 14. She's only sitting on three completed items. Oh, we're sitting down what I believe is just of cusp of three minutes until that major elder finally graces its presence on the rift and you see the vision here they barely have anything oh. but it's right on the devil and he's already removed from the fight so now no carry to play against alice starts just walking okay. this one down step after step into the he's showstopper quick removal and a full yeah. team wipe here the quick teleports now the rush this could be game rmc 40 seconds, 40 seconds before the soonest person comes up, and that's Devil once again going down without Lamb's respite used. And Alistair completely, utterly untouched in that fight. Why were they fighting in that particular zone? Oh. Dragon wasn't quite up yet. Dragon wouldn't be up for two minutes, and this might cost them everything. Tristana, fastest turret taker. 20 seconds, and they're already in the base taking down the inhibitor. One, the inhib gone. Omumu to rush. They've still got the lovely cannon to work with. 
10 seconds up until the end there for Kindred. I believe this might be a little bit of a league bug here as usually with these games do kind of finish out sometimes in this regard, but I think our suspicions are confirmed. You look at those death timers. I'm going to bet you the converse one. You know what? I I'm, I'm going to agree with you there unless, and to be fair, Zephyr, we've seen converse pull this off multiple times, desperate base defenses, Maybe base state stages it, but unlikely, highly unlikely at this I, point. And considering that I Converse like was winning before that, I don't see them losing here. <laughs> I, I, I personally <laughs> think after that absolute monstrous source of damage that Tristan and the rest of the team would have no problem making sure they get down. What is what? The one eighth of that turret, the other one in the Nexus to boot in 10 seconds. They're fine. Converse take an absolutely incredible win. And it's all in the hands of Alistair Day. Alistair is an absolute god on the map. Yeah, I don't think anybody can argue with that uh, after watching this particular game. And I want to give props to the rest of Converse as well because it's look, it, it was the Alistair show, but you of course still need the supporting cast, right? Yes. And rocks on that Amumu, the engages were absolutely on point. And really, that was what helped them turn some of those early fights. Likewise, with Daydream as well. I mean, we hardly yes. screamed out Cataclysm. But the engages, the knockups, a lot of that was what stopped Devil de Grey from getting off those kindred ultimates, the Lamb's Rest, but he was CC'd. He could not pop it even when he wanted to. So uh, absolutely huge props to the side uh, of Converse for being able to hold out. And for Bay State Blue, it's only game one. I think their composition was spot on. It worked. If there's any change I want to see come through from them, it's maybe instead of the Silas, take an Assassin. Something that can kill Alistair. Because the entire of the issue they face was just Alistar. If you kill Alistar, you win. Well, I don't know. I want to see maybe a little bit more of deliberate pacing from there. There was a lot of times where they had the chance to win and it was just a bit too much of a rush that came back to sweep them up in the name of Alistar. But hopefully game two will provide a little bit something more for that Bay State Blue roster. As for us though, we're going to be going towards a short break as we work towards our next lobby. Stick around and stay tuned.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the NECC. If you're just joining us, we came off of the hottest game one, the sense, the realization, the surge back to victory here from Converse <sighs> University, all in the lovely hands here of the one and only Alistair in the 80 carry. If you didn't see it, please go watch the VOD. It's probably the most intense and incredible League of Legends game you'll see in your entire life. As for us, though, we are making our way towards that second game in this best of three series. I'm still Zephyr, joined by the lovely Random Minion cast. Zephyr, I have very mixed feelings after that first game. I am very excited because that was the most exciting opening to the season you could ask for. But now I'm also scared that game two won't quite be as hype here. Because that was what? <sighs> Four back-to-back -back base Fair. defenses from Converse before they just rushed to an end, sprinted to an end on the fifth one, and Bay State's early game. Let's not forget that Bay State Blue, while they Dominant. lost, yeah, absolutely, the first 30 minutes, the entire map besides the Converse Nexus was theirs. They want Baron, they get Baron. They want Dragon, they get Dragon. They want your inhibitor, they take your inhibitor. They had everything right up to the very end. I was, yeah, I was going to say, not just the first 20 minutes, quite literally the entire game, whatever the objective was, their hands were on it. And in the setup for that Elder Drake is where we finally saw them falter into the face of maybe kind of picking something up. Now, it hadn't spawned yet, but they were in the jungle waiting for it to set up. They were getting vision played out there, and it was one quick collapse, one quick rotation, and a walk here from Converse to find their first victory as actually, I believe, one of the first victories here for the League of Legends competition as a whole here in the champions bracket. But now, though, we are going to make our way here into the official picks and bans for the second game, and hopefully we'll see that Triss band out. Yeah, and interesting to note, the loser does get side selection. So Bay State Blue had side selection. They opted to stay on the red side. And honestly, Zephyr, I don't fault them. I think their draft was perfectly fine. The double enchanter was beautiful to watch, and thank goodness the Tristana band just came through there, Zephyr. They are going to uh, remove that right. away from Alistair, and I love it because <clears throat> what carried them was the fact that Alistair had so much agency, right? The Tristana is so safe. You've got self-heal tools while having explosive damage to kill that Kindred over and over again, despite the Lamb's Respite. So I love the fact that they removed that champion because no one else, no one else can do quite the same thing. Yeah, you can maybe replace it out with a little bit of maybe the, the Ezreal or try to kind of get into some of those more dash agency champions when you look in the likes of Kaiser or Samira, but it's not quite 
the same in terms of heal success. So thankfully, not going to be on the map this time. They do forgo the ban here onto Bart, so we might be seeing that one make its resurgence. But mm -hmm. we do see a complete swap up for this top side of the map. Last time around, we did see the absolute incredible performance from Akira here on that Orin, actually playing mm -hmm. into the face of set and successfully taking it, even though in all stereotypical sense of the right here, he was not supposed to. So this time around, though, still aggressive. Now on the hands of that Nar, but I do think Gummy should have an easier time sustaining this one. Yeah, I mean, the Nar Tom Kenji matchup is kind of interesting for the most part because Nar does outrange the Tom Kenji. You're mobile enough that you should be able to dodge a lot of the engages coming in. But at the same time, Tom Kench literally has a thick skin passive, right? So literally. he's going to shrug off a lot of those, you know, little boomerangs being chucked out by <laughs> Mini Nar there. And when you go Mega, Tom Kench will happily go toe to toe with you. So. I like the pickup coming through. What interests me more is this mid lane change that we're seeing. Because last game, Lag Extreme played a very, I don't want to call it passive, but more team fight oriented, more team reliant pick in that Oriana. And this time you're on LeBlanc, which is almost the polar opposite here. You're aggressive, you're looking for picks on your own. You do whatever you want, and your team has to play around you. On Kawo, likewise, from the Silas who goes in, you know, who looks for his own picks takes other people's ultimates, you're now going on Cassiopeia, who's one of the strongest disengaged champions in the game. Right. So also a little bit more later in that own regard, we did see that Silas come into play in the early game to really set up a big majority of the kills that really put Devil to Grey there on the Kidrid last mm -hmm. time around into a great position. So going to be putting more lines the opposite side or the opposite way around this time. We do still see the double support bot lane locked in here for Bay State. They do run Seraphine back onto Wicked Rat, but they do have to switch it up as Yumi is banned, so it's going to be Soraka this time around on the smile. And you know what? The Soraka is going to do the exact same thing that Yumi was mm -hmm. doing last time here, Zephyr, with one difference in that you probably want to run the Flash, so we're not going to see you know the heal exhaust, the extra yep. summoner, as it were. But Soraka, I mean, she did get nerfed a little bit this patch because the buff she received last patch where she gets to remove grievous wounds when she uses her ultimate wish there was a little bit overpowered. It's going to remain an extremely strong tool. If Alistair goes in early execution is calling, it's not going to be quite as effective. But speaking of Alistair, Tristana removed. He's gone on another very safe AD carry here, Caitlyn. But Caitlyn is very different from Tristana. You don't have the burst damage. You've got a lot more lane oppression with that range but your mid game's a lot weaker if they fall behind as badly as they did last game i don't know if alistair will be able to carry converse to back to back to back to back defenses again but at the same time alistair playing into the face of that sustain battle last time around we we had our doubts and he did decide to show us the absolute presence of burst that can come through from trying to kind of mitigate continual sustain this time around the constant poke oppression can be managed very well by that double support kind of composition. So not quite going to see as early or as aggressive as a lead in his favor due to having to deal with that at any constant right now. I will say Rox is on the bar. This is his most played or one of his most played mm -hmm. supports, and it was not banned this time around. They opted to get rid of the Tristan instead, so that happened to slide through. Now, I have mixed opinions when it comes to the bard, but... <laughs> I'll say this, if you are a skilled player who tends to enjoy the good old Bardo and you have that in your back line as your one trick or maybe a little bit of the pony to ride, it holds presence in terms of great lockdown, great sustain, and as well as map rotations to boot. We didn't quite get to see that when he was on the Moo Moo last time, even though his engages were superb. Now that he can make his way across map, maybe affect, get lag extreme who's on a carry somewhere else, that could be huge. Yeah, and I love the fact that you bring that up, right? Because when you're running into a double support lane, it's hard to win that lane. We said it last game when Alistair was up a bunch of CS and still not, you know, necessarily dominating the Seraphine and Yumi who still had such great effect in every team fight. It's not going to happen again this game. So if you're not going to be able to outright win and crush the lane, pick a roaming support. And Rox on the Amumu had some great engages. And with the Mumu, it's situational. You have to land the bandage toss or you got to flash in. You got to get into the middle of them. You don't have to do that with Bard. The range on that temper fate is so long anyways that you can just kind of drop it mid lane halfway there and then roam the rest of the way. So I love the pickup and I love the adaptation because it's not as big a wombo combo that we're seeing come through from Converse. It didn't work in game one. 
it came down to just doing for the AD carry, and they're doing that with just the Jarvan, with just the Tom Kent. You still have a lot of AOE potency with that Tempered Fate as well in a Cataclysm if that lands and knocks some critical members. But at least this time, Lag Extreme can act as a secondary AD carry, uh, a secondary AP carry. Well, hopefully it works maybe a little bit better this time. You talked a lot about how he was supportive of him. Now maybe he can be in his own right something to play off of. So I'm going to keep a keen eye as we wait and watch for that one. And Kawo, in his own regard, is in somewhat of a similar situation. The Silas mm -hmm. was strong, but the Cassiopeia has definitely got more of a foot here as personally... <laughs> Graves now in hands of Devil isn't going to be that hyper kindred we saw last time. I mean, go granted, twelve and one Graves will be whatever he wants <laughs> to be if that happens to happen again here for Devil. But I will say we are looking towards a mid-centric gang, which is hilarious since both these teams typically draft towards their bottom and top sides and really put a heavy focus towards them. Yeah, I've just got to wonder how much of that is because you know Wicked Rad having to come in. Uh, for the side of base state blue compared to their usual uh, AD carry, uh, who I believe is Jurassic here. The, the change up and the fact that they're shifting the sustained damage to someone else in game one was Devil to Grey. Now with the Graves, you know, with the reload mechanic, they're shifting some of that carry potential more towards the mid lane to Kawo on this Cassiopeia. Well, we'll definitely see how it will hold presence here as the different pacing you do bring up a good point regarding those subs coming to play that might kind of switch it up but after seeing the alistar game and a little bit of devil in his own right i don't think they have any problems playing towards their usual win conditions but we are going to jump back into this second game here if you are just joining us this is of course converse university versus bay state blue we come in off an incredible win for converse we're in the face of a huge deficit they managed to climb their way back through in the hands of Alistair. I am your play by play caster, Zephyr, joined, of course, by the lovely random minion caster as my color. And now that we're once again on the rift here, Zephyr, again, five point starts. No aggressive play from either team. And for both these teams, I think they're going to be okay with that. They don't want to coin flip early. If anything, Converse has to be hyper aware that last game, it was two back to back failed attempts at plays, which really set them behind, that got Devil to Grave very far ahead. And sure, it's a Graves, not a Kindred, but Graves, if anything, spikes harder earlier than that Kindred and can still be as big a menace, if not. Well, for now, nothing too crazy. No early game, nothing to really boot. Remember last time around, eight minutes into the game, we were sitting 15 kills across the board. And you did come into the start of this one saying, I don't know, I'm a bit mixed feelings here. And I, I can agree with that yeah. sentiment. I mean... <laughs> hopefully it is a boring game hopefully there isn't an absolute wash of kills to start this one off i would i'd like a little bit more of control maybe at the behest of the viewer who are looking for maybe that excitement for now though at least the first couple of minutes it should remain that way i mean this is not the amumu bards and gauge is not quite as strong so it's more you know a bit of a poke war in that right. bot lane especially with that caitlin range as well i'm interested to keep it on the top lane because akira double or killed Gummy twice in a row, solo. This time, starting with the call. So Akira's not looking for lane dominance. He's looking to farm up, and I'm curious to see if that does result in Gummy getting a bit more agency in lane and actually being able to help out Daydream potentially at the scuttle or maybe on some of these invades. Well, the big or the craziest thing that we didn't we failed to bring up is the fact that into that matchup there, Gummy was supposed to win it this time. And the fact that he did die the double time against Akira there is even bigger of a statement so yes absolutely we'll watch for that one as it may come through at any given moment here looking at some of these major lane states you can already see the aggression here from thomas across all three lanes hard pushing from just everybody keeping complete control of the pace there as they rush these into turn you you see a little bit of a rotation into that river area from both of the bots Wow, they're this. really trying to secure Daydream some Deep. sort of early advantage here. And uh, I, it's a nice attempt, but it also tells me that they have no clue where Devil to Grey actually started on the map because Devil already full cleared the bot side, went top. You're just going to get the scuttle. That's really all you can find here. And it, to me, that also should signal to Lag Extreme and Gummy Hat that, hey, be careful. Devil might be looking for an early gank either mid or top because he's certainly not far. Well, hopefully that warning will come through not just here but within those comms because 
It looks like Gummy Hat may be oh. privy to that. He's going to try to get that immediate oh, dash knock up to escape, and it's going to be the flash blown to make sure he gets out alive there. So you talk about that exact concept that even we can read out just a little bit early on, and that was a flash that did not need to be blown. And he had wards as well. Gummy dropped an early ward in the tri bush, but when you know devils come in from all angles, you can always quick draw over the walls as well. Didn't yep. catch him. And we should also point out that Devil is not running Flash, has the Ignite. So that's really, really close. You know, the thick skin wasn't quite enough. And maybe the next time Devil gets that Ignite, they get an early kill and you set Gummy behind once again. But for now, at least, didn't happen. It's a reset and things are still fairly even other yeah. than CS. I was going to say, CS might be its own discussion, <laughs> but literally three, two, five, one wave difference here on the top and bot side. That's nothing crazy to bring up. I do like seeing the level of aggression here, especially from the mm -hmm. mid lane. You, you talked about how passive lag was last time and into the hands of an Oriana. Yeah, you, you kind of have to be, especially when you're running Silas up against there. So to see him constantly punishing out Cal when he has the opportunity, I'd love to see Daydream make a rotation, come to the mid side. I know you guys are privy to playing towards a win condition in your bot and top lanes, but you're giving a high assassin priority in the mid. Maybe give it some love. Yeah, and the fact that both these mid laners are actually converted ADC mains, right? They're converting right. for the purpose of the team. But if you can do this, go for it here. Oh, that was close. And I want to point out, Kawo no TP either. So if this forces a back out of Kawo, Kawo is going to miss wave. Oh, yeah, already on the back there. And Lag can make his own response. And he's not going to be forced to use the TP in his own regard. We do see another gank come towards the top side this time, though. We do learn our lesson. Gummy's thrown down that control ward there, so he spots him out a little bit earlier this time. So still nothing you know crazy to really extend on there. But I like the learning experience. I like seeing the evolution and change as you as you literally quite <laughs> change throughout the game. Yeah, it's 75 gold to keep your life. That is a worthwhile trade any day. Vision save vision saves lives, pardon me there, Zephyr. But right. it still does cost you money, right? That is insurance. And I like this adaptation here. He's sick of getting ganked. He's called Daydream up, but there hmm. was a ward in the bush which did spot them out. So Akira should be aware that this is a thing. Is there a good knock up from Gummy Happy? You do oh. flash into a great first blood. I love the juggle of the turret there, putting it majority oh. into that thick skin onto Gummy now. Gotta be careful. Devil is on the side. And, oh, no. oh, the worst time to try to go for that back. But a good flag and drag is going to make sure that he is still alive. So first kill of the game. Very nice. Well paced, I might say. Yeah, a, a nice attempt from Devil. But Converse is going to be fine with that. Gummy Hat still got all the minions under the turret. And Akira still lost an entire wave and a half. Devil did not get any experience for that. So Converse really biting back in this early game. That's what you love to see. And it's... To a certain degree, what you expect, right? They've got the J4. That's the more aggressive early game jungle. You've got the Caitlyn, who's expected to win out the bot lane. And you've got the LeBlanc here, who should be expected to bully out the Cassiopeia early. Later on, you know, post 6 with that petrifying gaze, there's a bit more threat to answer. But Cassio does need some items right now, just sitting on that Blasting Wand, on that tier. Not in the perfect position to counter the LeBlanc here. We'll say those ultimates are a big question as those are some of the more major windows that could kind of turn the pace of things as it really even flow hasn't quite been decided as of yet but that dragon is where we might see our next fight break out you do see hard aggressive on the rotation here from both bard and daydream here on this driver once again he does steal that blue buff so taking that right out of the hands of devil de gray here who is not quite having the more intensive game as we saw from last time yes Blanc punished oh. out here, but a quick flag and drag and a big teleport bag to make sure that lag stream sustains another kill here or his first kill in this mid lane. Well, good, good Ooh. toss it into turret there. Won this one down, <laughs> baby. Very nice uh, devour. In contrast, to last game we're at eight minutes effort, only three kills. But Converse, these kills have looked so keen. There's no opportunity for base state to answer. These kills that are coming through the gank to the top side, the fact that they had numbers advantage now, the, the devour right into the turret, perfectly played by Gummy in stark contrast to game one. And I want to point out that kill in the mid lane on Kawo as well, because that to me is a little bit of team miscommunication there. They knew they were being invaded on. They knew that Rox wasn't there. Daydream 
had moved out and they kind of still went for that. And you're on a Cassiopeia. You're not the most mobile of champions. You don't have that escape. So really, really strong play. And now that Converse has control on the map, we talked about Dragon, but Herald's up as well. And I want to see which one they go for because I feel like with the pacing of their game, Herald might actually be more beneficial. Definitely it's not set up in terms of the positioning for Herald as of yet, but that may change in the next 30 or so here. Dragon still exists on the Rift, and I, I'd, I'd be privy to be seeing a fight here at any given moment. For now, though, might be looking for a take here on Takao. There is Devil to Grey over on the oh. side. Jarvan with the big flag and drag, but a great petrifying gaze. Sadly, not going to stop that kill from coming through, but hey, three stuns to boot definitely looks nice. I mean, the, the fact that you've got walls to set up that bard stun every time with that cataclysm, it's yeah. so free. And Kawa already blew flash earlier on that last gank here. So it's so easy for them to take that to take out Kawa here. And you don't have control over the early objective. Zephyr, we said that, oh, they don't have set up for Herald. They didn't need it. They just needed to kill Kawa. And <laughs> they now they get themselves a free Herald. <laughs> Ooh, for now. You see Bar come through Magical oh. Journey into the Tempered Fate. Oh, Going to set up a trap there for a so big good. root into kill into the hands of Rocks, sadly. But hey, turret plates to come through as well. You take out one member. It definitely looking still just as good Ooh. as Alistar flashes forward. Ace in the hole under turret. Oh. Sadly, not enough to take out Wicked Rad there. Just barely a sliver of health left. Either way, it's going to force the back and continue to assume more gold onto our monster in the bot. And Wicked Rat had to blow Barrier as well, Zephyr. I want to point out how close that kill really was. You see that sliver of health? That was post-barrier, post-healing, post-everything he had in his kit. And now that won't be available for the next time. Mid lane, though. The mid lane's already looking dead as a door nail here. One quick kill. They're going to try to feed this one over. But it does end up into the hands of Daydream either way. So... Six and zero, and I might say this is much better looking compared to last time here for Converse. And they've already shown us what they can do at a major deficit. This is them at a lead. Ooh, devil from the back end. He's able to secure what is his first kill for the side of base state blue, but it is at the hands of a quick root in response. And that being said, it I mean being said that it's only on the support, not much of a kill here as those around you continue to still assume gold. The sick part to me, Zephyr, is that despite the kill, despite the numbers advantage, Dragon is still not very safe for them to take. Kawo doesn't have that much damage yet, and you're running double support in the bot lane. They're going to try and take this, but Converse can try and contest. Mm, that's a good removal of the Blast Cone. They do get that information here, so they're going to try to pull this one oh. out. And even with a little bit of an advantage, he still is unable to secure that smite. And actually... My apologies, he had no advantage. The constant farming here from Devil to Grey has actually put a two-level lead here on this grave. So it was risky as risky gets already trying to play oh, that one out. No. But now, Tempered Fate into the Good trap ride. there. Big root cancel, and that's going to be an easy kill here for Alistair. Very big difference between how these teams want to play right now. Converse, you said that Daydream is very far behind in CS. He's been playing for the lane, right? And it's oh, showing. absolutely. Gummy's winning his lane, Lag's winning the lane, Alistar and Rox are winning it even without jungle intervention. Whereas Base State Blue right now, no because Devil was meant to be one of their carries, he's just power farming the best he can right now. And Kawo is suffering a little bit, but you know, the lanes are willing to suffer to try and get their carries ahead. Oh, under the turret, between Very the turrets. nice. Between turrets, like you said, and don't forget that Ace in the Hole is available into the face of a wish there, so they're not mm -hmm. going to waste that one just yet but still doesn't bode well oh, and now no. another return gank it is that cataclysm and it's a good response from petrifying but not enough to stop the constant onslaught here and now they transition that over into the first turret of the game and that also is gonna unlock lag extreme if you thought daydreams mm -hmm. ganks were potent before he's now got a leblanc in his back pocket as well devil desperately trying to answer here he's hovering topside but he's not even going for the gank on Gummy Hat, he's probably not going to be able to kill Lag Extreme, who's extremely slippery. And he's just, you know, continuing to farm right now. At some point, he needs to start converting that farm into more pressure. Well, this is absolutely crazy. It feels like we're watching two completely separate teams. You talk about last or the mm -hmm. first game of this series in terms of not even just the pacing, but some of the oh. mistakes that we saw, completely different. For now, though, another kill. 
disdained into the hands of Alistair. You see that lovely ace in the hole. <laughs> yeah, they, easy kill, easy conversion. The flag as well, giving them bonus damage uh, to take down all these structures so quickly. And I feel like Converse right now is playing League of Legends. Bay State Blue is playing Pummel Party, and they're getting pummeled. Oof. Well, two turrets play off of a completely open blue side, and they're going to try to take advantage of that, clear out as much of the vision as they can. And it really feels like Daydream has been in the face of everything here on this mm -hmm. side, even even at the expense of not quite farming, just making sure that he has the presence to know that Devil isn't quite there, isn't quite in the area to play around, can't come through with a gank if you're constantly in their face. So Zephyr, I feel like we've been in this situation before, right? 15 minutes and we're talking yes. about the fact that some gold leads are a little bit big. This one's almost at six and a half thousand gold lead. That is hugely significant. But Converse was down almost, what was it, 8,000? 8,000 at 15. Okay, 8,015. So this lead isn't even as big. And Converse managed to claw their way back in. So now base state, Lou, it's your turn to show us what you've fought. And they do have hyper carries as well. Cassiopeia can output as much, if not more, damage than a Tristana. Your Graves, Devil to Great, has found the only kills of the game for his team as well. So there are still options here. I just need to see them start looking proactively a little bit. And Graves isn't going to be that J4. He's not going to be able to make plays on his own. So maybe send, you know, Wicked with him and he's... Yeah, I was about to say, as you continue to usher the oh. next future here, he's not quite dead, but a teleport might Huge. say otherwise. Big flash there over the wall. Gummy Hat actually might go down for the oh. result of trying to save his team. It is a very nice tempered fate that does <laughs> actually manage to keep him alive as he finds his way over the wall here. And a section of four Yo, mistakes. Gar! Now a good encore to get the double charm and a good pullback from go. the Gnar from Akira here to sustain the two kills over. That's some of your most major carries. And they're going to walk away from that one. They've got the two kills that they wanted, and they made sure to capitalize on some of the biggest mistakes I saw this game here from Converse. Let's go, Bay State Blue, because oh, this is Lord. exactly what we're talking about. The game isn't over till it's over, Zephyr. And sure, the gold lead is still pretty significant here. I mean, you're still staring down 5,500 gold lead, a whole thousand less, but still significant. But more importantly, they just showed you the template for how they're going to win team fights here find a pick on targets. Their burst damage is pretty significant and petrifying gaze with Encore, huge rocks getting caught out. Oh, rock already down there. No knock up to follow from Gummy Hab. He's still gonna try to chase this one out, but he's gotta be very careful. There's a full roster waiting to fight him at any given step. Either way, Cataclysm oh. launch here on a Seraphine deleted from the fight. Daydream continues to chase this one down. Maybe Soraka the next to go here. That Slide. flag is on low cooldown, oh, no. and it does come through for a kill Kira? on the lag string. Big teleport is available though. there as they do get the devour on to Kawo on this Cassiopeia. Now over to Nar, their attention to follow suit. It is going oh, to be what most might be a full escape here. As I believe they can walk this one, but a good magical journey is going to keep them on their tail as they work their way under turret. Good oh. zoning on the dive, but not enough. It is going to be that 50 caliber net that sustains what is that fourth kill coming out of the fight. And now with the wave pushing, they might be able to secure the tier two. Devil and Akira had their dancing shoes on. I want to give them huge kudos for surviving as long as they did, but... Converse is just relentless, and why not here? You can keep chasing. You don't have to care. They're too busy trying to survive to kill you, and despite the win that Bay State Blue pick up, it is still going to be Converse securing themselves a dragon here, an Inferno Drake, no less. And with that going down, Zephyr, we're looking at the mountain or Cloud. It's going to be Cloud here, and I actually think Cloud is going to be massive for Converse. They have such big ultimates and a lot of playmaking tools that Tempered Fate that Cataclysm, we've already seen it make big moves happen. You give them more cooldown reduction, more ability haste, means more action for us. Well, I will say we do get a look now at the both respective win cons for how to play out these team fights. We got it first from base state blue, the wombo, the pick, finding those carries into the stain, going through with the timing on Akira, the petrifying gaze to follow suit. That's enough to make this composition work. In turn, it's these little picks finding what is Devil to Grey caught oh. out too deep and then <laughs> carrying it forward for another kill again and again. So 
Stuff like that is going to lead to a dead nexus if Bay State isn't careful. And getting that pick onto Devil means that no contest for any major neutral objectives. Converse is going to be able to pick up this Herald nice and easy here. And I love the fact, too, that Lag actually actually donated the kill to Gummy Hat. Yeah. He's already 5 0 4. He doesn't need more kills right now. If you get Medjai's, whole different story. But no Medjai's on this LeBlanc. So they're like, okay, who can we give it to? Rocks or Gummy? We'll give it to our top laner. I hope it pays off because Tom Kench can be a point. Well, hopefully it'll pay off right about now. Well, you know, now I say that, but he hasn't taken the time to back just quite yet. I've been a little bit too much on the mind of Dota where you can buy items in the <laughs> <laughs> No, Zephyr, not the game. Don't let my love seep out and cast. Either way, they still find the last remaining tier one here on the map as Commerce continues their ensuing push. They've got this red side jungle completely warded and locked mm. down, so... Be careful, Bay State could walk in at any given moment. At least they are clearing this one out. Yeah, they're being very careful oh, here. Oh, oh no, not, not careful, careful enough. enough. <laughs> Alistair getting that one with the ace in the hole as well. And now Akira, where are you gonna go? They're all collapsing in. Here's the dive. A quick knock up to follow oh. suit and another kill to boot. Converse here, they're gonna lap down that Rift Herald and they might find an inhib off. It really feels like a replay from last game's ever. Really Remember how the so Herald similar. got dropped at just, like, what, 19 minutes last game? They pushed in. They got Inhibitor turret. They got Inhib. They even got a Nexus turret. They might be able to do that. Tempered Fate does force the flash out of Kao, so Cassiopeia. Oh, they're going to keep going. Absolutely vulnerable. I was about to say, they're not walking away from one, this one yeah. just yet. And Devil to Grey is in no position. He does finally come through on that back, and it's just too late. Imagine if he'd actually been there. Maybe they would... Mm -hmm. pulled some kind of response off but that inhib down and the baron already up no they are going to go for the reset but vision's already in their favor yeah. because the clearing that smile tried to do earlier unfortunately just got undone with that one death right they just walk in on the way out they drop a whole bunch of wards and okay i was gonna say the red trinket just on cooldown is gonna be able to clear out some but not all and Bay state blue i just don't see a safe way for them to walk into this pit they need Akira to be mega pretty much before the fight starts. You don't want to wait for the fight anymore. It's great if you can get it that way, but the timing is too specific. And you need a tank to frontline the potential ambush that's going to be in your topside jungle. Well, I, that's the, the, the crucial aspect of Nar that makes him a riskier pick to play around. It takes such an advanced level of skill to manage what is that rage and play into those bigger moments, especially around barons like this, that can be crucial and game <clears throat> deciding. So hopefully it comes through that big front is pretty much the major thing that they need. And it was the major thing that actually made that fight work out because it was petrifying gaze into the lockdown from the gnar coming through there. But now Baron, you have a little bit of vision out as it is broken. So they are going to take that one through and they do get a read. I'm curious to see if they can force it, but Nar, Kao, no one's in position. Yeah, and Kao, no He teleport. has smite Again. advantage. He can just 50-50 this one to go for the steal. Oh, he he does! It! He finds the steal. It is going to be a punished kill, but at that point, you've already secured the Baron to defend any next major rush here. I mean, that that is the perfect play for base state blue. You knew that it's a one-way trip for Devil, but if he gets the Baron, it's worth it, and it helps to protect against the so siege good. coming through. They're looking for dives, though, and we could... At the same time, yeah. Alistair is taking every shot of that turret, so he has to walk out incredibly far. Yes, <laughs> they sustain the one kill, but at the cost of maybe them all, Ghost you do Cassio. see the lag go back in. The ace in the hole to do enough oh. damage to make sure they get the response back, but Soraka and Nar hot on the tail here, but whoa! That's a chunk of burst that's going to secure it before we see lag extreme go down there. I will say, if Alistair had not juggled what was three or four of those turret shots, forced to heal in the face of something that wasn't even Bay State Blue, I think that would have ended completely different. Yeah, because then he'd be able to act as a pseudo turret oh, in yeah. his own right now. But because of that, Bay State Blue, they get a bit of a lifeline. The gold lead is actually not as big as it might look. And, oh, they're responding, TP. 
Teleport, but still another <laughs> dragon, another objective. The smites are on point oh. here for Devil the Grey. It's Alistair? at the cost of Daydream, but Alistair, he is walking his way forward there. 50 caliber net to push him a little bit forward. The slow from the tongue. It's going to be the boulder back. Oh. And one more auto will do the job. And yeah, as, oh, he, no, as he walks into Alcove, that is all <laughs> said and done there. Cool. Still. One for one. Yeah, I was going to say, it's still one for one. And the Dragon did play into Bay State's favor. Technically, they came out on top. I know that Devil is a jungle, but I'm going to call him an AD carry. Because Jeez, in this series so far, it's been the AD carries who have been keeping the teams in the games. In game one, Alistair just off the Tristana well, play. In fair. game two here, it's the Graves. It's the Smites. I mean, that was a risky 50-50. And Devil manages to win the 50-50 once again. Now... I don't know who's still got Baron buff, Baron buff me, up and available for base state blue, but it's only going to last 40 seconds here. And after that, Converse get to start pressuring in once again here. The Caitlyn Siege is a very real issue, and Alistar has been getting the free fire on target. Right, and at this point, no one has really put a stop to this kind of win condition. Yes, they've been able to pick off what are the little mistakes from being a little bit too far forward, going for those heavy dives, but when they slow it down, and really control how they assess each target and really appropriate that siege that you just brought up i haven't seen a good answer and it's a lot into the hands of the likes of devil and akira who have to get into the face of some of these more major carries and take care of business before they are able to walk this one down here and with that top lane constantly pushing it's not going to get easier no base state had a one for one effectively with the supers in the top side now they crack the bottom inhibitor turret as well and the inhibitor turrets are the problem. You can leave those inhibitors up because you're looking for that big team fight on open ground anyways. As I say that, Akira jumping oh, in. Oh, what an ultimate to whip at the last moment. Temper Faith is going oh. to lock him down in a oh. big root in the devour to follow. Throws Akira out of the fight. Now, smile maybe a little bit too far. We do see the dive here from Gummy Hat. A good petrifying gaze, but no lockdown as it is Daydream deep into that back line. Now, the though, turret. a quick turnaround. It is that turret that's going to punish the majority of this team out for going as deep as they did. So what started as a good fight, as we didn't have quite the best opportunity to see, is punished out by something as simple as a structure. Add them to the roster, Bay State. Oh, my goodness. I, I don't even need to see the fight. I just need to see the outcome. And the outcome is... Base State Blue survived. Another push, and they're closing the gap, Zephyr. We no, went no, from no, no. We're not starting this again. Five and a half thousand. It's around 4,000 right now. The gap is closing, and their composition does still get the scale. Let's not forget that Cassiopeia is an absolute monster, and I'm not seeing healing cut come out at all from the side of Converse right now. Okay, let's not say it all. There is an execution calling on Daydream. But that's on a Jarvan. He's not the one who's going to be efficiently applying it to everybody here. And I think that's really what's keeping Bay State Blue in the game right now is the fact that they're healing, they're shielding. It's not getting affected too, too much, and it's sustaining their carry. There's no major Grievous here even in the hands of Alistair this time. So yeah. and in that sense, your major pumping damage carry isn't, isn't even in putting that on the board here. For now, though, there is still just that one turret, so maybe once that's gone, they'll finally actually find some success, because I'll tell you what, it has been Tier 2 now, the Tier 3 in the Nexus Divins. I mean, it's pumping out enough damage to actually make some of these team fights play out in the favor here of Bay State Blue as they constantly work their way back into this one. Inhib is up, though. Mm -hmm. All inhibs are up. They, they, the top one has respawned, and they never did quite manage to crack the bottom one. And I do want to point out, too, a little bit about Caitlyn. We talked about the fact that Caitlyn is a very strong early game champion, but she kind of falls off a little bit in the mid game. That gets reversed when she starts to hit that four item power spike uh, towards the end of the game there. She's on three right now, but you can already see how much she's chunking out anybody not named Meganar. And Akira's only Meganar for a fraction of the time. Oh, oh devil. no, devil. Too far forward. I can't even believe they were able to snip this one out. Maybe Bay State can still find a way to punish it as they do secure the initial kill onto Rocks there. Nar is charging up. He's going to have that ultimate available if he wants to go deep, and he does, oh. but he isn't able to find the ultimate. But he does 
just barely catch out Alistair. Cassiopeia no, no. still, though, can't quite find the burn that she wants. It's one quick flash that changes the fate of a fight as a whole. Now, lag extreme. Another oh. auto follow. Knock up down. Wicked Rad here trying to run away. Gonna make this a full ace and a triple onto Alistair. They're looking to just end here. That Zephyr TP's coming in, and they have the minions on the top side as well. Alistair is still up. Devil will come up in 10 seconds, but the next person up is going to be Smile, and that's another 10 seconds after. I don't know if Devil can hold this. Devil's going to do his absolute best. He's got that collateral damage that will try to wipe the majority of these minions, but this could already be a series set in stone oh. here as Converse University take our first series of the series. Almost, Zephyr. Almost so they managed to turn the tides. But, I mean, Devil gives and Devil takes away, both in Game 1 and in Game 2, right? The Kindred in Game 1 it looks so good. Unfortunately, towards the end, struggled. This game as well, he was holding them in. Let's not forget, he stole Baron buff. If they lost that Baron buff, Game 2 would have been over right there and then. Absolutely. But, unfortunately, at the end, that pickoff didn't matter. And I want to talk a little bit about that last fight as well. Because I understand throwing everything at the kitchen sink to kill Alistair. But that was last game with the Tristana. This time on the Caitlyn, they went too deep. And the double supports could not keep up. I think that really changed everything. If you have the double supports protecting your Cassiopeia, granting her heals, granting her buffs, she gets to output all the damage. But unfortunately, Cowell didn't have the double supports. And we saw what happened. Amazing tempered fate once again from Roxy. I cannot sing this man's praises enough. Yes. His supports so have good. been... Beautiful to watch the series. I mean, I also want to also bring up lagging extreme there to actually kind of mm -hmm. create that separation. It wasn't just the likes of rocks. You have mm. that LeBlanc being a high presence carry, also kind of putting a lot of the damage on the field that did kind of dissuade stuff like the Seraphine and Soraka from working their way forward there. So a little bit of a stretch that definitely spelled a bigger mistake here for the entirety of game two. I will say, though, I am very proud to see Bay State to perform the way they did. Devil was that one experienced player coming through before the season started, and we got to see a lot of that. But the rest of this roster isn't quite as experienced, isn't in set in stone in comparison to Converse. But still, they look good. They had their shining moments. They played very well in game one. They just couldn't quite find a way to close it out. So maybe not tonight. But as we move forward through the rest of this fall split, we could be seeing Bay State Blue work their way back into it. Yeah, plenty of time yet. And their drafts were solid. I, I still think the double support draft that they won both the games, Good. very, very strong, right? Wicked Rat and Smile, that battery in the bot lane, they did their job. I know they didn't look flashy. We didn't say their names too much. <laughs> yeah. But as healers, as supports, they did their job, and every time Devil de Grey survived, every time Kawo survived, every time Akira survived, that was thanks to them. And Kawo on the Cassiopeia looked a lot better, honestly, than uh, what we saw with the Silas. And the Silas had some pretty big ultimates as well. So definitely a lot of ingredients here. I am looking very much forward to see what Bay State Blue can do once they get their regular AD carry back into the roster uh, with their starting lineup. You know, a bit more time to work together. Should be great. And Converse. <laughs> Alistair. The one person I kind of didn't touch on earlier, Alistair, because that man is a monster, and teams are probably going to have to start taking note of this man. If you go up against Converse University here, triple Fear. ban AD carry might not be uh, out of the question here. He certainly deserves it, because both these games, he put up epic numbers. Oh, just absolutely absurd numbers. And in, in the face of this season as a whole, you're going to have to worry. I've seen this man performing. I don't believe Lotus, in his time he was on the roster, were able to eep out the wins that they wanted, but even still, his presence was a namesake wherever he went. As for us, though, we're not quite the namesake that's going to be keeping this train moving forward here as we work our way into our next series. It's going to be Blue Gold A versus Columbia Navy, and I don't personally know who will be gracing you on this glorious NECC desk, but I can tell you I've had an absolutely wonderful time. So for both me and Random Minion Caster, we hope you all have a great night and enjoy the rest of tonight's show. Sell online tickets directly from your school's website. Scan digital or printed tickets with the Hometown Gate app. And get immediate access to ticket revenue with real-time reporting. At no cost to your school. 
It's that easy to bring touchless ticketing to your hometown. Hometown. Fast scans, happy fans. What sound experience would you like today? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing.
Welcome, everybody, to week one of the NECC here on League of Legends. It's Friday. You know what day it is. Come on now. It's the weekend. Let's get into it. Let's get into these matches. Join here today. It's going to be myself, Mick. And over to my left, I think I got the camera angles right. Oh, no. We're uh, going other the other side. Way. There you go. Be down bad. We got him here in the lobby as well. How you doing, my man? I'm doing great, man. It's super hyped up. We're casting together for the first time. Yep. I'm looking at you for the first time. I got to say, I dig the hair. Thank you, sir. It's 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 a struggle, but, you know, every Definitely blessing comes with a curse as well. <laughs> yeah, that it does. That it does. But, dude, why don't you tell us the nuts matchup we have for today? Oh, we are going back to the Challengers Division. Obviously, we're going to get the best of the best here for Week 1. And we got ourselves going on right now over in the Yellow Division. It's going to be Blue Gold against the likes of Columbia Navy. So I'm expecting some really good picks here. I'm suggesting some really good matchups overall, especially after the last dominant performance we had from the other side from Converse, especially with that comeback we had come through as well. But looking at the drafts that we got coming through right now, we already got some great picks coming out. We got some great matchups coming through. And I'm expecting the Rift to just be going up in flames here by the end of the night. Yeah, I'm just as excited as you are, Mick, especially with, uh, I got to talk to some of the reps from and some of the players from the teams we have tonight, Blue Gold Day and Columbia Navy. And uh, especially on Columbia Navy side, their coach told me that their solo laners do like to play some spicy picks. So we might see some funny business going on in the draft whenever we actually get into that. Yeah, I think we already have a little bit here. Uh, we have a little bit of a taste of the champ pools. We have that little insider review going on right now. I mean, just looking at generally, we can tell just from these bands alone, from what we've seen already, is that Blue Gold, they may like the spicy picks, but they're also not a fan of the standard ones at the same time because they went ahead and banned out Annie, Bard, Togoth, Bundle, and Aurelia. So they really don't like the meta coming in here all that much, and we're already going to see that coming into fruition here. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see how the rest of this one plays out. I actually didn't look, so I don't want any spoilers, Mick, okay? I'm seeing this oh, one for sorry. the first time. That's okay. No worries. The first three bands, it's whatever. It's the picks that I'm looking for as well. What are we going to prioritize? That's the thing. Like you said, a lot of the champs that are considered quite strong at the current moment are taking out. Kled, not exactly my first pick for B1, but I mean, we were told spicy. It's yeah. looking like blue gold are the ones who are delivering first. Yeah, I'm definitely with you there. Kled's going to be an insane pick, especially with the way he kind of impacts the meta. He's not really seen too often, but he's definitely strong whenever he does have that presence. But overall, as a counter pick, we do have that Urgot coming through and a big beefy boy at it. So, I mean, that in itself is going to be a lot of presence across the field. It's going to be a massive target, but he may just be a massive target you need with all the health on the pool. And with an Olaf as a backup, that could definitely be something to really run with. And, and you can already see what's going on here on blue gold side is that they are kind of trapping themselves as really beefy frontline for Glem on this Cassiopeia. He's going to be the main damage dealer already so far going into the later stages of this game. Once that scaling really comes through, leaning into the Corky though, especially with a jungler like Olaf, early game positioning is going to be very important here for blue gold's mid laner because it's going to be very easy for you to just get jumped on top of and get your laning phase basically just demolished. Yeah, I'm definitely with you here. And just looking at how everything's really panning out for the side of Columbia College, these guys, they're going for a very poke-oriented comp. Even with the tanks, we have Olaf just spamming those axes across the board. It's we true. have Urgot with all those projectiles coming through from a tank, which is essentially usually very melee-oriented. But he's one of those picks you don't really see being one of those typical, or I'd say, more orthodox tanks that are very up and close and personal when they're really trying to get those projectiles down. So honestly, Leona's going to be a great little counterbalance for the likes of Columbia College if they do want to have those engages, have a little bit more crowd control for them to work with and get some presence on the field without getting shut out too quickly. And I think both of the just for both teams here, I'm really keeping my eyes on the mid jungle here. It just seems like a really strong element of the game, especially in these last couple of patches in the current metagame. When you have champs like Olaf, Xin Zhao, who have so much ability to impact this early game, and along with these hard scaling mid laners, like things like Corky or Cassiopeia, this is where a lot of the game might end up being make, make or break, especially on Columbia Navy side. You have Komsky, he's playing the Ezreal. Early laning phase, you, you pick Ezreal, it's like, okay, listen, Shogo yeah. fanboy, he doesn't want to be there anymore. He He's going to chill with you to level three, and that is going to be it. He's going to go impact other lanes, walk around with Matthew 16, hold hands with the jungler as the support should. Yeah, I'm definitely with you. And on the other side of the field, we do see Blue Gold running that vein, and I feel like that in itself is going to be a massive, 
massive presence to really get in these fights because as we're on that bot lane it's going to be a little bit of a slow start i'd say for him but i mean as things kick up as once they get into these team fights we do have a lot of poke comp but so long as ezreal can get shut out that's going to be a huge influence across the field to go ahead and get i'd say half that damage if i'm going to be betting on anything right off the gate out of the wind so they can go ahead and have themselves a little bit more potential when they're really trying to go ahead and close in on things and vein in itself going up against that ergot and especially against that olaf as well those two are going to be major targets. And so long as we can get insurance, making sure to ensure those right targets are really, mm -hmm. you know, pointed out, that's going to be enough for them to play off of. Yeah, it's funny. That name is really, uh, really starting to kind of, it's very apt in how Vayne is going to be this kind of late game insurance that things can go well for insurance as the game goes on. And you can play these fights front to back like Blue Gold certainly want to. They, these tanks are going to get shredded with that Silver Bolt passive and all that true damage it's going to be doing. The only thing to worry about really is Matthew 16 on the Olaf. He is the big problem here. You're not going to be able to condemn him when he is coming in with the Ragnarok. So if he has the slightest lead, it's going to be pretty easy for Olaf to just immediately immediately run it straight into the back line, trade his life for Bane. And realistically, with how much DPS you lose, it is worth it because you still have a front line to protect the likes of your Ezreal and your Corki. Yeah, and I think when we're discussing these teams and how they're really going to match up, I think a good thing to look at for what these teams really don't like and kind of the uh, the matchups that they're really weak against, we're going to have to look at those bans for that because when we, you really look at Columbia College's bands they have a lot of aoe oriented kind of crowd control they have the galley with the taunt they have the seraphine with the ultimate they had the oriana with those pulls there's so much they do not like getting grouped up they do not want to play together they really want to know how to really choose their targets and really find a way to capitalize on that find a way to go ahead and knock them out of the field and give themselves an edge in these team fights and i think that alone in itself when they're facing the comp that blue gold brings to the table they're not really putting them in those scenarios where they have to be grouped up i think they're really just kind of playing into that but vein in itself once again going back to that point really brings her to the field to show that go ahead isolate yourself for me find yourself a couple inches across mm -hmm. from your teammate isolate yourself find yourself all by and your lone sub so i can go ahead and pick you off find another man and really just steamroll that effect and i think that alone in itself really shows that blue gold doesn't like dueling because they don't want to be on those one-on-one -on -one matchups so long as it's not just insurance by himself they want to make sure to have a couple of the people there to back him up and that honestly fits with what we spoke about from Gold Blue, just talking to one of the team reps and how they like to play the game. They do like to draft in ways that are mostly comfortable for them. The champs that they know well and true and getting these kinds of drafts that do not counter are not counterintuitive to each other here. You can tell you have a lot of engage and you have this ability to fight front to back. So I think this is a draft they can definitely be happy with going into this game, especially with the comfort champs we're starting to see come out from them here. So I think that for Blue Gold, at least starting from the draft, I think they're starting themselves off on the right foot here. And I think that's honestly pretty good for them here. They interesting thing about this team too is that yeah disco bot who's playing the cled is the new player on the team the rest of the core roster has been playing together for the last two years and this whole season is just going to be mostly about integrating disco bot both excuse me and just trying to get him to adapt to the team's style so that they can all improve and play well yeah, I'm definitely with you there. And I feel like when we're mentioning that top lane, being a newer player to the roster, that's really concerning. Looking at the jungle matchup we have going on, Zen Zhao and Olaf. The, the gank potential out of Olaf is going to be a heck of a lot more than we see out of the likes of Zen Zhao. Because you have to play a little bit smarter. You have to know your angles. You have to know really when to capitalize on the right moments to find yourself to follow through and really get the picks that you want to create an impact. And Olaf, you really don't have to worry as much, honestly. Go ahead and get those axes out. Play like a madman that he is. Play like a Viking. <laughs> yeah. Get up in their face. And honestly, you will find yourself winning some fights here and there because of it. Yeah, and I, the thing I like that's really interesting what some people do with Olaf is instead of building the Gore Drinker for the team fight sustain, some people will go, especially if ahead, for that Divine Sunderer. And what that offers you is a lot of burst damage and that ability to yep. just blow up one squishy you can get on top of here. And considering what we're kind of expecting from the draft, wouldn't be a bad option for Matthew 16 to go for here, potentially. But we'll see what he actually wants to build here. Again, his main goal in these fights, in, or rather, his main goal in this early game is going to be trying to use some of the priority he has here in mid and most likely top to be able to try and go for these aggressive plays for the Scuttle Crab, these invades as well, so we can get to this point that we're talking about. Yeah, I'm with you. And especially as we mentioned the setups here for the start, Olaf already going ahead and finding Matthew, finding himself on that red buff to really mirror the opposite side of the field. 
I think it's a better play because Olaf doesn't really have too much of a concern when it comes down to mana. He's going to have himself a really good time farming here in the early stages of the game. That he doesn't have too much of a concern and going ahead and finding those Krugs is going to give you the even out when it comes around to those, you know, like the Krugs. So go ahead and get more gold on the field. Find yourself a little bit more because honestly, when you're on that wall side, when you're on that blue side, you find yourself not finding it too much to play off of. But when we're speaking of playing, we already see these top laners going in to some extent, trying to find a little bit of blood, trying to shed some play a little bit of death by a thousand cuts but we got you know nine thousand nine hundred ninety more to go <laughs> that's right there's a lot of trading that's going to be going on here you can see because of the leash that insurance and war hawk had to go for here it means that they do kind of lose control during the early parts of the lane Komsky and shogo fanboy will get level two first and that's already priority which is perfect for matthew he's pathing towards the bottom side if he wants to make a play bot or just go for that scuttle crapper and invade he's gonna have this priority now in this next minute or so yeah i'm definitely with you there and as we see matthew 16 already kind of rotating himself to the bot lane that's gonna open not too much potential for him because Having that influence there on the bot lane, it has its trade-offs. You obviously have a lot of influence, and we need Leone to go ahead and grab that, you know, the support item, get as much gold as possible, but you don't want to have too much influence because these early ganks, especially the likes of Olaf, he's really, really strong here. So when you have too much presence on lane, you're not allowing your jungler to take too much of an advantageous point right. and really run off of. So that in itself, as we see Columbia Navy getting a lot, a lot of advantageous, a lot of pressure here on each and every lane, Looks like top may be the only option, and he's on the opposite side of the field for it. And speaking of options, Spanky's looking for an option to make a play mid because he did opt for the three camp into potentially a gank, but that's two opportunities he wasn't able to find for himself here. So he's just going to have to go for the scuttle crab. We have the scuttle trade, and because he showed... He knows, uh, Matthew knows that he is down on camps. He knows he went for the three buff, which means he's going to pay for showing by losing his Raptors. Matthew's already getting a pretty serious farm lead. And because of the bounce back in this bottom wave, he actually has a potential gank opportunity, but he'd rather go for the reset, spend the gold he has and just get himself back on the map. I really like that. Go ahead and find yourself as much of an advantage as possible. Capitalize on this early game stages where you really have that lead to work with when you haven't had to work for anything just yet. And invading itself is going to set you large apart from your composition. And that itself, honestly, looking at these lanes and how they're going, we're not seeing too much difference just across the board. It's just a little bit more pressure here or there. Not too much of a differential overall. We do see red up by 100 gold, but I don't feel like that's enough to really set anything just yet because everything's been a little bit dry here. But, I mean, honestly, I think we're just really smelling the rain right now because I can feel a storm's going to be coming up here fairly soon more than likely but i agree with you when i see olaf or zin Zhao, i'm looking for plays like all across the map nick you know what yep. i'm saying so that's why i am as, i'm just as surprised as you are that we aren't really seeing anything come through but i'm sure like you said it's gonna come through any minute now especially with spanky still on this bottom side of the map but honestly he may be looking to recall because he's only just clear, finishing his full clear now whereas matthew is reset with the pickaxe and is already on the map oh. here he could look for a play top if he wanted to oh. actually maybe he doesn't need help he doesn't need it he doesn't need it because we see miss doing a great job here but he need a better oh, job no oh my goodness no you can't let that happen to you disco boat finding himself to go ahead and get his raptor back right there in the nick of time to go ahead and get that large boost to health get himself back into that fight that's the one thing about cled you really can't run off of too much with that shotgun coming into effect finding yourself a lot of courage it gives you self so much health to work with, gets you right back in the battle on a huge health boost. But speaking of boost, we need Ezreal here in the bot lane. Complexity, he needs a little bit more to work with because honestly, Ezreal, when you're up against that tower, you do not have enough initiative to really clear things out. Well, luckily, he is going to be able to clear this wave and go for the recall here. And it's going to be his first. You got to imagine we're going to see something like the Sheen, like the Tear come out. Actually, he's holding off on that recall. It seems like he's been calling oh. for help. And also, geez. Health's going to be coming in the mid lane, it looks like. But in the meantime, we're going to see Columbia finding themselves a dragon, possibly. So long as we don't see too much contention there. And with Zin Zhao being there in the top jungle, there's going to be no competition at all. We're going to see Columbia Navy grabbing the Ocean Dragon. A little bit more health here to work with. A little bit more region to play off of. But looking at the top lane with Arctic, that didn't help him too much. He's going to be in combat enough to where he never really gets to capitalize or run with that too much. Because he needs those health resets himself like Clegg gets. But... It looks like right now, too many ropes missing out. A little bit more advantageous side towards the side of Columbia Navy, but with two kills on the board for blue gold, they're going to have themselves a little bit more gold to work with. 
Yeah, and, and I kind of want to just talk about that play made mid too. That's a big roam coming out from Warhawk. We were kind of setting up the expectations on how with the Ezreal pick on Komsky, show the fanboy would be the one moving across the map because you can leave Ezreal alone, safely farm both in and around his turret, but he's getting out roamed currently by Warhawk and you can see the effect it has. Getting a kill on the Cassiopeia who is already weak early on, just allowing her to accelerate is really beneficial here for Blue Gold A. And speaking of beneficial, oh. Matthew is in the area. Yeah, Matthew being in the area, but not having enough damage to really dish out a fight because Kled does not want that 2v1, especially in these early nope. stages of the game. So that in itself can be a good play there from Disco, but there's just going to be a little bit more because we don't see too much of a bloodshed just yet for the likes of Columbia Navy. They got to get some more picks on the board. They got to find a little bit more blood just everywhere. But with the rotations coming out, they really want to make out this trade on the top lane, but it's just not going to be enough when you see Disco play so precautiously here, saying, all right, I know they want to look at me. They know they want to shut down that Kled because he's going to be a massive presence when it comes down to these team fights. But honestly, they're not going to find the time of day just yet. And that's a pretty, that's a really big problem because the thing is, when you show like that, you give information away to the enemy team. What happens off screen while Matthew shows up top lane? Bot takes a huge trade because Shogo Fanboy is not there either. And you can yep. see Komsky no longer has a splash available. There is the dive attempt coming through if we could switch down just to see what's going on bottom side. And because Spanky is in the area, he can actually go for counter jungling if he wants to. Yeah, that's definitely something he can really work with, especially being in that bot lane with the blue buff coming up here in eight seconds. But with not enough vision across the board, not enough real just light shed for the side of blue gold that can't capitalize on that just yet. So honestly, moving back to your jungle is going to be a move, especially around those Krugs, trying to find as much gold as possible as you can really get out of that. A buff is great at the end of the day, but honestly, when you want to go ahead and get in your comfort zone, mm -hmm. that's something you really can't beat. So Looking at how everything's trading through, we're actually going to see Matthew there in the top jungle getting in a fight of its own uh -oh. without Arctic there. So he's not going to be spelled too much deficit here. He's not going to have too much of a trade going on just yet as he doesn't lose all that much health either. So he can definitely finesse something here. But Zen's how here in the bottom, we see Spanky trying to finesse uh -oh. something. But honestly, he may be able to manage it because we do see Kapeski falling himself down as well. That's going to be an ADC out of the game. The first death on the bot lane. It's going to be a massive one at that, especially when you had that vein trying to find that insurance, as we'll probably make that joke, I'd say at least 30 times <laughs> the stream itself. But yeah. uh, it, it's enough to work with overall. Getting that AC out of the game, that's a massive trade to really play with on the bot lane because that's the, your biggest thing you really want to knock out. Right, and because now they, they do, because they get this kill, they can go for this invade and try and steal the blue buff. I think the only thing is the timing <laughs> was a little bit awkward. Who actually yep. got that? That was uh, definitely to... Olaf. He definitely spotted yeah. that. Yeah. See, the thing is, too, they knew Olaf was invading because he assumed the counter invade was coming through. And it's, it's these plays like that, while Spanky, even though his team is doing well, is falling behind in farm right now. You can see it 47 to 72 creeps, and it is only starting to grow. Spanky clearly playing more for his laners and trying to set them up for success. And so far, if you look, that's three kills for Blue Gold side, and it has been serving them very well here. And luckily, he's not too far behind in XP either. So hopefully, it's panning out. Yeah, you really got to know where to really cut your losses, essentially. So overall, what they're doing on the side of Blue Gold is they're playing the game a lot more extensively. They're doing a much better job of finding what trades to really make. And up here in the top, Disco not making the best one himself, using the ultimate, getting under that tower, and... I wouldn't say wasting it, but just really not putting it in the most optimal position. So that in itself is going to be something to play off of, as we do see a missed opportunity for a little bit of combat there. But we see Warhawk trying to make some kind of engage here, and oh, it may no. work, as we do see Kapeski falling for the second time now. That's going to be massive for the bot lane to really just, I'd say, steamroll now if they really do decide to do so. They can have a little bit more roam potential now. Warhawk has a little bit more breathing room to really get across the rest of the map and help out his team, mm -hmm. especially when you've shut down that Ezreal twice. Yeah, unfortunately, when you show up 2v1 against the Nautilus and a Vayne, that will be your final hour as he is sent back to spawn here. Now we have Disco Boat going for more aggressive trades, but here comes another role oh. play. Yeah, everywhere. It does not look like Columbia Navy is finding themselves in the best shoes to be standing in right now. So lots of low health players. A lot of trades coming through that they are just not favored in. And Warhawk may be on the same scenario, but not exactly found there just yet. Instead, we're going to see the top lane. A lot of influence here. Zinzal coming through for the trade, trying to help out his club. Oh. But with the execution coming out from Myths, he's going to find himself one. The trade's not going to come out to grab the second off the tower, but it's going to be enough for him to work with as he shuts him down as well.
And I mean, honestly, a one for one is still something you take in this scenario. Arctic Myths was dead on my screen. So I think I like that play a lot from him here. Whoa, that was a, an interesting interaction. But I mean, barring that uh, misstep from Warhawk, I think he's been playing really well this game, finding all these roaming angles. He's been able to help both bot and mid so very much. And I think with him walking down, he might be able to do it once more. Nothing oh. with you there, and all the crowd control coming out, and all the ultimates from Pesky finding himself a shot. He's going to get himself back in the game to some extent, but he's now going to be sitting at 1-2, so it's not a massive lead to really scoff about or to really brag about just yet. With no gold belts passed here, but we are going to have enough really to work off of to really play into mm -hmm. and give ourselves a little bit more of an engage here on the bot lane as we see Kled trying to come down, capitalize on that, give his team a little bit more of an edge as he's already found two pleadings on the top, so he's bought himself a little bit of time to warrant. Yeah, that shove really helps as well. And they, I don't think Columbia Navy are really expecting it at the moment. I don't see any missing things coming through, but I think he just walked on some vision. It is nice that Columbia Navy are still able to make these plays, despite the fact that they are kind of falling behind in terms of proactivity. But we are going to need to see a little more from them here. Look, Matthew already is very close to his first Mythic. The power is really oh. starting to come through with this Olaf. So I, I want to see more ganks come through. I want to see these plays set up. Uh, vision preemptively cleared by Shogo Fanboy so that they can go for maybe a lane gank, maybe a wraparound on the bot lane's tribe or something. Yeah, I'm definitely with you there. And across the board, when we're looking at the entire rift right now, we see Blue Gold doing a much better job when it comes to these trades, a much better job when it comes to these fights. And they found themselves a gold advantage. But right now, Columbia Navy, they found themselves two Drakes. So I want to say overall, they're playing the long game here. But when you're losing these trades, when you're not winning these fights, that in itself could be enough of a deficit to really go ahead and set yourself back to where do the trade-offs really matter that much at the end of the day? If you can't win these team fights, if you can't win these trades generally, what does that say about your whole team composition for these team fights, especially Leona? Trying to go in here uh -oh. by himself, getting caught uh -oh. out with the rest of the team coming to the ranks, finding themselves a pick onto it. As we see Fanboy, the first one to fall, we see some kind of a follow through coming in the top lane. But will it be enough to really grab themselves another pick? Because we see Method trying to get there on the outside. He will isolate himself to be the next one to fall, possibly, but actually managing it for a little bit longer here. Able to survive and able to possibly get out. No, we're going to see Method fall there as well with a lot more trades, a lot more presence here across the entire map. And we see a little bit more of a deuce out here in the bot lane with Ezreal trying to come back from this. Yeah, trying is the key word, but oh, speaking of... Nope. Oh, Never nah. Mind. Unless? We are blowing a lot of flashes here, Mick. I can't tell. We are. Whether or not this kill is actually going to come through, but it's looking like Arctic Mist will live to recall another day, not get sent to the gray screen. But overall, uh, actually, I think we got some trouble here. I'm definitely with you there. There's going to be enough kills here to really run through insurance, finding his first death of the game as well, or second, excuse me, being more in the later stages where it's a little bit more impactful when you need him in these team fights, especially up against the likes of a Leona here on the field, which is still going to be live with Fanboy coming back up here. So having Kled on that bottom lane, it's going to be enough, especially with Miss here on the top, wow. trying to fight the Cassiopeia, but not going to be enough because Glim's going to be the one to come out there on top. Honestly, lots of trades here come from the likes of Blue Gold. They're coming out re here really positively, even if Disco Boat finds himself to die. Because, I mean, honestly, you're looking for towers. We haven't seen a first one to fall just yet, but we're seeing a lot of damage dealt, especially on that top lane. Look at the initiative from that. That could be the first one to fall possibly here right now. Yeah, and you're going to see the recall coming out from... Glem, and I think we got to talk about just how well he's been playing this game as well. Three yep. and zero at the moment here. Not afraid to make some of these cheese bush plays for the 1v1. And Arctic Mist especially knows that all too well. Already, Cassiopeia is going to be a problem later on for Columbia Navy side. The fact that he's doing well now is already a kind of bodes not so good for the future. But right now, let's talk about JS Method's future. Yep. This is not looking so bright. Yeah, I'm definitely with you there, man. There's going to be a little bit more here. There's going to be a little bit more plays made. There's going to be a little bit more gold to come out for the side of them. But Columbia Navy, they just seem to be slacking in an entirety. I mean, they're down 3K gold now. You are hoping these trades of the Drakes are going to come out. They have two on the field. And they got to go ahead and start eyeing this third with it coming up fairly soon. But, I mean, that's a concern in itself because you got 40 seconds to look for some kind of lead to play off of. Go ahead and get a player out of the game. And with Method already falling, you are not looking too hot to capitalize onto a third. And with this tower falling towards the top, we see Miss trying to find himself a pick, being right under the tower, find some retaliation. But when you need him there for that fight, that's going to be a huge struggle for them to really dish out. 
and this is the proactivity I'm talking about here on Blue Gold side. Like, not afraid to just make these flash plays, utilize the hex flash we're seeing from Warhawk. And because of all that pressure, all the numbers they send to this bottom side of the map, you can see it. How important this next dragon is for them is they're going to get themselves the sole point. And they're, oh. look at that. Method blows the package right away. Can't even use it aggressively. Yeah, that's going to be absolutely massive because you want to go ahead and use that, as you said, aggressively. You want to use it offensively. You want to get some presence onto the field. You want to find some impact in a team fight. But will it be enough to go ahead and grab this dragon when you only have a three players uh, real contention on this site? When you have Zenzel popping that ultimate, trying to find a little bit more presence here, trying to find the edge in the team fight with Matthew 16 showing up. But Method will be the first one to drop out as we do see Matthew falling right next to him, being the next one to follow suit. We're going to see Ezreal and Leona trying to make a little bit of a contention here. Some kind of answer, some kind of presence here to really show up and say, all right, we can still manage something. But with the smite on the field, with the first dragon going to the side of blue gold and a heck of a lot of trades and kills for them to play off of, I think they are looking really good now. Yeah, and it's unfortunate, Columbia Navy, just no answers, no trades to be found here. You can see Arctic Mets, he's trying to take the mid-tier one turret, but not even that can be done. He's getting walked basically back to under his tower to collect this top wave. And here's another play coming, bot lane, Mick. They're just going to go down. Yep, that's what it's looking like, man. Fanboy's not going to stay alive for too long. You do have the Nautilus try to go ahead and grab that hook, but it's not going to matter too much because this kill is still going to come out. Kompski not going to stay alive for too long. This bot lane looking like it could be over so long as they find this initiative on the tower, and especially with the cannons out, that is probably going to be enough for them to work off of to grab that first, grab the rotations to mid, and start really playing a ram in a sense, getting a little bit more team fights. But speaking of those, we do have more presence in the top. We have a TP to come through with the follow-up with how to old cast, old oh. glim, right back oh, no. where he started. An MVP, I'd say, for the side of blue gold if they find themselves here. Sleeper stimulant at that. Because this tower, I mean, with everything going on right now, you can walk over there and spit on it and it would find a way to fall. <laughs> yeah, that's right. A nice, just a gust of wind would be able to knock down that top tier one. And unfortunately, Disco Boat is going to come in like a hurricane to just knock it over because now you can see how strong this Kled is really starting to become. Yep. Hasn't gotten that first item just yet, but I mean, the... Uh, because he had to slightly veer off from his itemization for the Bramble Vest, he still has a lot of tank stats, and you go to imagine he's ready to pick up that Mythic for himself here. And speaking of item spikes, let's take, let's look at Columbia Navy side. I yeah. don't think they're quite dead in the water just yet. This is a comp where especially a lot of their carries, we're looking for two items to peak. Corky or Ezreal, once we get to the second item it's actually the Murmana for both of them i think this is where the, the team fight power really comes from especially from the poke here so once we get to that point we can see columbia navy potentially try to make some kind of play here picking up another dragon would be great for them because one it's a mountain soul which i think they desperately could make a lot of use of yep and actually let's hold that thought i'm definitely with you there man there's going to be a little bit more here across the board for both sides and to really find themselves an edge and it, we haven't seen the curve come just yet but we do see a little bit of advantage from the side of blue gold it's not enough to really scoff at or brag about just yet because anything's possible as we saw during those last matchups but with this team fight coming through in the middle with Kled absolutely just rolling in finding Kompeski in a super quick fashion quick and efficient is the name of the game that's gonna be enough for them to work off of and the hex flash is not gonna be enough there from Warhawk I was really hoping he could finesse something there but he's gonna go <laughs> ahead and fall a little bit short but it will still be enough for them to roll with to go ahead and get an ADC off the board. A little bit of presence going in, a little bit of an invade from the side of old uh, Zen Zhao there. We see old Spanky trying to find himself something, but we also see just really a lot more fights because Matthew's going to go ahead and find himself in an ultimate. He's not going to find a kill to really follow through with it. And on top of that, Spanky's going to fall as well and possibly meant to follow through. That's four members of Columbia down in the dumps, and we see a tower to follow through with it as insult to injury. Okay, things are really starting to fall apart now for Columbia Navy. The gold lead has increased for blue gold to 8,000. At this point, Warhawk, he's just full sending it in whatever opportunity he can find for himself. Because why not? Your, your jungler, or sorry, your mid laner, your AD carry, both at two items, incredibly strong and scaled up at the moment here. You can do anything you please. Columbia Navy are not in a moment where they can be making their own decisions. They have to hug whatever turrets they have left outside of their base. And depending on who we're looking at, they're not allowed to even do that. Ezreal, illegal. Corky, illegal. 
Yeah, I'm definitely with you, man. There's got to be a little bit more here. And as we were mentioned earlier, we said that they were kind of hurting a little bit. Columbia Navy was. But honestly, we were looking for the insult to injury. And honestly, Blue Gold, they didn't insult. They just straight cursed these guys out. It was just an absolute steamroll that they had there towards that bot lane. A huge advantage they gave themselves to get to that Tier 3 tower. And we see a lot of presence across the field from every single player essentially feeling really comfortable. Because we even see Assurance there in the mid lane saying, I can solo this. I can push it whatever lane I want to because I know I have that backup to follow through when need be. And with this dragon coming up in 30 seconds, I'm sure they're going to be eyeing that to say, all right, we've done everything else. We found a gold lead. We found a tower lead. Let's find this dragon lead because that's the only thing they're beating us in right now. Right. And because they can still play for a soul win condition here, but I mean, Method will have to be alive for that to be an opportunity for them here. We're looking yep. at... 10 seconds till the Drake comes through. I think without your mid laner, you just got to let this one go as well. And that's another dragon you have to give up here. You can't let Blue Gold stack up these mounts and Drakes because the individual resistances alone will make them more unkillable <laughs> yeah. than they already are. I'm definitely with you. I mean, having two tanks with those double shields, and especially with Kled, that would be three health bars for the man. That's that's illegal in itself. Oh, you were talking man. about illegal earlier. That's a war crime, in my opinion. That just shouldn't be allowed in the game. But it's going to be enough. They're going to find themselves that second dragon, and that's going to be the second mountain drake. So not only, even not even having that soul, they already have a lot more resistances coming through mm -hmm. for them to really play off of just of these strikes alone and how yep. the dice are rolling into their favor. Yeah, it's 6% for each dragon alone. And can I just say, I respect that Columbia dis recognized, like, we're not getting that dragon. Let's make a play on a disco yep. bow, but he TPs out of it, which is just unfortunate. Yeah, Disco Boat's going to find himself to fly out a lot of conflicts that he really doesn't want to be stuck into. But I don't it's know true. if that's the story for the rest of these guys towards the middle because we have a lot of pressure coming up here towards that middle tower. We have a team fight coming through. And with, oh, Glim coming out as well. He's going to dish out a lot of damage. He's going to find himself a pick on a Matthew. And the next one to fall is going to be Myth. You can't have your tank die that quickly. So that itself with the Warhawk finding himself a shot, finding a hook over towards that ADC. They're wow. finally going to pick off They're the pesky there. That's what I'm saying, man. When you have a Kled and a Nautilus here on the field, he, he's sitting under tower. He does not care. That's what it really comes down to, and especially with the <laughs> runes out, all the damage to dish through and a cannon wave at that, that's going to be a second tier two for them on the likes of the mid lane for them to follow through and possibly grab that tier three if they're feeling cocky enough. I mean, look at these timers, Mick. It's going to be an inhibitor take. You've got to imagine here. And they're yep. free to reset, walk to the Baron if they really want to, because Vayne Cassiopeia, that is some disturbing amounts of DPS they have at their disposal, especially to take down these neutral monsters. And the pigs, Mick, they're coming through. They're using the charge <laughs> to get themselves all the way to the Baron as quickly as they can. So once they demolish this, take a reset, they are just basically going to solidify what's going to be their end game here. Here. we have columbia they're gonna try to go for the steal oh, but i don't man. think they have time oh yeah you just can't find enough there uh, that was some kind of attempt of a steal there but not enough when you have four players there even if the pick does come through there's gonna be some trades you're not gonna find a full effect out of it but matthew oh. 16 able to find effect of himself getting one but assurance is gonna find that trade because a lot of members are down in the dumps but spanky is not one of them he's gonna have enough real help to trade out you're going to see Disco Boat and Old Myth out here. The battle of two tanks there in the top, but it's not going to be enough. We're going to see three players still alive with that Baron buff. Possibly enough, really. Wait on these countdown timers to come through, and I feel like we have an end of the game on our hands here. I think so as well. All it's going to take is one good fight, or honestly, even three bad fights and one good fight for Blue Gold A. Baron buff or not, you already have supers pushing through the mid lane you realistically you're you could try and just shove out every lane and threaten multiple inhibs but with how strong they are and how much of a lead they have run it down mid man any ram style and you just you can win the game right off that yeah i'm definitely with you You just got to find a lot more team fights you got to pressure those team fights especially with the composition they got going on right now the amount of strength they have of just brute force on the field i mean we saw Columbia Navy, we mentioned it during the draft, they were a very poke-oriented kind of composition, but they just didn't find enough of that in the early game to really capitalize on, and that really fell short for them. It did not give them a lot to play with over the course of the game, and that in itself is going to be really hindering to them right now because when they're shoved up against their tower, when their back is against a hard place and a heavy object, it's just not going to do too much because projectiles can only go so far, and at that, the hopes of the team is the same exact manner. Yeah, and I think at this point, Columbia Navy might be considering how they're going to be approaching things in game two. 
No, it's not quite over until the fat lady sings. Mick, she's taking a big, deep breath at the moment here, I gotta say. <laughs> um, I definitely feel that. I feel a gust of air coming her way, and honestly, yep. I'm, I'm, I'm preparing to go ahead and hold on to my chair as it comes the opposite. But, I mean, that itself, with a lot of kind of fights going on down here, a little bit of damage being dished out to that Tier 3 tower in the bot lane, you want to go ahead and find that, because that's where a lot of this initiative and targeting is going with that Baron buff. The cannon just absolutely sniping it out, and we see Spanky trying to create a little bit of a distraction in the mid lane, saying, hold up, hold up, don't worry about them, guys. We got a little bit of more damage coming towards the actual <laughs> Nexus, so come hit me a little bit. Come try and uh, spank old Spanky, but honestly, with how much he's been really dancing around the opposition, I don't know if that's going to be too much because we still see so many teammates down here in the bot lane. We've seen Ezreal Ultimate coming out from Kompeski, but it's not going to be enough. The inhib's going to be the next to fall, and honestly, with these picks coming through, these kills that are being dished out right now, it looks like this could be it, especially if they win at least two members off the likes of Columbia. Yeah, they're, they're going to go for the recent after getting all this extra gold, especially because Glem is going to take that Tier 2 turret pretty much unobstructed. And yep. that's another nice injection of gold into... I don't know. Uh, Cass, Cass is a Gorgon. She doesn't really have pockets, right? So I, I don't know where she put them, but a lot of gold. Just yep. a lot of gold is basically the point here. And at this point, you just want to play for the next dragon, see if Columbia Navy want to actually move in for a fight. It's not necessarily Soul, so I got to believe they're just going to let this one go and not actually contest it. They are just battening down the hatches, Nick, and holding on for as long oh. as they possibly can at this moment here. Easy dragon take. Baron's not on the table, but again, not a lot of deep vision outside of their base here. So blue, gold, A, they could be waiting in any bush. Who knows where they are if you're Columbia Navy? Yeah, I mean, we mentioned earlier, I mean, these guys were looking a little bit chunky with all this health and all, but now they are looking chalky. Wow. Like, especially with that third mountain drake now, you see all these team fights coming out, but you see really no health to follow through with it. It's like they're not even really being touched, but with the execution coming out for Myth, an actual pick coming through for the likes of Columbia Navy to come out on top, this could be enough for them to survive a little bit more breath into their matchup, but they just got to find something to capitalize on it with. And with Matthew 16 being isolated on the outside, you have insurance over there to find himself a little bit. Gore Drinker, not enough to survive long enough, but it will be enough there, a little bit more towards the middle lane, enough players to stay alive to defend those objectives. Honestly, blue gold not coming out too negative there, especially when they're ahead by 11K gold. <laughs> Honestly, right. they are not concerned at all right now. No, not even a little. I think they're definitely having a little bit of fun with this one. Glem still has teleport if he's trying to make a play in the mid lane, but he is just looking to farm it out at the moment here. And realistically, even though mid inhib is spawned, yeah, you can just look for this play. Yeah, I'm definitely with you there. Going ahead and grabbing these picks, especially so close to the inside of the base and the fountain. It's going to be a lot to work off of, but with the TP coming out and Warhawk falling, that could be something for them, the likes of Columbia Navy, to really work on because right there if you go ahead and get glim out of the game he's what? been a massive player so far so to go ahead and get that shut down especially in the hands of myth that's going to be a lot of more help to work off of especially with this recall coming through saying all right boys this is a little bit more help it, we can survive for a couple more seconds you, we just got to make the most of them yeah that, that's a really large shutdown to pick up i mean the, until that moment glim was 11 and 1 you can see how aggressive they are on the side of blue gold to try and make these ending plays. But at this point, your only saving grace for this next Baron is that there are still supers that Columbia have to worry about here. So even though they are going to try and essentially risk it all for this Baron as it's their main ticket back in the game, they could still potentially lose a lot, even though Glem isn't actually here yet. But he does have teleport, mind you. Yeah, look at the stationing from Blue Gold right here. They're just trying to split out. They're trying to go ahead and set up for this next Baron. They want to enforce another team fight here, and especially with it popping up right now, you have Super Minions on the bot lane. So that's going to be one player that really has to make the sacrifice to go ahead and stick back, make it a 4v5 there, and you just have to essentially wait and say, all right, can we steal this by any chance? But honestly, with the Hex Flash coming out, that could be something to play off of. That's going to be enough, and the Ezreal Ultimate, I don't think it's going to steal anything. It's really just going to help them out, Ooh. as Blue Gold <laughs> does find themselves at Baron Nasher. Enough, with all five players still standing, that's going to be a huge influence across the board. It's going to be a lot of initiative coming through for the likes of them, and I think it could be enough to shut down the game unless this team fight does not go into their favor, and they find themselves getting poked out a little bit too much, like we see Warhawk right here. Yeah, and these item spikes we were talking about did come through for Columbia Navy. You see three items on Konsky, so he's doing a lot of damage with these Mystic Shots. But realistically, it's not going to be enough to take, let, prevent the take 
take the taking, excuse me, of this inhibitor that's coming through right now. The next wave is coming through. Cannon, two cannons actually are barreled up and outside of everyone's range. We're looking at the end game here, Mick. Yeah, I'm definitely with you. I mean, I've seen in game plenty of times, and honestly, I don't see any Thanos, but I do see an Iron Man possibly here to snap the fingers and go ahead and close this out. And that in itself could be Glimp. I just want to go ahead and touch on once again of how much of an influence he's been. Go ahead and look at the 11-2 lineup for the man. Obviously getting picked off here and there. Go ahead and go out to the outside. Say, all right, let's get a little bit more initiative. Utilize this Kled ultimate. Find a little bit more speed to get that initiative. Wow. And as he's going to go ahead and find himself one, there's going to be a second one to follow suit as Cisco Boat finds Method. We see them also picking off Matthew 16. They're towards the middle of the map, and they are under both of these towers really just saying, Go ahead, keep landing on us. We have Baron. We have these runes to come out. Go ahead and find a couple shots. And with the TP to come through, I'm going to say the fat lady is singing. I can hear in the distance, man. <laughs> That's right. That is a beautiful song coming out as Blue Gold. Took them a little time, but they will handedly take game one away here from Columbia Navy. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you, dude. There just seemed to be a little bit much there. There was a little bit too much relying on that early game for the likes of Columbia for them to really capitalize on. We saw him being had a slow start there, and honestly, things just kind of slowed down a little bit more so for him. There's a couple picks here and there for them to play off of, but in the end, when you're facing blue gold, they really just had themselves established right off the start. You could tell they were a lot more confident about their plays, and even with the Zen Zhao, we saw a lot of early influence from Olaf, but not enough picks or presence in those lanes to really play off of. Yeah, agreed. And it definitely there is there is the confidence that's a bit missing right now for yeah. Columbia Navy and the lack of proactivity we talked about in the early game. But I think it's okay. Like, the season has just started here at yeah. NECC. And truthfully, this squad here for Columbia Navy have actually only just come together a couple of weeks ago. Before this day, or before that day, excuse me, they were just a bunch of solo queue players. So they definitely have some ways to go but yeah. the, i think they've still given us a pretty decent showing all things considered it's only up from here yeah i'm definitely with you there and i mean especially across that call initiation phase when they were doing those group stages finding where they were placed just for them to be put into challengers alone is enough for them to really brag about because now they can go ahead and get that experience and hopefully they get themselves a quick little learning curve to come through so they can really adapt to the field because that in itself not only just shows how they are as a team, but they can translate that into an in-game environment where they can really say no matter what the composition they really draft or ban, they're going to feel a heck of a lot more comfortable with it. Agreed. So I think realistically that a, better, uh, a different draft may be the approach here for Columbia. We'll have to see what they actually opt to go for. The spicy picks were talked about on the, from their camp, so yep. there's definitely an opportunity for that to show itself as well. Who knows what we might be able to see from them going into game two, but of course, the series is definitely not over yet. They do have a chance to get themselves back into this one. Yeah, I'm definitely with you. So with that, I feel like Honestly, after that long, elaborated game from him where it just felt like things were preordained to some extent, but they drew it out as much as possible. I'm sure those players need a little bit of break for themselves so they can go ahead and regroup, figure out what went right, what went wrong, so they can go ahead and work on that, find and show that adaptability, bring a highlight to it here in this intermission we got coming up. So we'll catch y'all here in a little bit for game two.
Welcome back, everybody. We're here for game two of the series between Columbia Navy and Blue Gold Esports. Join it with you here tonight for not this game. There's only this game, sadly enough. We got another one after this, so y'all stay up. Y'all better stay up. I know it's getting late, but y'all need to have this energy in here tonight because we got a banger matchup here with myself, Mick, and over here to the left is going to be beat down bad. I got the camera right that time. Yeah, you did, dude. You're getting, you're getting it. You're getting it. You're learning, Mick. That's what we like to see. And we're really, I'm really amped up. I'm surprised. I would be really surprised if people couldn't keep the energy up with someone like you on the mic, Mick. You got this energy that's just so infectious. Aww. And it makes me want to, dude, I got like, it makes me want to go work out right now. Dude, Literally behind it. the camera is all like my gym equipment. I'm about to like in the middle of this cast start doing some pull-ups, man. You're getting me hyped up. Word. I'm here for it. Honestly, I know it's great for you to have all that energy, but honestly, we need the teams to have that energy right, right now because Columbia Navy just got shut down in that first game after a somewhat fair performance there. They sat there and were a little bit lackluster here for a little while. They kind of delayed the inevitable. But honestly, I want to see them come back from the ashes. I want to see them go ahead and find themselves in a tie series because Blue Gold Esports now, they are going to be up 1-0 and they want to go ahead and close out this series and honestly with these picks coming through with the first two we still them follow them suit with the Kled. it worked well enough for them and they're going to just go ahead and say let's rock it again Look, great a great performance out from disco boat it who really just recently joined this core roster here on the side of blue gold day had a great performance on the champion and i'm really surprised he got let through in the draft Kled, he's one of those champs where he is um Pretty impressive if you don't know how to deal with it, especially in the hands of an expert, which Disco Boat is clearly shown to be. So the fact that they let it through means they don't believe that it was a problem. A lot of the same first wave bands coming through on the side of Columbia Navy. But if we're talking about different drafts, Blue Gold A's draft is looking very different here. Diana, most likely jungle, Oriana mid, already a lot of AP in this composition. Yeah, and you'd love to see her, right? Oh, Diane in the jungle. I got to say, I love that woman. I love the way she plays out. I play her a lot personally on my free time, and I'm really excited to see what she can bring here in the Rift when it comes to a, a collegiate setting, when you're really looking at these teams just dishing it out and really knowing what they're going to bring to each other. And honestly, everything else is going to look fairly the same here. Disco Boat on the Kled, as you said, Insurance on the Vein, and Komsky running the Ezreal again. That's a real question bringer for me to know exactly mm -hmm. i mean after that last matchup things weren't exactly looking too good for him and for them to say you know what it worked well enough let's bring it back that raises a couple question marks for me i think because of how the champion pick works it makes sense to want to bring that up especially if again we want to see shogo fanboy moving his way around the map and trying to affect some of these other lanes here and let's, let's talk about komsky a little bit more I was speaking with one of the coaches over on that are on Columbia Navy side, and they were talking about how he recently actually role swapped to ADC. He was a mid lane player until very recently, and his coach actually expressed a lot of respect and appreciation for the work ethic he's put and how much, how far he's come here. So I think we let, let's uh, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, the matchup is a little bit different this time around, and I definitely think he learned his lesson in game one about kind of respecting when your support is on a roam timer. Here, the pick I'm most interested in, actually two picks, is the Trundle and the Malzahar. The Malzahar because it is really good for setting up fights post six because of course the uh, the, the ultimate <laughs> coming through that everybody loves yeah. the magic the magic oh, outskill of button course. of course. And for on the side of this trundle, it's also really interesting because part of the reason we don't see Diana jungle a lot anymore is because of how good some of these 80 junglers, Lee Sin, Olaf, Xin Zhao, and stuff like that have become. And, and yeah. trundle is another example of exactly that, where they have these good early games, but they still, they still scale decently well into the later stages. So now if we see a meeting of these junglers, Man, this Diana is going to get steamrolled before level six. And I actually think in the 1v1 at any point, that actually really favors Matthew 16. So in isolation, it's something that you got to be really careful of on the side of blue gold. Yeah, and I think it all comes down to playing the pace of the game and also playing your roles correctly. And pace of the game is the biggest thing I mentioned first because it's the first and foremost thing we want to go ahead and look at. Because when you look at Columbia Navy, they're set up this time around. They have a lot more like pacing when it comes around. You have Trundle who can go ahead and speed himself up, get that iceberg out onto the field, and also slow people down if he do so chooses. You also have Braum. They're going for a very cold kind of composition, which honestly, here in the South, is really hot, so it's really nice to see that <laughs> breath of fresh air come through. But overall, everything else is being brought for him, that Malzahar to go ahead and suppress players and 
as you mentioned earlier, we all love not being able to play the game for like a solid minute. So honestly, that in itself could also be a huge game changer so long as they find the right targets for it. But it also comes out of these early stages, as you said, the dueling between Diana and Trundle. She's not much of a duelist when it comes to those jungle compositions. She's very much more of an assassin going ahead, hopping in, yep. finding that crescent, going ahead, hopping in, using the ultimate, and then drawing everybody close enough to where you can capitalize on that. And it just comes down to really finding the right opportunities and mm -hmm. taking the most of it. And that in itself, I don't know if there's going to be too many to really worry about in the bot lane because, I mean, I, will, I keep on going back to this that I apologize for. I just love what can go on down here because, I mean, once again, Assurance on this Vayne pick, he's, he was really good. I mean, I'm not going to say he was the best yeah. by all means because Glim was obviously the star of the show in that last one. But when it comes around to how that composition is going to go, having the Karma as the support now, not having another tank this time around, this is more of a mage-oriented support than a tank, than what we've seen last time. And honestly, that's going to be a little bit more susceptible to be exploited by the likes of Spesky. Yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, it, interesting, and that's kind of what I mean when I say this comp is very AP heavy, even as far as the support in the Karma, you do have a bit more of an issue when it comes to face checking for some of these neutral objectives. Yep. You think about the Urgot being a good candidate for this, but in some situations, you want Urgot to be on the split while the support is the one doing some of the the clearing of vision here, trying to set up and establish vision lines for some of these objectives here. So I think if... You fall behind on the side of blue gold. I think they're yeah. actually going to struggle quite a bit, especially with how important it is for them to get through this early game safely, especially because of that jungle pick. Because another the issue with the AP junglers at the moment is twofold. With the exception of someone like Elise, you don't have any early gank pressure with most of those AP junglers. There yeah. isn't a whole lot you can actually do. There isn't, it's not very optimal for you to three camp, go mid, go top, wherever the case may be. Trundle, yeah. on the other hand, that's absolutely an option. Sometimes you can on the way to three camping at level two, just transition gank and force a flash out of your mid, the enemy mid laner or something like that. So you have a lot more options in this early game when it comes to affecting these lanes for Matthew 16. And because we didn't see as much of that in game one, I want to see that in game two now that he has this overwhelming ability to do so. Yeah, I'm definitely with you there. It's just going to come across of whether or not it's going to be a huge jungle matchup here. We Kind of noted on it in the last game, hoping to bring a little bit more influence to it and hoping to see a little bit more aggression out of those early stages from the junglers. But honestly, Trundle, we could definitely see that. We could see a huge edge there, which they had in the last game as well. Matthew 16, running that Olaf, we did mention that he was going to be very aggressive there in those early stages, and we just didn't see enough. So honestly, it leaves the question whether or not he's actually going to really utilize that aggression. I mean, you can have that gank ability. You can have the full fruition to really... Uh, bring that availability to the table, but you got to make sure to actually use it. And that's what it comes down to. So we are going to be coming in here into the game and seeing whether or not it actually really pans out like that. And again, blue gold, a one game one and Columbia university are back, have their backs against the wall here. They want to take this to a game three, extend this series and look for an upset win here. This is going to have to be where they do it. They have the, it seems like they have the duels to do so in this draft and we know how important it is for them as a team to do that. So this early game, that's where I have my eyes set up. Uh, we might have an invade coming through, but invading oh. a Brom is a little questionable. So I, I don't know if I like that. Yeah, I'm kind of with you, but Braum isn't anywhere to be seen. He's down there in the bomb lane. We're going to see Fanboy just kind of vibing down there. It just comes down to what else is going to be coming through, and one of those things going to be coming through is going to be a, a little game pause. So not exactly sure what the issue there is, but it gives us a little bit of a tease to work with here to see the setups mm -hmm. right off the start. And honestly, mentioning that early game time and time again, this is going to be a very influential game on those first 15 minutes. So mm -hmm. when it comes down to that, I'm really wanting to see, as we said a lot more, the invade, that could have been something really interesting. And as you kind of pointed out, Braum would not be the best idea to really have there if you're going to go ahead and have yourself an invade coming through. But honestly, I think it comes down to whether or not we can see this game actually come out. And we will with a little bit, possibly of some trades coming out as we already see a little bit of damage, but not enough to really make too much of an impact just yet. Yeah, and I, I do like that we saw a little bit of deep vision placed there from Spanky. It's good because what I, another thing I do want to see in this situation is I want to see a bit of tracking done onto Matthew's side here. Like I want them to, I want Blue Gold Aid to make sure they know where the this trundle is. 
because of how important this early game is for Spanky, how he just needs to full clear, reset, full clear again. And once we get level five, level six, that's where we can start seeing these games really have a lot of impact. Yeah, I'm definitely with you there. That's why I'm really excited, especially when we're missing early game. That's definitely part of it. Hitting that level six, that huge power spike that comes through with having your entire kit to play with. And that in itself is going to be something. But honestly, I'm loving what's going to come out here in the top lane, the little rematch between Myth and Disco. And honestly, I feel like Myth, he's feeling a little bit more confident this time. Getting those pokes right off the rip, saying let's get some damage here on the board. You had the best of me the first time around, but let's see if you can double down to some extent with the damage coming out. Oh, it's looking a little bit too even for him to really cash in just yet. Yeah, a lot more aggression in this early game, clearly, from both of these squads. Just throwing all of their ranged abilities, just trying to get whatever damage and effective trades they can. Looks like so far, though, nothing's going to come up of it, come through, rather, in terms of kills just yet. But I like how aggressive we're seeing Columbia named bot lane going for here they know that you are pretty squishy as the karma vein early on so you know you can get poked out in a sense here especially now that the level two has oh. come out they have to respect that and just back up yeah i'm definitely with you there overall just looking at komsky he's gonna probably be focusing that karma more likely because you want to go ahead and make sure that vein doesn't have that speed buff to go ahead and dodge out those skill shots that it's literally true. is in ezreal's entire kit you want to make sure that he doesn't have the benefit of the doubt. He's going to be using his abilities, using those rolls to get out of the way. And we see it right there. He's doing a great job getting all that damage down. But it's not without any kind of trade of its own, grabbing his own kind of health off the board. Yeah, the trade's not going in the favor of Insurance and Warhawk. They are going to get pushed under the tower. And what does that mean? The immediate invade coming through from the bot lane. I love this one, Mick. But oh my gosh, I think Myths is in trouble. Oh, he most definitely is, but he's going to be able to finesse himself out of a uh, unsticky situation at least one time this game. But it just comes through to look at that Disco Boat. He's a respectable opponent. The show that's almost a, a skirmish that you have in the top lane there during those early stages to get a feel and say, do I really got a better feel for you this time around, or are you just actually built different? And honestly, it's too <laughs> early to tell just yet, but Disco Boat, he's really showing, especially getting that Ignite already off the board. That's going to be something that can really play into the favor of Myth if he so does decide to engage a little bit sooner. Here now, Komsky and Shogo did get a cheater off. So immediately, we're going to see this Ezreal come back to lane with that tier, get to stacking that one right away. And that Pryo also guarantees an easy scuttle crab here. So far, for Spanky though, he hasn't run into anybody, which is basically just the dream scenario for this champion. And now we're just trying to see how much he can get done here. There's actually a gank opportunity here with a, no flash on Myths, but he might just be able to get away. Yeah, and it really comes out of this trade right now. Oh, and Diana going for that early engage. That is not going to be a good move you want to make just yet. But thankfully, we do have Disco Boat coming in for the save, trying to possibly find himself a kill because Myth made it out earlier. But right now with the poke coming out, the ability's Beautiful. coming through. That's going to be a first blood there for Spanky to go ahead and give that edge to the Diana jungle. We weren't expecting too much out of, but the trades in the bottom are going to be absolutely massive. We're going to see one coming through, an ADC for support. We see blue gold coming out there on top. And that actually is a pretty beneficial trade coming out from blue gold here because now Komsky, he is going to miss out on some of this farm and the kill going, the kill trading one for one with the gank coming through is best case scenario for insurance, even if he had to blow both of the summoner spells there just to guarantee that pick. So he gets the recall, walk his way back with the finished tier two boost there and the Greaves coming through. And it's actually not a bad trade here for blue gold, not to mention the play working on the top side of the map in their favor. You see myths he had to oh walk back to goodness. lane lost out on a good amount of farm and then and right away you just go, I, I think it's fair to say disco boat is built different i'm gonna declare it i mean yeah <laughs> the way he's really just shoving himself on the myth he's saying all right you don't want to fight me well that's too bad buddy i'm gonna get as close as possible i'm gonna dash through you i'm gonna literally hit you from every possible angle I'm going to hit all eight of your legs. How about that? But <laughs> what it really comes down to here is, I mean, uh, just the rest of the field. We obviously know that Disco Boat there in the top lane, he's filled himself. He's got a little bit of initiative. He's got that minion wave pushing under the tower. But now it comes down to the return of the other two lanes because we had that tray go through. We now have Fanboy there trying to get back to that bot lane, trying to go ahead and set up for this drag, it may look like, because we're going to have a little bit of a duke out here towards the bottom river. But that in itself... I don't think it's enough to warrant just yet because neither one of these junglers are really around to capitalize on that. It's obviously something on the top of their heads, but it's not enough to really follow through with just yet because we don't see either one of them sitting at level six. 
No, when I, and especially in Spanky's case, do you see that Method is getting the first move on this Malzahar, who's sexy? You just walk away. You're like, you know what? I didn't want the first dragon anyway. And against the Trundle, and like we were talking about the early game power here, I don't think you're really expecting to actually end up picking up this first Drake unless you punish a recall timer from the bottom lane that is actually inopportune. But besides that, you can see that they are just going to immediately go for it there on the bottom side of the map. It's very simple for Matthew to be able to just take this one down. I don't think Blue Gold actually fights with this. Oh, no, they're most definitely not. I feel like when it comes down, the one team that's going to really rotate and find a way to really run off of this is going to be that bot lane because Insurance, he already found that pick earlier. He already shut down an ADC. He already found a way to go ahead and kill Komsky once. So honestly, going ahead and finding a way to double down on the CS, find a little bit more gold in that manner, especially with Blue Gold being down in Dragons in the last matchup and still finessing themselves a win there. So honestly, I feel like that's a really good confidence booster for them to go ahead and say, dragons do not mean games. Cause it's so long as we go ahead and get this early goal lead, uh, I mean, a mountain Drake, is not going to make a world of a difference right now? It's definitely going to be better than a ocean Drake from what we saw in the last matchup, but it's not going to be enough, but maybe Oriana grabbing this pick towards the middle and Diana trying to find this with the ultimate to come through. We're going to see old Spanky finding himself another, barely staying alive by the grit of his teeth. With Trundle there trying to get the follow-up, but just really being teased there. It's going to be enough for Blue Gold to find themselves another pick to really run with. Yeah, and I like that pathing from Spanky. He goes for the invade because he knows that Columbia are focused on the dragon, and he's gotten a farm lead for himself because of it. He's successful in the two ganks he's had so far, albeit close calls on both ends, and hey. he's effectively 2-0 and zero at the moment. He's reached that level 6 mark, and now he is a serious threat coming into some of these skirmishes. And now, speaking of skirmishes, we got a lot of fighting oh. going on the bot side here. We got a lot of pings coming through mix so i'm feeling we're gonna see some jungle intervention very soon oh yeah we most definitely will especially with the likes of columbia you had that bot lane kind of struggling to some extent the exhaust coming out maybe not being enough just yet with vane still oh, staying alive. having the knockback that's gonna be absolutely massive oh, look Disco here. Said, hold up buddy we ain't over just yet i got an ultimate here on the field we got three players who are at low health and we're gonna see if we can find at least one of them and neither in or any of these players essentially are gonna find themselves a pick just yet a huge tease, a huge, just honestly, establishment to throw the gauntlet down the table and say, look, don't come after me if you don't have the backup for it. All right, and Blue Gold had the backup in spades with Disco Bow coming in with the charge. And now you force an unfortunate recall from Columbia's bot lane, and you're giving away plates to this Vayne, who is already getting a sizable lead because of this pressure they've exerted bot lane here. And interestingly enough, Warhawk, a support we saw do so much work around the map, is oh. not doing as much. Oh. He's focused more on the lane here. And uh, Method, oh. yeah, he's gone. There's not a whole lot to say there. He's just getting solo killed. Oh, Glam, once again, doing it again. A great little job, a great little skirmish there to come out on top. But honestly, Disco's looking for a way to double down with it. Find himself one of his own on the top lane, especially after burning that TP to get the bot, not finding a kill of his own. So he's looking to dish out some damage, dish out some CS, grab a little bit of gold to compensate for that. But it comes down to with how much everybody is spaced out right now. You have objectives on the field. You don't have a drag up just yet because we did just see that fall fairly recently to Columbia University. But with that Rift Herald still in the field, that's got to be a question for at least one of these teams to say, I mean, especially for Columbia, after how we've already seen some plating fall for their side. I, th I, think that's a, I think that's a great idea, honestly. It seems like Rift Herald hasn't been a big focus for either team so uh, before the plates have fallen, at least from what we saw in game one. But I think it's an option now. Spanky is in the vicinity. It looking like he is going to jump right on top of it. And I like that. You could easily come back to the bot lane and just commit those extra plates onto your AD carry, who's already taken some of them here, maybe mid. But I do like giving insurance all this extra gold because now, even though Glenn do will do a lot of damage as this Oriana, the DPS is coming from this vein. So getting extra gold in his pocket, however you can, I think is absolutely welcome. Yeah, I'm definitely with you there. There's just going to be a little bit more presence. There's going to be a little bit more contention there on the bot lane, but that in itself is not going to be enough because there also has to be a little bit of intimidation to follow through with it. And honestly, looking at the mid lane right now, Glim is going to be an in intimidating force at that going right under the tower, still winning that fight and really not being stayed there towards the end because the presence is everywhere on the map except the middle lane. We got a little bit of a skirmish on the bot, a little bit of the tease there, but not enough to find any kills just yet. So they're on the mid lane. There's going to be a lot, a lot of threats, especially with that Rift Herald being in the hands of old Spanky. 
to grab himself what is going to be easily this first tower to fall, especially with that enhanced magic uh, basic attack that you have with the likes of Diana. An absolute tower melter, and maybe a melter on the bot lane if we see Spakey find themselves. But with the trades in top, there's too much going on here. The execute, not able to really get in that threshold just yet. So instead, we're going to see Disco getting a little bit more aggro with it. Right, and, and honestly, it's just so unfortunate. Matthew didn't actually end up doesn't end up opting for that dive there, even commits to subjugate and doesn't actually manage to really get the play he's looking for. Oh, oh my you god. Can't do that. Oh no. He had to know. Oh, that's, it's painful. That's uh that's I mean we we mentioned he was built diff. I, uh, so somebody gotta send a carrier pigeon over to uh to miss door to let him know that because i don't know if he's gotten the hint just yet because i mean with the way you're really playing out this top lane right now especially the likes of get disco boat this dude is he's feeling really comfy we mentioned it in the earlier games he was feeling comfy on club but now i'm sure his confidence is on cloud nine it's gotta be and i mean you don't have the tp from disco ball oh wow and it's looking like columbia are looking for it whoa oh. Enough there to go ahead and grab one, but is it going to be enough to really follow up and grab another trade? Because you do have Myth here on the field. He's trying to grab himself a couple hits, grab himself a kill, but he's going to be the one to be killed instead with everybody in the dragon pit. And we do see Matthew oh, grabbing no himself flash. another dragon. There's just so much here and not enough to keep any teammates alive as we see blue gold just running away with these kills right now, getting a lot more gold right now, but not enough health on the field for them to play with. But a trade will come through. Old fanboy is going to be the last one standing, but it gets a mage. He's just going to dish out too much damage as we do see blue gold fighting themselves an ace and then an influential one at that. Indeed, they don't get the dragon, but it doesn't matter. It's only Columbia's second of this game, oh. and they get so much gold from some of these kills as a result. It was a, a really bold moonfall coming out from Spanky, but it ends up paying off in the end here, and you can see it really develop in this gold lead. 7,000 in favor of blue gold a fear beyond death is almost available we might have a kill here oh we most definitely do i mean that man's a sharp shooter myth i know he's a chonky boy but he's got some balance to him so that itself is going to grab him a shutdown on the likes of disco boat but it's not going to be too much just yet because with so many tower platings already taken you don't only have the trades of having two kills on the main you also have four tower platings so myth he's got to put in a lot of work here if he really wants to mitigate the damage as much as possible but Overall, as you mentioned, that gold lead that came through, we're seeing, I mean, Blue Gold having a 7,000 gold lead right now, essentially. And that in itself is really intimidating. And at that, you really don't care about a Mountain Drake and an Ocean Drake. It's just not no. that big of a deal. You don't care about these objectives, especially after losing that first Rift Herald, getting the first tower shut down at that to give you that massive bonus. It's just everybody's really just running away right now from their problems. And there's just not enough to do because Glim. He's here to fight, and he's going to make sure he gets it. Oh, man, that was barely even a fight. Method is just getting bullied by the likes of Spanky and Glem. They're looking for more, but it's going to cost the Flash of Matthew, who unfortunately isn't able to actually do anything about his mid laner falling. And at this point, we have Disco Boat, who's in the bottom lane. I don't think they actually realize he's there, Mick. I'm with you there. Oh, I don't they think do. they know he's there either, but it does eventually get revealed. He, a little bit of intel comes out onto the field, but... It's going to instead call for a fight. It's going to cause for more of a retreat over to the bot lane where we're going to find a lot more down in Disco. Absolutely lock it on to Fanboy. We see a really somewhat of a trade now as you do see insurance off the field, but that single targeting is off the rip. It's off the board now, and Disco both going to be the one to follow suit. So they are going to get something, but Blue Gold, they are not missing a beat. They're just going to continue trading for the kills that they've gotten by taking this Tier 2 turret. Oh and God. now the reset is starting to come through. They can put some damage into this Tier 3, but I think they just want to be walking away from this one, Mick. Yeah, when you have that Diana on the field, that's the one thing you really have to concern yourself with because she may be an assassin of some sort, and she may be a duelist there towards the mid lane, but whenever you have her in jungle... She almost feels like Camille with how much she can melt towers and really capitalizing on that as you see Blue Gold doing so. Okay, who cares if we just lost two of our teammates? They already had so much of a lead that that's really just going to even them out. Let's find a little thing to kind of turn the tides in our favor more so. Yep. And, and that, a mid-tower, that's definitely what you want to be asking for, especially when Spanky can really just ride this out, has so much health to run off of, we can just see him keep farming and going at it. 
Yeah, and I think I think again, uh, we gotta say like how impactful Disco Bull has been on this Kled pick as well. Just with some of the engagements he's been able to set up with that charge. Speaking of engagements, goodbye Warhawk. It's been a pleasure. Wait, has it? He, it's been a pleasure I, to live. I can tell you that much. Yeah, <laughs> I, it was a pleasure to watch him live. I can, I can definitely say that. That was impressive. Yeah, but still staying alive doesn't mean the fight's over just yet. We still have a little bit of damage coming back and forth. We have a little bit of uh, a skirmish there in the mid lane, but it's not going to be enough to really dish out any damage as an overall kind of collective. But uh, I think that's going to put everybody back in their respective positions and with the exclusion of the bottom river because with that dragon coming up here fairly soon, you have 45 seconds on the board and blue gold, they're going to say, all right, we don't want these guys to have themselves a third because that puts the pressure on us to know that we have to really contest that last one if we want any chance here because that's going to be something that really evens things out. I mean, we're already having a pretty good lead here, but we don't want to give them any real breadth of chance right now. So to go ahead and shut that out, we're going to see a little bit of a, a recon going on, a little of intelligence game, a little bit of a, the old red star going on right now, but not enough to really follow through with. Just more of a hold back and just damage being a dealt everywhere else. Yeah, now blue gold you can see them like you're saying that reconnaissance game is going to be big for them to secure their first drake of game two here they're not going to let columbia once again get to that soul point and it seems to be something they're like we'll let them get the first two but after that no shot not a single one more and you can see how they're just poking columbia out of the river and we have to see a good team fight setup come through we could easily see oh. method flash into a potential ultimate here but we have to see how what happens yeah, and grabbing that dragon already is going to be huge for the likes of the old blue gold to find themselves one. And insurance to grab Matthew 16 is going to be big in itself. That's a jungler off the field. That's a lot of presence that you don't have in the next team fight. That's a lot of AoE kind of crowd control that can come out as well. Now robbed away from your grasp. And then with insurance having so much health to play off of, you have old Whoa. Spanky coming in here with the pulls with the ultimate. You're going to have that Diana presence, that Diana diff coming through, and a massive shove up to the mid lane to really just try to find themselves another but it's going to fall through shortly. Instead, they're going to grab a tower as a compensation prize. Yeah, they could go for the inhib. It is a little early for them to be able to do so. And it's looking like they are just going to back off because Method is threatening them there with a good amount of damage so far. I think uh, he is overchasing maybe a little bit. I don't think he's going to be able to actually pick up any kills. Nah. Oh, wait, but maybe Mythus can. Uh, with him going ahead and targeting that Kled, that's going to be absolutely really good for them. But is it going to? With the picks and the return coming out, Blue Gold said, okay, you may have done the damage, but have you really gotten the kills yet? I'm not dead. I'm not on a gray screen quite yet, but I will still be in the fight to some extent to find ourselves one and maybe another with the rest of the team following through. We have insurance sitting fairly good on the health pool, but that's going to call for retreat to say, let's go ahead and one to cut our losses. Yeah, and blue gold not afraid to blow all of their summoner spells for these engagements and spanky you're playing with fire a little bit i'm not gonna lie but he is gonna be able to walk away and ultimately you still get so much on the map here for blue gold they haven't taken any tier one other than mid but they've pushed that lane all the way to the inhibitor at 19 minutes here mick and at this point Columbia University, they're just fighting to see if they can get some poke off, maybe some damage onto this mid-tier one because they haven't been able to touch any turrets all game long. And like, it's, I can't really blame them. Look at the side of blue gold here. We're talking 5-1, and 5-0, and 6-2 oh, and and on all the major damage dealers on blue gold side. How do you get through them? Honestly, you just got to find a way to collectively move in on one, infiltrate his entire lane at that. But honestly, when you're isolated, when you're putting into these 1v1, 1v2 scenarios, it's not going to be enough against the likes of Disco Boat because he's going to go ahead and win that trade and really be close enough for this fight in mid. But does he need it? No. The rest of the team is going to be there. They're going to find themselves one as well on the method to go ahead and close that out and bring the presence and the entire fight to the top lane. But is that going to be enough? I don't believe so. Instead, we're just going to see a little bit more of a... Uh, an eye of the storm now as we do see this top tower to be the next to collapse. <laughs> That's a good way to put it because Matthew definitely has a storm coming and they're just going to get right on top of him. No shockwave, but it doesn't matter. This trundle is done and dusted and all he got for it was that bottom tier one. 
Yeah, and I, I, I gotta say, man, I don't, I really don't know if that's worth it. Especially thinking about the rest of the field, thinking about everything that's going on right now, and the Baron being the next to fall. That's not just going to be a tower, man. That could theoretically be every tower in the game, so long as you make the most of them. With that upgraded smite coming through, it's sitting at 21 minutes. It's going to be upgraded at this stage. And I mean, you get a canceled recall from the likes of old, uh, old Komsky, but is it going to be enough? I don't believe so. You got to go ahead and win these fights. You got to go ahead and get the actual Baron buff off of some of these players. And the only one that's going to go ahead and get it off of them is going to be Insurance, surprisingly enough, who got isolated for that. Yeah, I mean, imagine being able to move is probably what Insurance is saying to himself and his team at the moment here. <laughs> the CC layering was pretty well done by the side of Columbia University. They will deny one Baron buff. There's certainly a couple more available on the side of Blue Gold. And once they clear this mid-wave, they have options to play through here. Oh my gosh, wait. That is just gone. Bro, they, they don't even need it. They do not even need insurance. We're looking at, I mean, they don't need life insurance. They don't need health insurance. <laughs> none of that. They are feeling healthy. They are feeling proud. And they are feeling ready to go. Looking at the way they're engaging on these fights, saying we win them one way or the other. Who really cares? We got the support here in the game. We don't need an ADC. We have one in our Diana. We have one in our Oriana. Our Kled is out here dueling left and right, winning these 1v2s, 1v3s. He knows how to sustain that courage, and he's going to go ahead and find himself an inhibitor with it. And honestly, go ahead and cut your losses, get out, retreat, and say we got bear, and we can find a tower off of this as well. Yeah, and although you got a lot of poke, you don't want to be chasing this composition. Glem has the shockwave, and he has been so good with them so far. He's 6-0, and and I'm sure he's happy to look for 7. Oh, honestly, and especially with Disco Boat, he's looking for more assists at least to just kind of put some poke on the field, but... Going ahead and being forced into combat a little bit. It's nice and all, but the dragon's going to be the real eye, the real prize right now for either squad because you don't want to, again, put Columbia University in that scenario where they have to go ahead and really be forced out for that fourth. Oh, for the fourth one. But honestly, speaking of kills, speaking oh. of frags and pressure, oh we got a lot God. of it coming out from Spanky, finding himself a double kill, getting the third and looking for the dragon next to go ahead and add a little bit of salt into the wound. Oh my gosh, and insurance, the ADC is just escorting Komsky and Shogo fanboy away from this dragon pit. You are not looking for this dragon. It's blue gold. They're going to secure their second Drake of this game. It's going to be a lot of ultimate ability haste on their side, and them just securing and solidifying their lead so much further. Mick, we're in another tough situation here for Columbia University Navy, and man... It just doesn't feel good. You got so many lanes pushing towards your side of the map. You got supers pushing into your base as well. And even though Baron's up in 20 seconds, we're in the same scenario. Blue Gold are strong enough that one more could fight and they could actually just close it out. Yeah, I'm with you there. Just go ahead and play ARAM for a little bit. Sit there and say, let's stack up towards the center because, I mean, the lead, we sat there and we're looking for a little bit of insult to injury in the last game. But we've already seen Blue Gold not only double down, but if you look at the kills, they're one off from tripling down on the amount of kills, and especially that's going to have a huge impact in the gold, the amount of drakes they have, two cloud drakes at that. So, I mean, they're not really worried about resistances. They're not worried about health regen. They have so much support. They have a lot more crowd control to go ahead and buff up their teammates that they're really not concerned about getting that too much. They just want to make sure Columbia University doesn't get too far close instead of them getting too far ahead right now. And we're seeing them really just focusing on keeping this vision line pushed up on the top side here. Not actually going to be able to take down Arctic Mist, but you can see how they're not really paying much attention to the bottom side. They're just oh. running in the top and mid lane, and now it's looking like Spanky, the lone jungler, is being chased. Oh, he's going back in! That's Diana's for you, man. you got to risk it all and hope that somebody's going to come to your rescue. But even if they don't, they're going to find themselves a top tower as a consolation prize find themselves a kill to follow through possibly on the fanboy as they do see him fall and the next one to follow suit may be Malzahar towards the center but honestly they're looking they know there's a tower up there if they don't go ahead and kill him if he backs out they have something else to go ahead and hit while they're at it and honestly with right there can't play the game but you can play enough with that Orion on the field to give you that shield get yourself that all star all back find yourself a lot more help to play with and find yourself another a tower to fall and honestly as it's looking right now, Columbia is finding themselves a little bit of a stance, but it's not going to be enough to stop all this base influence. 
Yeah, we're looking at 30-second spawn timers on three major players on Columbia's side here with the waves coming in. If they take down Komsky, this is GG well played. Honestly, and that's I'm with you, man. That's all it comes down to. Komsky, he's not sitting too well right now. He only has half his health bar, and honestly, I feel like Disco Boat feels like, even with Scarl on the field, he kind of feels like he's sitting in the same shoes, because if he loses that, he's not going to be able to live long enough to get him back to get that big old chunky health bar. So they're just going to play a little bit of a Cold War once again, find a little, a little bit of reconnaissance across the field, find a little bit of intel here and there, throw some wards down, clear out some jungles, and just kind of find a little bit more of a lead than they uh, really bargained for. Yeah, now you got supers pushing in two lanes here on Columbia University side. They just don't have a lot that they can do at the moment here. Now we're looking at 14,000 gold being the deficit. And we're at this point where, man, Spanky is two levels ahead of Method 3, ahead of the enemy jungler in Matthew 16. So it's tough. Even in this 1v1 as Malzahar, who is approaching the two items, you're, you're not looking for those spikes. You don't want that smoke. And now someone has to answer top lane soon. You can see a super wave is pushing in. Another one is on the way. And that's the moment where blue gold strikes. They just know someone's going to be in the base clearing and they can just look for the fight that's going to close it out. And I'm also looking at this barren attempt right now. I mean, honestly, you do want to move in with that. You want to really capitalize on it, but it's just a lot better to go ahead and say, let's find ourselves an objective where you know a tower is going to fall because we got Disco Boat and Glim down there on the bottom. Two massive players. Let's go ahead and see what we can do here in the top jungle. A Baron is going to be up. We denied that from the side of Columbia University. Give ourselves something to really just close this game out because honestly, with the way they're sitting at right now, they're really comfortable. Dragon's coming up here in 48 seconds. Go ahead and set up for that. Rob Columbia University of any attempt to really throw a curveball into the mix so long as they just don't find themselves the right picks in a fight. And with the way they're sitting right now with the huge deficit in golden items, I really don't know what that edge could be. Well, we just find ourselves in the same position as game one. Unforced errors from blue gold sides are all Columbia can really hope for at this point in time. Even with the major item spikes they have reached, it's just not good enough at this exact moment. And right there, the fight's coming oh out. Oh my Karma god. Karma actually staying alive. Warhawk. Oh, no. oh, Warhawk finally falling there from the likes of an Ezreal ultimate. That's going to be a global thing you never really see coming too often. But it's not going to be that big in the big scheme of things. You have a lot going on here. You have a team fight coming through in the middle. And you have Disco Boat managing to stay alive. As Spanky Whoa. comes in, giving the assist. And the shirts are going to be there to give themselves that assurance. To go ahead and find themselves a fourth essentially a team wipe only two men standing are going to be method and Komsky, two of the squishiest players on their squad they're saying forget the dragon let's go ahead and end this and find ourselves a dub that's right it isn't going to be a penta kill but that's the triple four insurance it's going to take everything down as there's no answer left for columbia university side one turret goes down we're looking for a second these low hp bars are a little concerning oh, oh wow yeah, it is concerning, especially when you got a guy what? standing, but Disco Boat can still manage to find something, even though he will fall as well. You just got to worry about the rest of the team, and with Karma right back up where he started, we see Warhawk. He fell earlier, but now he's going to be back here to play the game again. Here with insurance to say, I can give you the shields, I can give you enough uh, sustainability to take down this dragon, give ourselves a little bit more to play off of, because we may be a three-man squad right now, but that doesn't stop us from capturing some objectives and making sure to add some more salt into that wound and make it all like a salt mine down right now in that gash. Yeah, but still, good play. Good true shot rod from Chomsky. Uh, Komsky, excuse me, does mean that Columbia lives to fight another day. How long that day is going to be? Well, that is a different question, Nick. I don't know why you'd ask me that. But anyways, blue gold A, so strong. So strong. I mean, I'm ask gonna, me how strong they are. I'm with you, dude. There, there's really not too much more to say. I mean, they you can just tell they are vibing right now. They are just really playing these games. They sit there and say, all right, honestly, we're just feeling this like it like it's a rank queue right now. Like we're just kind of chilling out here because the way they have themselves set up, they can really just this entire rift feels like a playground to them right now. They're winning. Sometimes they're falling. Sometimes they're getting a little bit of a scrape on the elbow, but it's never going to be enough to really count them out just yet because I mean, looking at these jungle clears, looking at all the objective clears, everything ever since that 15th minute has been there for their taking. And looking at right here, Spanky's going to make sure to fall through again. He's going to go ahead and start this fight to go ahead and initiate it out. 
pop the Zongya's Hourglass. Go ahead and have a little bit of survivability, but the Ezreal ultimate is going to be massive for Komsky to find himself a pick on a Spanky, but will it be enough for the rest of the team to go ahead and find themselves one as well? Because insurance may fall, but Mitz is going to actually find Disco Boat, find himself something to work with, especially after a long, oh drawn-out game God. in the matchup. But we see insurance still trying to oh stick it out. Oh, my God. Grabbing himself an ace to go ahead and get the double. That's game, baby. Insurance playing out of his mind, kiting like a madman, wins the game for his team in this fight. And that's going to be a 39 to 16, 2 to 0. Blue gold A will take down Columbia. Dude, that was a. Uh, I mean, I didn't. I know we didn't really bargain for that, but I mean, that was a lot more than I bargained for. And I'm okay <laughs> with it. I mean, blue gold, the way we thought it was going to be like that last game. They were a little bit iffy here and there in those early stages, but and they're not even really scalable chance, I would say. Just the way they play out the game, it's like, I know they didn't play any of these cold-blooded champs like Braum and Trundle, but some of Arizona. Right, and I think, it, I think it's partially because of how well they play things out in the yeah. early parts of the game. We talked about how that's important for both of these junglers, but I see it a lot more from the side of Blue Gold here yeah. and how they are constantly their junglers always playing for their lanes and it's really starting to come to fruition here whereas matthew we don't see him ganking too very often especially on picks like the trundle where you have a lot of agency to help out your other laners and because of these openings blue gold found especially game two you're playing diana you don't have a lot of gank opportunities pre six but they were able to find at least some before yeah. level six this diana was two and zero and because of that smart early game pay that's plays the smart jungle pathing coming out from them they managed to get an early lead that became once again insurmountable yeah i'm definitely with you and as we said or as you said at least those early game trade outs that came out for spanky i mean it was a little yeah. bit risky there for the jungle you said the diana you didn't really want to skirmish all that much but when you can trust your team to that extent to say i'm going to go ahead and make an engage on the likes of an ergot that was the first pick they got on them I was scared. Go ahead and say there. Uh, it really was to know that Disco mm -hmm. Boat saying, trusting, are you going to get here fast enough? And honestly, the way he played out, we said he was built diff and he rotates differently as well to go ahead and be fast enough to get down there, give that support, because that's how Diana is in those early stages. And that's why he became such a big presence in those late games. Is it, It's an all or nothing approach. I mean, some of us as, as, as gamers, we like spending our money, but we don't have it at the end of the day. So we like to go ahead and gamble, at least with our play styles. And Diana rewards that kind of play style. It rewards going ahead and getting in, finding that early edge that you can go through. And we didn't even see a skirmish between old Matthew 16 and Spanky. Because at that point, honestly, if I'm sitting in Matthew, I'm saying, dude, I had the lead against him. I'm a trundle for goodness gracious. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't fight him now. He was going yeah. to melt me. Yeah, that's why I talked about that early vision as well, trying to get a handle on where he actually was and the yeah. fact that things played out so well in the bottom lane for Blue Gold as well, even though they got pushed in early on, you see insurance just coming up big once again, especially more so in this yes. game. Glenn definitely was pulling his weight. I will not say otherwise, but insurance was the one coming up big in these <laughs> yeah. team fights, putting out these insane damage numbers yeah. that I can only imagine he had the most on his team. So it ends up, Everything just ends up coming together for the side of Blue Gold A, and they, they get a pretty decisive victory from it. Yeah, I'm with you there. Insurance really living up to the name there. I mean, honestly, that's the whole play style of Vayne as well. The way he played it out, they never got to the point where anybody got too tanky or they were out of their reach or really anybody's reach because when you had that Diana, when you had that Cled that could even brawl out against the likes of Myth, you don't need that passive that Vayne brings to the table to really capitalize on. You can just kind of chill and say, I'm just going to basic attack. I'm going to play ADC, and I'm just going to do my job. And he did a darn good job at that. So, I mean, that alone in itself, you have that late game insurance if you need it, but it never came to that stage where they really had to rely on it. No, and I think we should probably just, I want to give a shout out. That's my like, last point to the uh, top laner there, Disco Bow. Yeah. New player joining this core that's been together for a long time. Seems to have slotted in very well. So you oh, yeah. only saw him on one pick, but I mean, a comfort pick's a comfort pick. And they it told is. us how important those picks were for that roster. So for him, on the first game of the season here at NECC, to come 
to be kind of a rock, he definitely wasn't slamming these high KDA numbers, but he was running the top lane matchup. So there was just no way Arcticness could actually be relevant in either game. And he was able to, because of that, make these cross map plays, make these TPs, shove, recall, and just walk to the bottom yeah. lane, which you don't see top laners do very often for good reason, but it works. Yeah, I'm definitely with you. Boat find himself. Honestly, it kind of suits everything because when you're on top lane, you usually feel like you're right on an island. But having Boat in your name, you have a quick way to get back to the mainland. Go ahead and play with the rest of your squad. That's going to be really good going forward for them. So honestly, going forward for them, it's blue gold. They're making a statement here on the first stage in the first week here at the NECC for League of Legends and the Challengers division especially. So that itself is going to be something scary. It's going to be something to definitely take note of if you're any other squad going up against them. But regardless of that, I mean, God, at the end of the day, gods can bleed. So, I mean, they're not going to be unstoppable by any means, but I'm really looking forward to what can be brought from both of these squads as the course of the season. We said that Columbia, they were fairly new to everything. They just kind of came together. But, I mean, still, mm -hmm. delaying the inevitable in such a fashion they did unless you have insurance there to say, no, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. You only have so much to really work with at the end of the day. But speaking of the end of the day, that's going to be it from us here on the desk here for this matchup. But as I said earlier, do not go anywhere. We have another matchup right after this. We have some more League of Legends action for you. It may go to a best of three, actually. We may actually get a third map here tonight. So hopefully, so long as you don't go anywhere, you can kind of bring that good luck and that good mojo for us over here in ACC. So with that, We'll catch you here later on and next week with some more League of Legends action. It's been Mick, and honestly, it's been a pleasure. Sell online tickets directly from your school's website. Scan digital or printed tickets with the Hometown Gate app. And get immediate access to ticket revenue with real-time reporting. At no cost to your school. It's that easy to bring touchless ticketing to your hometown. Hometown. Fast scans, happy fans. What would you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch it.
After far too long, the NECC's loudest, best looking, most prolific casting duo are back. Coach Jim and I are going to take a deep dive today into week one's action as we head to the Scion Challengers division. The Redbird Academy team may hail from a town called Normal. However, they are anything but this team led by team captain Michigan are ready to rock in their season over. They went 3-1 and one in activation play. They know where they want to end up after this game. The only thing in their way is the California State University of Dominguez Hills Toros who are looking to improve on their winless activation period. This team is every bit as hungry. Don't get it twisted. Will the Toros leave their feathered foes in the dust or will the Redbirds soar to victory? We are about to find out. My name is Ethan Dolan, probably better known as Nellhead. And Jim, does it ever feel good to be back? You know, Ethan, you gave me a lot of nice compliments there. You should say something nice about yourself as well. <laughs> I, I, I said we we were the loudest, best looking, most prolific casting duo. So I, I, I don't know why you're giving that. me the royal we, but thank you. Uh, but no. Do you have enough air there after that intro? How long have you been sitting on that intro? It I'm, felt I'm actually like you looking for Ryan Haler actively. Um, yeah. it, it's right there. I, I've got it. I don't know if you remember last or last year we had to use that a few times on cast. Just a few. 
Just uh, a that, few. That's still in the clips. If you don't know, that that is in the clips. But Jim, we we have all night to talk about us. We have all night to catch up. <laughs> all right. Let's talk about the picks and bands. We're moving in here. We did see pro draft happen off screen. We have some opinions here. Some are wrong. Those are all yours. Some are right. Those are mine. Talk to me about this Dominguez Hills composition. Nautilus, Yon, Ezreal, Lee Sin, and Aatrox. You know, I, I have to be wrong because that's my hashtag. Hashtag Coach Jim is wrong. So, of course, Ethan, you know, we got to start it off We're right, up. and I have to be wrong. Uh, is I need to fix my volume. Otherwise, you guys are going to hear the game in the background and not me and, and Ethan. Uh, but, no, I, I like CSUDH's uh, five. Uh, Ethan disagrees with me here. Uh, we're going to be seeing Aatrox in the top lane. We're going to be seeing Lee in the jungle, one in the mid lane, and an Ezreal Nautilus bot lane. And I like that. Personally, I think that's great. Uh, I don't know what problem Ethan has with it, but he's about to tell us. My problem is that all sports in different directions. Nautilus, Aatrox, Ezreal can all team fight pretty well. Yone excels in the skirmish. I, I just don't releasing fits into this comp. I would like the Yone to be a mid laner with some more CC. You pick something like a Malzahar in that role that can isolate a damage dealer from a fight, and then Lee Sin is... I don't know any other jungler like a volley bear fantastic and this is a nice composition that's balanced knows what they are about right now it feels like they're pulling each other all sorts of different directions jim if you move over to redbird academy team this is a team that knows what they're about and they are about fighting late in the game this team is looking to pitch a fight as soon as they hit stick now fight a mumu Blitzcrank, your engagers, Seraphine providing healing and peel for none other than your hyper carry Bane. Yeah, you see, I, I'm still thinking you're going to see Lee Sin come off the flank. Lee Sin going to be jumping over walls out of the jungle, going to use that Q to clear anything in his way. And it, it's going to happen. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. Vayne's a great hyper carry unless she gets absolutely deleted in the first second of the fight. And you're right. They have all the engage in the world, but if your hyper carry gets deleted, your engage doesn't matter. Roll and condemn are just two tools that are so tight in Vayne's kit. I don't see the least in getting on. I'm open to being wrong. It's been known to happen once or twice before. We will see. I really, really enjoy. I don't. I didn't like the Seraphine mid pick, and the, and then we were talking for you. I said unless you fully commit the hyper carry. Look what they've done. They built this team around team fighting, around getting Bane all the scraps at the end of the fight. Everyone on this team is showing up to the feast gym, and they are leaving the scraps, those low health kills for the Vein after the CC's done. Nah, I, I'm going to have to disagree. Like always, I'm going to have to disagree with you here, Ethan, but we shall see. The mid lane could get interesting. Uh, I think Seraphine's going to have to maybe play a little bit safe. Uh, as we, anybody who plays knows, uh, if Yone gets any kind of a lead, the snowball there gets kind of ridiculous. Uh, the 200 years in, in full action there on the Yone, if he gets any kind of a snowball. Yeah, that is definitely true. There is some potential for Yone to carry this game. If you can feast on the Seraphine early, find some rooms to the bot lane, keep that vein in check. There, that, that's like the big out in my mind here for the Toros. I just... Jim, if this game goes late, I don't see a way that an Amumu Malphite comp loses, right? Like, that team fight potential is just so big. You got to think, they are going to have their fingers hovering over those R buttons over the whole course of this game. At some point, it's going to all come together, and it's going to be beautiful mayhem. You know, I you're right. Like, Amumu Malphite is hard to get over, especially when you have a Blitzcrank there just to sit around and just mess with stuff. But remember, you know, you talked about getting rid of a hyper carry. Nautilus's alt is point and click. You can Q and you can condemn all you want, but that alt is going to come find Vayne. And once she's in the air, that's an easy Q for Lee Sin. And once he's in her face, he's hard to get away from. With that being said, Yone can also jump in there. And then you got to remember, they have to kill Aatrox. You have to get rid of the boy Aatrox from the top lane. He doesn't have the CC, but unless he gets re really good at the jung uh, the juggling, not the jungling, but the juggling, a uh, little putting the balls in the air. Uh, but you still have to get rid of him. And his healing, you know, you're going to force people to buy anti-healing items just to take care of the Aatrox. Uh, I, we don't have the poll in chat yet to vote on who's going to win. I was going to put all my bits on one team or the other. I was going to coin flip it, so... 
when that does happen, someone in chat get at me. Let me know. I completely agree. Jim, my big question for you, I've heard of some talk today on this in the League of Legends community. What are your thoughts on GA as an item in the current meta? A lot of people are saying, well, it's face value, it's stats aren't good enough, but in my mind, it's still worth the build in ADCs, especially these hyper carries, because the ability to come back into a fight and set up for an objective after or turn a fight around is just so valuable in my mind. It is, it's valuable if you can get it to work that way. It's valuable if you get killed in the team fight and come back while your team is still alive, that you can come back and deal damage. The problem is, when most people look at GA, your ADC gets picked, their GA goes off, three people sit on their corpse, and then they die a second time, and then their GA's on cooldown. And then they don't have it for the team fight. So if you can keep yourself alive, then yeah, GA in the team fight is great, assuming your team doesn't get wiped when you do. Uh, so conditionally, a great item. I will have to agree with the League of Legends community, though. The stats on it are not great. Face value stats are not great at all. Can I think everyone across the board can agree there. The effect's so powerful though that it's hard to it's hard to add more stats to it, right? Because the effect can be so so game changing. Jim, last time we cast this whole item overhaul, the shop overhaul was brand new. Now that we've had a lot of time to sit on it, how are we feeling about all these crazy changes? I, 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 oh man, the, the only thing I don't like, I like most of it. I like almost all of it. The one thing I don't like is the removal of the jungle items. Mm. Uh, there were a lot of junglers who depended on their jungle item for a specific purpose. Uh, the one that comes to mind personally for me, Shivana. Full AP jungle Shivana built runic echoes to get the echo effect, which is now only available on Ludens, which is a high mana item, and you're not going to buy that on a manaless champion like Shivana. And the echo got you so much extra damage uh, just the, the KDA just, just plummets when you don't have the extra echo. Night Harvester just doesn't keep up with that damage, which is why full AP Shivana not really meta right now, although I probably still play it. With that being said, though, I love the mythic items. I love that you can take them different directions. But I think we're loading in here, so why don't you go ahead and start us off? Let's get hold a quick pause at five seconds so everyone can just get on the same page. I'm at five. I'm paused. Production in my ear. Are we at five? Not yet? All right. Let me know when you get to five, Jim. You pause at five. In the interim, if you are just joining us on the left-hand side of the screen, the blue team will be the Red Bird Academy team with Josh is so cool in the top lane, Michigan in the jungle, Eskimo Lizard in the mid lane, Caramel and TF Wolf on the bot side, C-S-U-D-H, your Toros on the right-hand side of your screen, the red team, Shark Bay in the top lane, Nano Ben 56 in the jungle. I'm going to say Irushin. I think that's a capital I in the mid lane. Chat, correct me if I'm wrong. Alexandro and SRN Jr. on the bot side. Is everyone at five seconds? I'm at five seconds. Production, we at five. We're going to get going in five, four, three, two, one, and go. We've got League of Legends. Coach Jim, we are back with all of the action. It is a good day to be a part of the NECC. It's a great day. A great day to be part of the NECC. Gotta love it when we're back to League of Legends action. Gotta love it indeed. Both teams running in here. Don't want a lot of level one action unless you're the team with the Nautilus. So we're going to see a five-man stack here in Riverbush. We do see the wall built on the other side for the Redbird Academy. Big Big, big move right there. I think I think going five wide is pretty smart, especially when you know you don't have the advantage of level one. Yeah, and it's ironic because usually a Blitzcrank has an advantage level one, but Nautilus with the double root early is just really, really powerful. Super powerful indeed. I, I don't think anything's going to happen here. That, that five stack there, walling it up, is just going to prevent any action. No one venturing in. Smart start by CSUDH to kind of stack up. If anyone tried to ward that middle river bush, they would have found something. Worried about potentially someone being there. They suss it out. We'll get nothing. Everybody backs, and we're going to start in the top side there. Lee Sin going to be asking a uh, for a leash from their Aatrox, I believe. We're just going to slow down the clear a little bit, which is a shame because that, oh, is he just going to solo red? It looks like he's just going to solo red. So this Aatrox should bully Malphite early on, as you see most of the time. Malphite, 
a losing lane into most champs, but the, the late game impact is just so undeniable. You know, Ethan, I just noticed something that both of us missed during the draft, and I would like to change my vote on this game. Okay. L lay it on me. Uh, CSUDH is entirely AD. CSUDH is entirely AD. Jim, I'm, I'm just saying, Red Redbird Academy, they won the draft. I'm, I'm almost certain they're going to win the game. They played so well in the activation period. The Toros have a lot to prove to win this game, Jim. I think they have a lot to prove. You know, they talk a lot about, ooh, TF Wolf here. Might be looking for an early hook. Alexandra's going to be in a little bit of danger. That one, going to split the difference. You know, the Vikings could use someone who could do that at the kicker position. <laughs> I'm going to let that one go. Uh, so, oh, here we go. Early gank. Yeah, Eskimo Lizard going to get ganked there. A little bit of damage on the crackback. Nothing too substantial, Jim. What were you about to say? Uh, nothing. I was... I saw the gank come in. Got a little excited there. Top side action. Not going to be too much. Josh is cool. Big cheese will right there. Going to deal a bit of damage. Does have Arcane Common in his Shark Bay. Oh, my gosh. Josh is cool taking a whole lot of damage. Getting chunked. Shark Bay taking a shark size bite. Uh, Josh is cool. Once again, the purpose of this battle fight top is not to win lane. The purpose is to farm up, have that R ready to rumble, do some damage, set up team fights later on. This Yone going in. You you pointed out, Jim, Eskimo Lizard's going to have a tough time early on. That's kind of a theme here. Yeah, no, every lane is kind of going to have a tough time. They're all playing for late. The question here is, you can, you know, if you're playing for late, you can't just give up lane. Like, if you just absolutely give up in lane, then they're going to be so, so far ahead that your late game might not matter. As you see the, uh, the roam coming up there from the bot lane to help Lee Sin secure that scuttle. That they will. Scuttle so big an objective, getting that river vision early on. And top side scuttle going blue way. Bot side scuttle going red way. Rushin going in here, doing a little bit of damage to Eskimo Lizard. I'm, I'm ready to see TF Wolf go for a hook on this bot side. I mean, both sides having those hooks early on. That blitz hook just a little, a little bit more of a hook. You know, Nautilus drags himself towards the opponent as well. The bot side aggression is either going to be huge or they're going to realize that both sides have hooks and they're going to play very, very safe and nothing's going to happen. The hook advantage is definitely with Redbird Academy, just because if Nautilus hooks and comes in, Blitzcrank can counter hook and pull him further in under tower. So a Nautilus hook is going to have to be just an absolute certainty of a kill. Otherwise, I don't think we're going to see one early. Yes, yeah, so we're going to see a bit of a scuffle here at the top side. Josh is cool. Going to take a little bit of damage. Clap back a little bit there on Shark Bay. So Josh is cool. Standing up for themselves. Getting some solid farm right there. Ground pound. Just keeping up levels with Shark Bay despite taking some damage. Not winning in most of these trades. Only down 6 CS. So big upset out on the top side. Michigan going in. Nano there in the vicinity. Michigan, this probably does not end well. Second bandage toss going back in. Seraphine responding over. Big flash over the wall and will get out without a scuffle. No kills yet in this one. Uh, big flash, though, being burned there as uh, a Mumu without flash not quite as deadly. Yeah, absolutely true, especially when a Mumu does hit six. Not that close yet. May have flashed back up. By the time they want to gank for the first time. We'll see. First drag going to go over to the red side here. The better early jungler, Lee Sin, expected to get this first drag. And they do just that. Playing to their strength. You know, it's an infernal that's going to help them. That's extra damage, which they're going to need. Talking about the farm, though. Let's talk about Vayne in the bot lane out farming that Ezreal. Uh, Alexandro, just too much help. Helping out too much on the map. Missing a couple of waves. So he might uh, he might be in trouble against that Vayne who has an extra item on him. Absolutely, that Vayne in the bot side packing a little bit of extra punch. Josh is cool here on the top side going up against Shark Bay. Shark Bay obviously doing a bit more damage in this matchup. Both pretty even items. You notice the armor build that Bramble Vest is going to help in the sustained fights. So Josh is cool nearing that level six that are not just for starting team fights can also take an unsuspecting top laner victim. Although you probably want to bait out Shark Base ulti first. Not sure if you're winning the fight through that ulti. We know how strong World Ender is. Now, pings coming out here is everybody looking at the bot lane right now. Both junglers down there. Everybody kind of hovering around that tri bush. It looks like Lee Sin 
uh, that's Nano Ben Fifty Six is just gonna take the scuttle and then keep moving. I and it looks did, like actually. Yes, everybody kind of rotated by, and then everybody kind of just walked away. So it got really interesting. <laughs> Once again, oh, is that hook's gonna miss? Once again, it's kind of this thing of you have a hook, we have a hook. When when it when it starts, it's it's going down. But who's gonna throw that first punch is the real question. We know the boxing match is ensuing. We just have to wait and see how it starts. No kills on the board. Seven minutes into this one. Not to say that it hasn't been a good one. Redbird Academy building a small goldie, but it's all pretty negligible at this point, especially considering the first drag did go the way of the Toros. That Infernal Drake going to give them a bit extra punch on their abilities and autos. Josh is cool. Did hit six there on the top side. That's going to be big moving forward. As we hit six across the map here, I am expecting the Redbirds to start fighting. The Redbirds are going to want to fight. Like I said, we still will not see a Nautilus hook come out unless the Redbird bot lane pushes forward. Nautilus is not going to put himself anywhere near that bot lane turret. They don't want to accidentally give a kill over to that vein. Especially first blood kill over that vein. That extra gold is so key as we talk about this mid game and the strong team fights that are going to ensue. Josh is cool, getting that wave push under tower, as is the bot side here for the Tauros. Taking a quick survey of the farm, vein 69 farm to Ezreal's mere 53. Big lead right there, going to back. Already has the Noon Quiver building into their Mythic item. Ha kept the door in blade. Has the Long Sword. Dagger for a little bit of attack speed. And not one, not two, but three biscuits for both Seraphine, Bane, and Blitzcrank. This is a team that knows how to eat. As Pink's coming through, watch the mid lane here, Jim. Watch that Lee Sin. And I'm Nautilus. watching Lee Sin. I'm watching the Nautilus as well. But the thing to remember is Nautilus roamed up. Ezreal's getting solo XP down to the bot lane. Oh. And he had a full wave there. There's the hook we were looking for. But he had a full Flash. wave down there unopposed, so he he closed that uh, that farm gap in the bot lane. Flashes burned, abilities tossed out, and at the end of the day, Squid Lizard all fine. And here is Mitch again. Oh, ugh, at least it comes in. There's the ulti. This sad mummy is spreading the sadness. Jim, you know nothing quite helps a bad mood like spreading it. Amumu is through. First blood being handed over to the bandage toss legend Michigan. That was, that was really a, a great gank there from the Amumu. Uh, the ultimates coming out of both the mid laner and the jungler there. Uh, perfect coordination, and somebody was dying. I can't believe they didn't get two. Yeah, Lee Sin just a little too quick on the retreat there. TF Wolf looking for a hook over the wall here. Something a little cheeky. Won't find it. There's the W. Oh, hook coming in. Junior finally starts off the hook party. Carmel going through. Blitzkrieg hook misses. Carmel... Just chunking Junior right here. There's a condemn into the wall. Ezra ulti. TB coming to the bot side. Oh, TF Wolf ults. Flashes. Junior so low. Hooks in. Finds the vein. Carmel might go down. Josh is cool. Big ulti on the backside. Shark Bay continues the fight. Picks up a kill. Josh is cool fighting on the backside in the 1v3. Alexandro, you gotta be out of there or you're just fine. Josh is cool flashing the Q right into the back for the last kill. Both teleports. Both uh, teleports from the top laners used there. I I think that uh, Redbirds lost that one. You know, they got the first kill, but the Aatrox came down with the World Ender and did exactly that, ended the world for the majority of the Redbird team. Yeah, it did look solid for the Redbirds. The teleport coming through was big. Good ulti coming through. Pretty even game, Jim. I mean, 300, 400 gold. Swinging in the way of the Redbirds right now. Still down a drag. Second drag on the board. If you are, if you are indeed the Tauros, excuse me, their mind slipped me, their name slipped my mind for a second. You're trying to get this drag because you know you fall off, especially in team fights, right? You know that you're going to start to fall off. So we're just we're just trying to find advantage here in the early game for the Tauros. You know, what's really important there is that three assists for each of the bot laners or CSUDH, only one apiece for the Redbirds. Uh, that money got to be well spent. And then getting Aatrox on two kills is huge. Uh, he's going to yeah. be able to do some work. Aatrox with that second kill. As he said, already a shutdown goal. Going to be an absolute beast there. Already a level up on Josh's cool. Josh's cool doesn't really have any interest in fighting, especially without that ulti. Michigan here on the bot side going to be backing. 
not doing a whole tunnel. Might just stick around. They may have a little something cooking in the pan here on the bot side. Shark Bay going in. We're just farming, doing it so well. But Josh is cool, flipping the script and dipping the chip here. Shark Bay, got to run. They both have ulti available right now. Josh is cool, going to let that one go. And I think that's a good move. He didn't know where Lee Sin was. He didn't want to get baited into a Lee Sin gank. I, I really like what Mumu's doing here. I don't think he's going to back here. Watch a move play for the second drag. Tio Wolf positioning well, getting rid of wards. This you got to be careful here if you're the Toros. You don't want to hook. The whole squad is here. Second bandage Joss could come through. Nano Beast ganking the hook to come in. Oh, the counter hook! Oh, what an ulti from the Amumu! Nano Ben gonna go down the blink of an eye. Teleport coming through. Junior not long for this world. Carmel picked up that kill. It is a double, and it should be a free drag for them. And that's just huge right there for that Vayne to get two kills. A great use of ultimates again there. Amumu just using his ultimate to cancel out the uh, Lee Sin coming in. Uh, so just great use of the ultimate. Great save of the ultimate. Didn't uh, use it too soon. And you can see right there just the, the power of double bandage. Um, and without the top laners being able to come down. But that might be a rift though. This might be a sneaky rift here for CSUDH a sneaky rift but you see Malphite maybe responding on the top side there they're going to have to go pretty quick I, I think they have uh, this is this is a sneaky right rift there. it's gonna fall right into their lap there shouldn't be any reason they don't complete this one yeah no one in the same zip code easy rift on the top side for the Toros that's gonna help them recoup some of this value as they're nearly trailing 2k gold right now and you know Malphite doesn't have teleport if Leeson takes that in the next like couple of seconds he can go drop it in the top lane they could possibly get three plates it looks like he's get gonna it. stop and looks like he's gonna stop and grab scuttle. He did get it. No, he didn't stop for scuttle. He's going mid lane with it. They're gonna push out yeah, Seraphine. It drops it. They're gonna try to get this it. mid lane pushed down. That way Yone can roam. Michigan in the vicinity though. Watch out for this. No ulti available right now. So curse the sad moment uh -oh. not up. Nano Ben rotating yeah, but three. around. There's three here. That is not Ooh. a fight that he wants. Michigan does not want that fight. Not without the ulti, that is for sure. But Rift dropped it, takes some plates. That's the intended goal. Dies before they can do much else. Not too bad of a use of Rift. You cut into that gold beat a decent amount. It's looking closer to 1K than 2K now. Shark Bay in the top side, still doing work against Josh is cool. Josh is cool. Clapping back, doing well for Malphite. So many pings on the bot side. No one's sure what's going on. Are they gonna go in? Are they not? The Toros, they're looking for some action. They're, they're spotting out the wards, but it's just a 2v2. And I don't think they're stronger right now with the shield bow being built on Bane. And that is an interesting call there for your hyper carry to go shield bow. It's an interesting call. If you're looking Especially for a hyper carry. Protection. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 that this would be a Kraken game. If I'm a Vayne player right now, I'm going, oh my God, I'm, this is the secret service. This is the secret service comp for Vayne. And why she didn't go Kraken, I will never know. Well, maybe we will find out as the game unfurls for now. You're, you're absolutely right. I think Kraken may have been the move here. I want to say that we're going to see some topside action in here soon. Josh is cool in Shark Bay, Jim. They've kind of just been going at it. Some little brawls. Nothing has come of it. I feel like something is building up there on the top side. Something definitely cooking up top. Oh, I oh there's a great hook. hook. Alti, Alexander alts out. Junior, alt in response. There's the Ezra Alti. Hitting the jungle on the backside as well. Junior taking some damage. They both should be fine. Watch out. Aatrox does have teleport available, as does Josh. It's cool. This has potential to turn into a, a, a 3v3, 4v4. Both junglers in the vicinity. So we'll see what happens here. But just know, both tops have teleport right now. Junior, Alexandro playing behind the tower. Wolf, I, I got to give in. that up. Just give it up. Just leave it. Oh, that could They're get not interesting. Going to. Here's the hook. Wolf. Flashing just out, walk, and the out. teleport's coming through. There's Shark in the backside. Oh, they've wandered into a massacre. Welcome to the bloodbath. I hope you brought your swimsuits. Down goes Michigan. Tia Wolf next on the chopping block, or are they? Josh is cool, going to alt out, but they end up getting two kills. Uh, and I believe that's two for nothing right there. And they just got to watch out in that mid lane. Seraphine in the mid lane doing work. I would stay. You have a five stack. Stay for first tower. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Is Seraphine going to try to get first tower here? She is going to burn mana here to push this wave. 
She's so close to having first tower, which would be a lot of gold that they could deny to CSUDH. I don't know if she's too worried about burning mana. Has two hundred. Oh, she's gonna walk away! Mana. No, she's gonna walk oh, away too. Oh my god! Neither neither team wants first tower gold, Jim. They're, they're both looking at other and saying, "Ah, yeah, you you can have that. Oh, you can have it." Oh my god! And that tower was so close. Oh my goodness! Uh, another Drake coming up. Uh, so that's gonna get interesting here. Another Drake coming up. Less yeah, than 45 seconds. On the horizon, and it's going to be a win, Drake. We will have win soul here this game. Sharkbait going in. Josh Cool taking a bit of damage right there. A lot of pings once again on the bot side. I love how vocal these two teams are, Jim. And in the past, we've seen a lot of teams that don't ping a whole ton. You know what? Even if I'm on comms view, I still want pings. I want to physically see it on the map. I agree. Uh, something I noticed right here in the scoreboard, uh, Malphite, uh, Josh School, the only, per the only, I'm sorry, neither support has their mythic, but uh, he he doesn't have his mythic yet, and Shark Bay has their mythic. It is the uh, the Gore Drinker, so that could be uh, big in a in a one v one fight in the top lane. Could be big indeed. As uh disconnect, games been paused. We're on the same page here, and we're back. Yeah, cool, cool. I think we're all cool. Jim, you with us? Yeah, I'm still here. Sounds great. Production said same page. I believe I just got the yep, yep. So we're oh, good. Drag is and that's attacked. a free drag. That's yeah, just a free drag right there. Drag is oh. going down. That's I going have. Down. Is everybody else? Uh... Yeah. Okay. We all we all pause. We all glitch. Are you frozen at 18? I'm frozen at 18. I'm frozen at 18. And all right. So I don't know what the glitch is there. I don't know. I think, yeah, I think uh, Mr. Seven, Producer. 7, 1808, we all on the same page here? <laughs> I, I, you know what? I'm glad you got to check it on Gemini's game face there for just a moment. But we are right back in the thick of things. Um, setting up some that kind of... That is an ambush. Let me tell you. Trap on the bot side, yeah? That is an ambush right there. I don't know what they're waiting for, but that is an ambush. They could just be trying to take the blue buff, maybe. But I, 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 a lot of lag going on here. Uh oh yeah. Uh oh. The, uh oh. The latency uh -oh. This game. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh no. I rooted going in here top side with Shark Bay. Big ulti coming through. It might not be enough. I rooted coming through. Lots of damage. Hopping through Nano Ben. Not gonna get it done. A Moomoo there for the backup, but they should be able to push down this tower if they want to. No wave, I suppose. Michigan is in the vicinity. Nothing's gonna happen there. Tia Pool looking for a hook on the bot side. Not gonna find it. First bandage toss coming through. Just clearing waves. And uh, I like that play there. I really like that play there in the top lane. Uh, push Josh's cool back one more time. Uh, the money has evened up. Like, as we've been talking, even though the, the last Drake went to the Redbirds, the money evened up. Uh, so we have a, a flat game here, and you got a 3 0 Aatrox to worry about in the top lane. Reno Aatrox indeed working on their second item. As you noted earlier, already has that Gore Drinker. Such a strong, strong item. We're going to see if that's used to great effect. Hook coming through. Ooh, that comes pixel shy right there. TPs are what I'm looking at here, Jim. Shark Bay, Josh is cool. Both on cooldown right now. But when they're up, we've seen both players use them to great effect. And we just saw a ping there at the Rift Herald. So that it came from uh, the Redbird. So we could be looking at a rotation here, maybe a mass migration up to the Rift Herald. Uh, and that one's going to be harder for them to take since it is buried away on the CSUDH side of the river. Yeah, we'll be a little bit more tough just being the blue team there. The Toros going to be able to contest from back a bit, but it's going to be gone. It's irrelevant. Baron now spawn. They were just picking like, ah, oh, do we have time? Probably not. They don't do anything about it. 20 minutes in this game. We're nine kills, Dreep, three dragons, and Jim, it's a close one. It is a close one. I'm looking at some of the, uh, oh, okay, there's nothing's going to happen. I'm looking at some of the incidentals here. Look at how much vision, look at how much money has been placed around the dragon pit for the Redbirds. Yeah, a, a whole lot. Three pink wards in the vicinity right there. Uh, one lonely ward on the backside is they're going to set up for drag here. Two minutes to go, and they're going to clear out vision. I like this play. Very, very preemptive. They're getting all of those pink wards out. They're not only just giving you vision. They're also going to get some residual gold from that. A little bit of incidental gold. And at least since on the bot side, they may have potential for a gank here. 
A Mumu looking mid though, and that mid tower did fall. While we were talking, that mid tower fell. So first tower went to Seraphine. Who would have thought Seraphine getting it done there in the mid lane? That's what happens when Leon is MIA, ganking, roaming, and such. A lot of pings on the bot side here. Um, trying to figure out the Redbirds are. Where are the junglers? Where's the mid laner? Uh, they, they know they're probably somewhere in the area. Dreg is coming up here in just about a minute and some change. Irushin may be caught out here. Dash is away. Jim, how many years? 200. 200. 200 of them, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Gets out of the way. They're continuing to push these waves up. Both teleports on the top side are up. Jim, minute till drag. What do you think is going to happen? I think Aatrox is looking for an ambush, but he's going to walk away when he uh, didn't get it. Uh, Aatrox was sitting river bush. He's going to go hit the, uh, the vision cone. He's got to be careful, though, because if Amumu turns around, and Amumu's not going to. So I was I keep looking at the top lane. The top lane is going to be very important. Uh, and I'm also looking at the fact that uh, not enough armor being purchased on the side of uh, the Redbirds. This is a build armor win game, and uh, I'm looking to see more of it. I, I think you're right. We do have Sunfire Ages purchased on two champs, uh, two plated. Uh, yeah, but that's... Uh, that's that's what they're gonna buy regardless. There, I'm I'm looking for extra. Those, those champions are gonna buy that no matter what. Yeah, you're right. I, but Blitz also does have a bramble vest already, so gotta think that Blitz is also building some armor heavy items here. Top side is that new? Bit of a scuffle. I, I, I think, think that's so. new. I think that's new. It's it's still shiny. Still got that new uh, new new smell to it. A <laughs> little bit. A little bit. Bob All right, side. they're setting up for drag. It, it, it's heating up. We do see some vision cleared. Very impressed by the Redbirds, what they're doing to get them off point. And it looks like it might be a free drag. They've settled uh, on the not mid free. tower instead. Yeah, they're going to trade for mid tower. They might go for two. Oh, they, they might get for the Malphite on the top side. I don't think they're going for two, Jim. They're going for a kill. They see yep. a mountain, and they want to bring it to its knees. Here comes the gank to the top side. The cavalry is coming in. Irushin, Shark Bay, and here is the jungle on the bottom half. We're going to see if anything comes to this. It, it doesn't look like it for the Let's time Let's crank being. running. Let's crank is running to get up there. Lee Sin's a man without a country at the moment. And they're not going to be able to get that top tower. They all backed up. They had vision. They knew the Blitz crank was there. Good thing they did see the Blitzkrank. Might have been a disaster if they won without that vision. They trade the dragon for the mid tower. Oh, Blitzkrank still going in. Gonna find a hook here. This is gonna be one. That's a pick. Nautilus. Flash that, comes no, through. Not a, they no. Oh, and all oh my God. Riot Games. You can't give a Mumu two bandages. You can't do it. It's busted. You can't do it. <laughs> You can't get away from him now. You just can't get away from him now. There's no counterplay. Speaking of having no counterplay. Speaking of having no counterplay, indeed. Yo, they're in the mid lane looking to find the ADC. Doesn't quite get any piece of that vein. Alexandra farming here in the mid lane against Eskimo Lizard. TF Wolf coming just for the backup. Booba being taken by Michigan on the top side. And Sharkbait continues to push in. It's going to have a big wave. It's going to be tough to deny Sharkbait Tower, and they're just going to give it here. There's I, nothing that can be done. I think you have to give that tower. Uh, the only problem is now uh, Sharkbait can go do whatever he wants. A uh, roaming yeah. he will be. They call him the Wanderer. Um, uh, we are one second ahead here, Jim. I say we pause at uh, 2508. Does that sound good? Sure. All right, production, we're on 2508. Shoot me a DM when you want us to resume. How far ahead were we? I guess a second or two. 2508 is our pause. Production just... Uh... All right, we're all there we go. once again on the same page. We appreciate chat staying patient with us. This is week number one. We're fresh out of the activation period. We are just warming up our voices and warming up our spectator clients. So got a long season ahead of us to figure out all of the kinks in the hose for the time being the redbirds trying to find this soul here jim big win con for them as a team that wants to play in the lake game he's so big to get that speed boost off your ultimates they all are cc based and being able to get the cc whoa whoa and then ethan run, ethan so baron baron 
Oh, you're absolutely right. Baron call right here. It's so early. 25 minute Baron. Baron's a newborn. Be gentle. Be kind. But they will do no such That's free. thing. That's free. Wow. And now they're going to go take top tower. That's an astounding call by the Redbirds. More astounding that there's no vision on that. Come on. As a result, they're going to grab that bot side tower. Leeson may be rotating down here. They may try to get two of them. They're not. Nautilus is going to back. Yon, Lee Sid continue pushing the bot side. Lots of backs coming there. They get one tower on the top. They're backing. They don't want to lose too much base here on the bot side. That they do not. Uh, about between one and a half and 2,000 gold up. We're starting to get to a point, though, where 2,000 gold is not that big of an advantage. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The margins are so thin that it doesn't really matter. And... Jim, I just got to say it again, the longer this game goes on, the longer, or the more the Redbirds have to be favored, right? They're going to find that lucky team fight. They're going to find that engage where everything works right, where everyone presses their R buttons in unison, and they, they just get a free ace. You know, you got to think it's going to happen eventually. I'm just looking at all the tricks that you could play if you're CSUDH right now. World Ender, not so much a trick, just a, hey, come get me button. But Lee Sin coming over walls, Yone dashing 16 times, Ezreal being able to blink around, and Nautilus, with that ultimate, able to say, nope, don't group up, because everybody's going to end up in the air. The only thing better on a Nautilus salt than uh, being able to put people in the air is if you would have had a Yasuo instead of a Yone. Yeah, would have liked Yasuo here. Would have been a lot of damage. Bit of a scuffle here. Michigan caught out. Here comes Carmel. All thing in. Tries to find the condemn. Doesn't get it. There's all from Seraphine. Carmel picks up the first kill of this scuffle. Irushin on the backside. Carmel might be in a bit of trouble. Or it's Irushin who's in trouble. Eskimo Lizard gets the kill. Alexandro has to watch out. He's all the damage in this fight. Shark Bay in the thick of it. Goes down. Shut down. Goal to Josh's ghoul. Alexandro, the last one alive. You have to be exceedingly careful here. They get the first tower. Oh, the flash in. There's the hook. Alexandro running away from TF. Full. Going to get out here. Big flash by Alexandro to stay alive. But they're going to get the inhibitor. And these Redbirds are not going to be denied, Jim. You know, it's just unfortunate there. They might I, I didn't like... I did. They're, oh, they're going to try. Here's the hook. They might echo for the end here. All these coming through. Oh, my gosh. Down goes Blitzcrank, but it doesn't really matter. Alexandro, the last one up. There's the bandage toss. Do we get the second one? We don't, but they don't even need it. Game number one goes to the Redbirds. I told you, they may come from a town named Normal in Illinois, but this team is anything but. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to what I was saying. Riot, you can't give a Mumu two Qs. You can't double up the bandage toss. Are you kidding me? Nautilus escapes right there nautilus yeah. escapes without that second bandage toss if nautilus escapes they don't re-engage they just walk away and we're still commentating this game you're absolutely right what a massive chain of events there nautilus not getting out turns into some team fights later on and all of a sudden all you've got is ezra in 1v5 situation couldn't do anything we said it was going to happen right we said they were finally going to find that fight where everything worked together well they found that fight. They didn't get the ace, but you know what? Four was good enough. And I'm going to say it, and I know we don't like saying negative things, but I'm going to say it. Alejandro not making the best use of Ezreal alt in those fights. In fact, yeah. I, I, I think I saw him alt four times, and he altered like right at the start of fights. And that's really not what you want to be doing with that. That's one of those, hey, Kobe, walk away, watch the explosion in the background. Yeah, I think they definitely had numbers on some engages, and the alt at the beginning kind of scared off the opposition, so they couldn't effectively bait them into fights. They didn't take their time, right? Sometimes you got to slow roll your abilities, Jim. Sometimes you have to be a patient, uh, j just a master of patience, right? You have to wait on those abilities. It's not always best to toss them all out at first. We saw it in that game. We saw the Redbirds dominate, dominate the last, I mean, from their Baron take to the end. It was a great call. If you're the Toros, you need to have better communication. You need a ward on Baron. You need to ban a Mumu. <laughs> we are going to see a Mumu get banned first ban in game two. I'm telling you right now, first ban for CSUDH will be a Mumu. <laughs> Ooh, I, I, don't, I don't think you're wrong. Um... Either that or they'll pick it. They either It's a pick or ban.
it, it has to be Picker, man. It's so strong. Right? People are even running at support with pretty high win rates in this meta. Oh, I mean, it, it, he's it's, insane. It's bad. It's it's not bad. It's good. But Riot is bad. Riot, look at me. Look at me, Riot. Get rid of the double Q. Get rid of it. To, to all of the to all of the Riot employees that are obviously tuned in to the most popular collegiate League of Legends stream, we welcome you. Hey, uh, we're good people at, here, Ethan. We're good people. At the, at the bequest of Jim, please, please. Remove the remove the double bandage. One yeah. band-aid is enough for most wounds. You know what's really bad is that this is the patch that's going to Worlds. Yeah. He's going to have double Q at Worlds. He, he is going to have double. He, he is. I mean, that that's that's just all there is to it here, Jim. Uh, I, I think our producer was saying he's got uh, an intermission for us, though. So, Ethan, I, I, do you want to take us right. away? So, Little little quick break. When we join you on the other side, we're going to have game number two of this series. Don't head anywhere. We'll be right back.
and we're back headed into game number two the pro draft has just finished which means we're about to get into the real thing once again i believe that the red birds have out drafted the toros but jim you're coming at me with an alternative take let me hear it oh yeah i'm coming at you i almost came at you off stream and i decided to wait to come at you on stream what did you say csudh needed in game one what did you say they needed a comp a goal they, they, they were pulling each other all different ways it felt like their, their composition had no unity before you said that though off stream you told me csudh needs crowd control and i'm they looking did. at a jarvin I'm looking at an Orn, and I'm looking at a Syndra. Jinx a little bit on the side, but Jarvin, Orn, and Syndra, that's the crowd control you need right there to get work done. I think this comp is very good. <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. We know how strong Mumu is. We saw how good Seraphine was. Mundo plus Galio. I mean, there's just so many ways for this vein to survive. The front line is so big. I, I think it's going to be hard for CSUDH to get onto the back line. I know they've got the Jarvin. I know they've got the Ornhorn coming down Main Street, but uh, I, I don't know, Jim. I, th I think it's going to be tough for them still. It's going to be interesting, though. Uh, I believe, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, I believe on this patch, Soraka Ultimate gets rid of Grievous Wounds. I think you're right. I, I, I think I think that is in the recent patch. Someone in chat will no doubt correct us if we're right or wrong, but I believe you are correct. And that's going to be massive. It's going to be massive. It gets rid of Grievous Wounds, but who is what? Why are you building Grievous Wounds to counter? Jinx, Syndra, Orn, Jarvan. Oh, Soraka. I, Soraka. I don't, don't, don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. I'm sorry, Ethan. Who are you building? Yeah, Soraka. You're building long it to counter Soraka. Off season, ladies and gentlemen. I forgot the Soraka heal for just a second there. I forgot her whole kit. I think you're right. Yeah. Those Grievous Wounds. Um, the other thing you're forgetting here is that you like that Galio. Do you know where that Galio is going? Support. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a support. I, it I, could be Seraphine support. Seraphine's going mid again. Eskimoid was too good in that Seraphine mid last game in I'm what I saying. believe is a losing matchup to not run it back. That Galio's going support. The bot lane is beefy, baby. They got cake for days down there. Yeah, but why would you put Galio support when you could put a mid lane against the Syndra where his shield actually matters? The shield Duran is good in the mid lane. I... I mean, and I guess that is true because then the alt goes more places. I mean, we're about to have it settled for us right here, but I have a feeling it's going to be the Seraphine again. I'm just saying, his alt's better from mid lane, his shield's better. Well, I don't like that. I don't like it. Well, I don't like it. I don't have to like it, though. You, you don't have to like it. You only have to put up with the results. MF ban right there. I like that a lot, yeah, uh, yeah. looking back on things. I, I, I just think that once again the redbirds did get Bane. you don't see that yet at home but they did get Bane. i i just think it was too strong last game the, the hyper carry was so good the front line you called it the bodyguard comp i, I like that a lot we've got some beef up front Bane it's, it's going to have an easy time if they play this composition correctly there's some beef up front but you got to remember a lot of their engage now gets canceled by soraka silence is golden my friend silence is golden Amumu is going to tell you that duct tape is silver, but Soraka is going to tell you that silence is golden. I don't know. It, it was looking that duct tape looked like gold last game. I'm I'm not going to lie to you. It, it looked very very good. It looks good until silence comes out and he can't use any other abilities. Yeah, it, let's and, remember and that is true. When he bandages in, if Soraka drops the silence, his ultimate doesn't go off. All of a sudden, wait a minute, everybody can still move. And if a move doesn't get out the way, he's going to get caught in that root. And all of a sudden, he's rooted in a silence field, and he's going to find out that's not a field he wants to sit in. Jinx is going to throw the traps underneath him. Cinder's going to, you know, uh, scatter the weak. There's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot coming down on that man. And not only do they have crowd control this game, but CSUDH also has AP. They were dreadfully missing AP in the last one. And I think that Eskimo Lizard got outplayed by Erosin, and I think on a mage, it could get real interesting. Doesn't have to dive, can throw the damage from a safe distance. I think it gets really interesting in the mid lane, and I'm really excited to see the Ornn top lane. I wanted to see Ornn in game one. We saw the Aatrox, and don't get me wrong, I liked the Aatrox, but I wanted Ornn in game one. We're going to see him in game two. I, I love the Ornn. I love him in the top lane. 
the Ornn is a great pick, and I, I will say the Toros did pick a lot better this game, Jim. You're just putting so much pressure on Junior in the bot lane. They're playing Soraka, right? Uh, uh, the crux of the comp came down to, well, she can silence, and Soraka can heal, and all of these things, but that's putting a lot of pressure on the Soraka to perform for the rest of the team, because if that doesn't happen, double bandage toss, curse of the sad bummy is going to be massive. Uh, Dr. Mundo is, is always going to be just an annoying threat, and Galio has a lot of great targets, right? And Mumu gets right in the thick of things, boom, pop that R. Mundo gets in the thick of things, boom, hero's entrance. It's going to be a lot closer of a game. I feel like the comps are a lot more evenly matched. I still like the Redbirds just a tish more. It's going to be a much closer game, but not only for the silence. Remember, they're going to have healing now. You got the Soraka ultimate. You got Soraka's W. You got Starfall to throw some damage in there while she's not healing everyone. You're not going to be able to burst them down like you did in game number one. There was a lot of burst coming out in game one. People popping like balloons at a party. Soraka's going to make sure that doesn't happen here in game number two. What kind of, what kind of parties do you go to where they pop the balloons? Are they, you just kind of leave them inflated, in my opinion. No, man, you, 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 you get the darts out, you you know, like a carnival game, you pop the balloons. All right, all right, so a carnival, not, not necessarily a party. I was oh, no. imagining... Oh, no, dude, I've done that at birthday... Maybe you're, you're just at the wrong be, birthday you're just parties. Be tossing darts around the yard. With, you're with at the wrong around. birthday parties, my man. You got to you got to find you, some better birthday parties. Coach Jim, you are at the cookout at the birthday party backyard, balloons on the lawn, and you're just hurling darts. That's man, I, we'll talk later. You're at the wrong parties. We'll talk later. All right, all right. Maybe <laughs> maybe, maybe we've all got to take a trip to Upper Iowa University and party with Coach Jim. Oh no, this is this is family parties back in Peoria, Illinois. Okay, uh, you know what? Even even closer to me. Even closer. Sounds great. Even closer. <laughs> toss toss the invite. I'm excited for the day. I get to sling some darts with Coach Jim. Till then, I think all we're going to see is a Mumu and Jarvin slinging out and throwing their mobility everywhere. You got bandage shots. You got flag stabs. These two junglers are going to be all over the place, Jim. I'm expecting a lot of creative ganks. I'm ex. I'm actually not expecting a lot of creative ganks. I think this game is going to be a lot more by the book. Uh, there's not as much uh, joie de vivre in this one. This is more of a standard comp on both sides. Uh, the one thing that might get a little bit tricksy is the Galio, being able to jump around a little bit. But otherwise, this is a very front-loaded comp on both sides. You know who their carries are going to be. You know who they're going to be protecting. I don't think we're going to see as much in the trickery department. There's not as much what? Excuse me? Uh, I, I, I was trying to sound good, so joie de vivre. W what so, is that? It, it's French for a word I can't come up with that I'm trying to sound cool. <laughs> you no, know, I, I think it's actually, it's actually French for, you know, that's something you can't quite put your finger on. A certain, mm. uh, you know, joie de vivre. Yeah, it's a certain you know? something. Okay. It's, a, right. it's I, a little I, something, something. A little, I, I, a I took salt. German. Not French, so I, I don't know much about the romantic languages. I just want to make sure I don't. I, I took make sure I was on the same page. I took Spanish and Italian, and uh, I I just like saying joie de vivre. It's it's fun to say. I mean, those are two romantic languages. It makes sense. They are. Very, they you're are. a very romantic guy. I I, I mean I, I like the, I like listening to French. Uh, if you ever watched uh, Matrix Revolutions, the Merovingian speaking about French, I can't make the quote because we're on a family friendly stream. But uh, it's it's a fun quote about uh, the language of French and how nice it sounds. All right. We're going to take a quick pause at 10 seconds here, ladies and gentlemen. Just make sure we all get on the same page. We don't want any funkiness with the time. But, Jim, you're going to be taking us away this game. Yeah, no. Ethan's going to you know finally stop talking and let me get a word in edgewise here. Uh, I love you, Ethan. I love you. Nothing wrong with Ethan. I love Ethan's you, a great guy. Jim. It's been It's been far too long. Far too long. Uh, Mr. Producer, I think we're all at 10 seconds. Whenever you're ready, count us down. All right, so here we go. Uh, this one is going to be CSUDH coming from the bottom left. Uh, going uphill, as I like to say, uh, which means that the Redbirds will be coming downhill from the top right. And uh, let's go ahead and see here. It looks like five point for both teams. So nobody really looking to do anything cheeky here. Uh, which goes ahead to my prediction of less trickeration going on in this one. But just a five point from everybody. It looks like uh, maybe an early ward. Nope. Saw Galio thinking about backing. I thought maybe it was an early ward, but looks like he was just hitting the button because he likes to see the animation. Uh, God knows I like to see the animation sometimes. 
Oh yeah, I, I've got uh, I've got that Hextech Alistar. I saved up those gemstones, grinded out some passes. I feel that one hundred. Oh, Hextech Swain, all the way, baby. Hextech Swain. I almost got it. I've got I've got six gemstones, Jim. I'm on the grind as Eskimo Lizard out and back. And did you know that was a level seven Seraphine? Did you see that last game? I did. Go I did. Go. I, I'm just saying, Eskimo Lizard on the Seraphine. I was very impressed. Got outplayed by the Yon, obviously, but that's an that's a matchup where you're expected to be outplayed. They still got first really? tower last game. That was so impressive. Really, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the vein, the vein who actually hard carried. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna go with the vein on that last one. Uh, Orn maybe. Oh, taking a, a, a cleaver to the face for their efforts there, getting the ward down but dropping a little bit of health over to the Mundo. Uh, we see both junglers starting on the bot side. Both of them getting a decent. We're gonna see uh, which bot lane will get to lane first. I think it's gonna be about a draw there. In the top side, fighting already going on. Josh is cool, getting the better end of the duel at the moment. So a reversal of what we saw in game one, but Orn not quite the duelist that Aatrox is. So we'll take a look. And this time it's Corrupting Pots on Shark Bay and the shield potion combo for Josh's cool. So the top laner is just kind of switching up what they're doing. Uh, Orn trying to find there. He goes, finally finds his first farm there as a bit of an early gank coming in here in the mid lane. And uh, got the flash. And got to take uh, Nano Band 56 on the Jarvan. But uh, I think taking a little bit of damage is definitely worth getting the flash out of Eskimo Lizard on the Seraphine. Cinder can now uh, really play aggressively into that, knowing that they have a defensive move and Seraphine does not. Uh, in the bot lane, much more even to start off with here. As the fighting continues in the top lane. And the camera is going back and forth as the fighting is everywhere at the moment. The first game, a little bit slow. This one, pick it up pace early and often. Yeah, getting that flash to mid lane, definitely worth it. Something to note here on the items that Syndra did opt for minion dematerializers. That's usually indicative of a laner that is trying to push in waves fast and roam. So watch out for the Syndra to be bot side um, early and often as soon as you hit six. I would be strolling on down there. There's so much you can do once you do get that unleashed power. Now, uh, bot side or top. They could go top too. Uh, making sure that the Mundo doesn't get started early could be big. You see Mundo already backed, got himself with a Ruby Crystal for the little extra health. Galio going in hard, though. Amumu coming in, misses the bandage, and the first blood going to go to Vayne as Soraka gets deleted. And there's that Vayne we are talking about. This is why I love the comp so much. It just felt like Vayne could carry so much more, and especially being played by Caramel. Alexandra, as we noted, didn't have their finest appearance on Ezreal last game. We're going to see how much better they do on Jinx. Less mobility does have the CC coming through with the Chompers. All still pretty versatile, right? Still global, still can take objectives. So we'll see how Alexander does, but so impressed by Carmel last performance. Oh, yeah. And getting the vein, the ver first blood, extra money on the vein. That's your hyper carry. Uh, and, you know, going into a vein, I, did the Jinx get picked before the vein? The Jinx huh? did not get picked before the vein. I don't know why you wouldn't go with somebody a little bit uh, longer range to try to punish the vein. Uh, as you see, J4 once again in the mid lane, trying for a gank. Seraphine playing very far back, though. Eskimo Lizard, knowing they don't have the flash, trying to play a little bit defensively as they try to poke out Irison here in the mid lane. Keep your eyes on the junglers right here, both hovering towards the bottom side of the map, both doing their bottom clear, which means, A, they're near the bot side right now, could have some gank potential, but B, as Moomoo pings, B, they're going to move into their top side soon, getting those Krugs, getting those Raptors, depending which side you're on. And top sider might be in trouble. Good clear here from Michigan. Going to be able to set up for drag a little bit by getting this vision. All right. Irison has teleport on the Syndra. Did not have teleport in game one, so there's double teleport on both sides here in game two. We'll see if that makes a difference. Uh, right now, farm advantage in the top lane is about two waves in favor of Josh's cool, uh, but that's evened out by Irison in the mid lane, who's up a wave and a half. Junglers are about even, ADCs are about even. Uh, and it looks like Raka has a bit of an advantage in the bot side. Uh, because she also did take Relic Shield, so she ha is helping with the farm with the Relic Shield. So uh, not probably the usual Soraka build. I would usually see it with Spell Thief, but we'll see if Relic Shield does help her stay alive here. As uh, you see Orn with the Bomby Cinder in lane, one of the perks of Orn, you don't have to back to get your items. 
Yeah, I do actually enjoy the Relic Shield. Um, and then other AP champs as well, when you're trying to play a little more safe, especially against a bruiser like Galia, who, you know, if you get up close in person, that Shield of Durand can spell a whole lot of trouble. Uh, even on champs like Zillion, I don't mind taking uh, the Execute items instead. Go for a little bit extra HP, a little bit of survivability in the early game. So I like the pick from Junior. Really shows that they're focused on the late game here, Jim. Josh is cool abusing Shark Bay in the top lane with those cleavers. Almost a three wave advantage in farm. Shark Bay gonna have to back here. Uh, he's trying to at least, but uh, Josh is cool just not letting him do it. The action is all down here in the bot lane, and I know I'm talking about the top lane as the uh, Drake is up. And it looks like Michigan already on the Drake, and it looks like this one might go for free, and it does. Absolutely free Drake there to start it off. So that's the cloud. So we'll see what this game's going to be as Shark Bay stopped from backing again. So not able to farm, not able to go back down 22 farm right now, which is almost four waves of farm. And almost going to get the plate here is Mundo on the top side as well. I'd be very careful though. Mundo very low is holding on the ulti, but one tower shot and you hand over a lot of that momentum, right? You give some free gold over. It's not first blood, but it still hurts. Mundo backing. If I'm going to, I might teleport right back to lane, keep the bullying up. My bot side's doing well. They just got a kill, Jim. I, they're going to walk it back out, save the teleport. But honestly, I may have been right back to bullying. Give me your lunch money. He can he can walk back knowing that Orn's walking back. He can walk back. You, if your Josh is cool, you have to save your teleport to try to follow Shark Bay if he tries to make a move anywhere else on the map. Josh is cool. His minions are there. He would have information if a teleport came through. I think the top laners are only going to teleport when their opposite number does. Meanwhile, it got a little bit quiet across the map. Everybody decided, hey, maybe a little bit of farm's not a bad thing to do. At the moment, the Redbirds have about a thousand gold lead, depending on where the waves are crashing. Uh, currently in the bottom lane, wave crashing onto the Redbird side. It is in the middle, as you see uh, Shark Bay having to use an ability there to get defensively away from that Mundo, who is still just bullying him, still up three and a half waves of farm in the top. Amumu up a camp in the jungle. Uh, under a wave now is the difference in the mid lane. ADC is still just about equal. So a bit different here. In game one, we saw Shark Bay bullying Josh's cool. Now Josh's cool is saying, anything you can do, I can do better, as the bullying does continue. Looks like J4, that's NanoBand56 in the jungle for CSUDH, handing over the blue buff to Irisen on the Syndra. So that could be huge. Irisen was out of mana, but with the blue buff, gonna get that mana buff uh, and get all that mana back short. Yeah, that's gonna be pretty, pretty big here. Good note on the blue buff. Already bowling Seraphine. Look at this top side play here, Jim. We might have a gank. Josh is cool, dominating right now. And it's more due to the champion pick. Oh, catch them out, dig at the ward. Um, more due to the champion pick rather than the players, right? You notice the Aatrox versus the Malphite. You know who's going to boy in that lane. Josh is cool. Just using Mundo's strengths right now to their fullest. I also want to keep your eyes on the mid lane. Oh. Scuffle. Bit of a kerfuffle. Nano Ben still uh -oh, here, Jim. Uh-oh. Jarvan. Jarvan looking for it. Oh, he's going to get him with the flag and drag. Here we go. Jump Mundo on it. Put him sooner. in the arena. <laughs> And Soraka okay. will go down again to the Vayne. Vayne going to tower dive. Probably going to get the Jinx here as well. And it looks like she is going to live on the backside of that. Wow. And so did Mundo in the top. I believe Mundo blew his ultimate. He did. Mundo had to blow the ultimate. He got put into the arena with Jarvan and Orn. Blew the ultimate. Got the healing. Kept himself alive. Meanwhile, fight in the bot lane. A massive tower dive there. Galio, Amumu, and Vayne all said, nope, we're going under. They got the kills, and all of them are on Vade. It's a 3-0 game, and all of them on the vein. Talk about snowballing in the bot lane. Snowballing indeed. 3-0-0 up CS. Has the Noon Quiver building into their mythic item. So strong right now. Jim, mid lane, Eskimo Lizard, not favored in this matchup. Only down one CS, and actually up a tower plate. So... Despite Seraphine not being a powerful pick in the mid lane, you know, much more of a, okay, our ADC is going to hyper carry. I'm going to help the team out pick. Still playing very, very well. And if you're the Redbirds, you have to be very happy. You have a drag advantage. You're up three kills. Across the board, you're up in tower plates. If I can count them up, you've got one off of each.
each tower without giving up any on your own. Dominant start for them. Absolutely dominant start for them. Um, you know, I was wrong. You know, you know, newsflash, hashtag Coach Jim is wrong. I really thought Irisin on the Syndra would outplay that Seraphine after what we saw him do on the Yone. It just hasn't happened, but uh-oh, Nano Ben looking. He wants to come in there on Seraphine. Gonna have to walk away. Yeah, can't quite find the angle on that one. I also just want to point your eyes towards the gold here. If you tap X on your keyboard, spectators or Jim, as we have a quick pause for the gold advantage on the bot side. I mean, it's it's over a thousand on this vein. I mean, even on the support, it's three hundred there. In the mid lane, it's 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 only up thirty on the Syndra. Right? It's three thousand seven hundred, three thousand seven hundred thirty. Very, very balanced across the board. And then you come to the top lane. 800 gold lead for this Mundo, Jim. Yeah. Uh, that's it's huge. It's absolutely huge. Uh, Mundo is up. Amumu is up. Vayne is up. Uh, Galio to a smaller extent. But all of the money. And it's spread out. Even though Vayne has all three of the kills, the money is spread out. And, I mean... Cinder's only up by 30. Really, Cinder and Seraphine are tied. If, if yeah, dead really heat. keeping it 100. Yeah. Dead heat. So, uh, and the Mundos is based all on farm. Top lane has been an island. One visit from a jungler, uh, Nano Band 56 on the J4 went up there. That was the only visit we've seen. Uh, Amumu has been quiet this game, except for that tower dive in the bot side. But otherwise, Amumu would been kind of quiet, uh, but he hasn't needed to do really anything else. Uh, uh, I, I say am we still paused stuck at eleven thirty. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck at eleven twenty-five. I say we pause at eleven thirty just for posterity. Yeah, I am also so, stuck at eleven twenty-five, but I'm good with an eleven uh, thirty pause. Eleven thirty pause. Just to make sure we're all on the same page. We don't want to get out of whack here again for everyone in chat. Um, also still stuck at eleven twenty-five. So as soon as we get moving here, but you're absolutely right. Farm basically in the top side. As I'm going here, I hate to pause in the middle of a team fight. Let's not do it. Let's keep rolling. Yeah, let's I just say. keep going. So, uh. Vayne going deep in there as there was a gank and a counter gank. Amumu trying to get in there. Got one bandage. Decided uh, maybe not go for the second one this time. Vayne was way deep. Used her Q to roll out. Jarvan looking to get tricky over the wall maybe. Doesn't have to get tricky with it. Oh, and couldn't quite get to his flag. Didn't matter. Burned the ultimate. Jinx will get credit for the kill on the Galio. So tried to go over the wall with it and just couldn't quite reach the flag that he dropped. Couldn't reach the flag and read flag and drag not coming through this drag started here, but in comes Nano Ben, SR Jr. here and Alex Andrew. Looks like they're gonna take this drag away from the gym or we're gonna have a bit of a dragon dance. Uh headed back to the bot side though is Jinx and Soraka. Looks like they're seeding the dragon over to the red bird potentially. You know, they've got vision in there, they'll know if something more actually there's a control word on it, so they actually won't know. They could be seeding that. I think you are correct there, Ethan. Oh, no. And, ooh, just barely getting away. Once again, though, uh, Flash is expended in the mid lane, so both mid laners now no Flash. As we see, Shark Bay finally starting to get some uh, get somewhere in the top lane with the damage he is putting down. Yeah, lots of damage being done here. They do pick up the dragon. We will see Ocean Soul for the first time in this match. More and more, it looks like this is sliding the Redbird's way. And, Jim, I've got to see something from the Tauros here in the mid game i need them to make a declaration based in actions that they are here to compete and contend because right now it's all coming up birds at the moment you are absolutely correct uh and just look at the farm totals you know vein up about 20 uh mundo up almost 30 no i'm sorry 34 in the top lane uh jungle is up three camps just a lot going on, but he's speaking of stuff going on. Here's Cinder. Amuma goes in, goes, throws one bandage, doesn't catch what he wants. Will catch out the Soraka there. Soraka will go down. So the Soraka pick, we were, we were hoping to see her keeping everyone else alive. Can't even keep herself alive. Shark Bay getting damage there on Josh's school in the top lane. Three bot now is Seraphine is here. Amumu's still hanging around as well. Uh, Cinder and Jinx might just want to back off. That's a concerted push bot lane to take out that tower as we have a little bit of a lag issue here at 13.55. Corrects itself. I don't know about that one, as that looked suspicious hitbox on Michigan's uh, bandage on that one. But they're going to say he got it. 
damage coming back out, and they're just going to push them away. But that means they're not on the tower. They four went to the tower to dive it, looking for kills. Didn't quite make it. Galio ultimate was expended. Cinder coming back in. Look out, Soraka. She will get in there. Vayne in the background will take that. It'll be first tower going to Vayne. And she might have got uh, exclusive gold off that tower. And she did get that kill. Vayne with so much money here for the Red Bulls. Yeah, a lot of money coming through, but now I've been recouping some of that, tossing that rift in the mid lane, the wave going as well, going to help out Irushin push that in a little bit. Josh is cool on the top side, continuing to just push their lead. They are exerting their dominance over Shark Bay right now. That cleaver misses, but man, that's got to be one of about five or ten cleavers only that have missed all game long, Jim. Something to point out, they... Uh... CSUDH dropped the Rift Herald in the mid lane, but it was too late to get any plates. So there was no money conferred there by that Rift Herald. Yeah, just the progress on that tower. Once again, that will help out. Irushin push that in, but we'll see if it matters because right now, Eskimo Lizard has really, really just been holding up for themselves, only trailing 6 CS, actually up in gold right now by 100 or so. So really really doing well the seraphine pick has come through in a big way yet again and they've traded lanes the bot lane has swapped mid a mumu sitting there looking for maybe something over the wall oh no but the, uh it looks like cinder not gonna go bot lane cinder gonna try to come in here mid lane it's a possible four v it's a possible three v three here in the mid lane as we're watching them duel in the top lane cinder hanging around Scatters the weak, gets a double stun there, gets a little bit of damage down, but has to back up. They're losing their ward. But there are four members of CSUDH in the mid lane. We're going to see what gonna, what's going to happen here as the dueling in the top lane continues. At some point, Shark Bay is going to have to get out of the top lane so he can use his team fight ultimate in team fight. Yeah, we do see that the action in the mid lane scatter and converge here just a little bit. Eskimo Lizard alongside Carmo, just kind of chilling there in the mid lane. Nano Ben, Alexandro there. Irushin finally going to the bot side here, Jim. May claim some of that free farm. Doesn't have teleport available, so will not be in the mid lane for this fight whatsoever unless it shifts a little bit. Unless it shifts a little bit. Amumu not there at the moment, too. Both teams having players backing. I don't think that one's going to turn into the fight. I think everybody's trying to back to get prepared for that Drake fight. Once again, though, Shark Bay cannot get out of lane. Every time yeah. he tries, just gets cleavered, cannot get out of lane. Hiding behind tower, Josh is cool. He's going to take that tower if Shark Bay is not careful. Uh, the Redbirds set up on the Drake. It is the first of what will be many, hopefully, Ocean Souls here. Uh, especially looking for many if you're on the side of CSUDH. Be very disappointing. This was the only, or one of only two Ocean Drakes here for the Toros. Josh is cool backing on the top side, maybe getting some items, preparing a teleport for this fight, wanting to get some more item advantage. We'll go back, scoop up Mercury Treads. Oh, Bandit Shots barely missing their gym. I think that this mid lane is all just for show right here. They, they really just showed up. Made them walk back a little bit. Now they're going to fall back on this free dragon. It's absolutely a free dragon. If you look at how much they invested in vision around it, it was, I think, about 400 gold worth of vision around in and around that dragon pit. Uh, and just nowhere nowhere for uh, CSUDH to come in there. Uh, I did just notice, and I'm hoping our, uh, our producer can fix this. Uh, okay, and he, I'm not even going to say it. He's going to fix it. I'm not going to say it. If you didn't notice at home, too late. He's going to get it fixed. Um... He's a good guy, our producer. And uh, so, but yeah, currently a four and a half thousand gold lead. And before in, in game one, we said, oh, 4,000 gold at 27 minutes. That's not that much. Four and a half thousand at 18 minutes, though, is a lot of gold here. As Galio could be a man without a country. They're looking for him. They're pinging him. Somebody's got to go get him and he's going to get out. Yeah, absolutely gets out scotch free there. Josh is so cool. And Josh is cool. I mean, I'm, pretty, I'm sure he's so cool, but he's also just cool. Pushing in this top side. Shark Bay can do absolutely nothing under that tower. Looking like Shark Island right now. Just absolutely stranded up there. Josh is cool. Having themselves quite 
the game across the board and press stuff from the Redbirds. Only one death, and it came on the Galio, your lowest priority champ, right? Your support. So they are feeling good across the board, Jim. As a fight might be brewing here, a lot of pings. They're gathering on the top side. Uh oh, dive coming, dive incoming. And Sharkbait is going to back up. The tower's yeah. gone. He knows it. And you know, Josh is cool. If you notice, he was sitting there. He was poking under tower. He was procking his demolition, uh, his demolish, but he never actually used it. I don't think Josh is cool wanted to knock that tower down. I think Josh is cool wanted Shark Bay under that tower as long as possible to keep the team fight ultimate away from team fights. I think you're absolutely right. Never got the demolish to go. Finally gets to go there. But now that that tower is gone, Jim cracks the map open can do whatever they want, can roam wherever they want. This is only going to get uglier. Mundo is about to be everywhere across this map. Josh is cool, but have a big game. Speaking of, uh, Syndra did take the tower in the bot lane, but here we go, right here in the edge of the jungle. Amumu trying to stay alive. He will go down. Galio comes in. Galio might be in trouble there. Orn unable to hit the ultimate. Galio going to use every ability possible to get away. Uh, gonna look for a taunt, gonna get a triple taunt there, and, and we'll go down the Soraka of all people grabbing that one. Uh, so two kills back to back there for CSUDH, possibly exactly what they needed, and they're gonna try to make a Baron call right here. They have five on the Baron. Vayne is in the back on the right, Mundo is in the back on the left. Was that bait on the Baron? I don't know. I don't think they know. They're taking so much damage from the Baron, and they're gonna have to fall back here. I, I think fall they, back indeed. That, I, that was a risky call there, Jim, but I think it was just to bait out, see if they could get something else. Two kills going the way of the Toros there. Big comeback. This is what they needed. They got them both on the Jinx, who has the Kraken Slayer. This could be the start of a big turnaround, but Jim, one drag away from Soul are the Redbirds. You can't give up this last drag if you want to climb back in this game. Absolutely cannot. I would like to point out Soraka did get that second kill. Jinx had a kill. I don't actually know where Jinx got her first kill, but one of those kills did go onto the Soraka, which is not where you want it. Not where you want it at all, Jim. We're going to see them just clear some waves here on the backside. Soraka feeding Jinx a little bit more farm, just standing there in the mid lane with them. See a little bit of ward clearing. Michigan doing their job. Jinx trying to scare them off. Not going to do a whole ton. Jim, we've got our next drag in about a minute. Talk to me about what's coming up. Well, what's coming up is we're going to see a the first 5v5 teammate. We're going to see the first 5v5 team uh, team fight here. And Shark Bay going to have his ultimate fort and fight all five ultimates up on both teams. I'm sorry, and Galio's will be up by the time the dragon comes up. So there will be 10 ultimates available. It's going to have to be Orn. Orn's going to have to hit at least a triple with the Orn horn. If Orn doesn't triple with the Orn horn, then we're going to have an issue uh, because that's what he's there for. Orn is there to tank damage and knock people sky high. If he hits a good horn, Syndra scatters the weak well. Jarvan puts the right people in the arena. I think Jinx can sit in the back with some rockets. She's got the Kraken. She's got all of her attack speed. I think she uh, she goes and finds some rockets. Everybody in chat is too young for that reference. Go, go watch the Rockets, a great movie. Oh, Jim. Oh, I saw it, Ethan. Go ahead. Talk about it. I was just going to say that Alti sent right down Main Street there. We've got a scrap over Dragon, Jim. I'm going to let you take this one away. Ornhorn comes out and misses everyone. It's a 5v4. Galio going to come in. Galio going to get a couple knocked up here. Uh, they go in. Nano Ben goes in on the vein. Gets Has to go golden there because he was getting taken down. Mundo will get the kill. Mundo will be traded back. Uh, and let's see what I can get here. Oh. Cinder scatters the weak. We'll get the vein. Orn goes down. Amumu going to go down. And it's a two for five. Absolutely annihilated there. The Soraka alt in the middle, keeping people alive long enough to do extra damage. Two kills go on the Jinx. Two kills go on the Syndra. One kill goes on the Orn. You got your money where you want your money. And now they're going to go take mid tower as well. Mundo picks up the Jarvan, but otherwise it's Jinx getting a Mumu, Syndra getting the double, both Galio and Vayne, and Orn 
picking up a bit of revenge on the Mundo there. Big, big fight for the Toros, Jim. They are firmly back in this game, trailing just 2K gold. They're down two drags now. Most importantly, they do not give up the soul. They're pinging Baron here. They are pinging Baron here. My producer said something. If you could say it again, I'm going to keep calling while he talks in my ear. Uh, I think the ping was heard around the world, though. I think the ping was heard around the world, though, uh, as setting up around it are the Redbirds. Redbirds have three in front of it, one top, one mid. Uh, and Syndra is bot lane. Her teleport is going to be up, though. So four teleports going to be up as by touching that, uh, that ward, they give themselves away. If they just leave the ward there, it's already denied by the control ward. As soon as you touch a denied ward, it does ping that it has been hit. So everyone knows where everyone is. Uh, let's see if Syndra keeps pushing by lane, going for that free tower, or if she will try to teleport in. All of the vision around Baron has been taken care of. Syndra does not have a lot of good teleportation targets. As look at all of the vision there around the Baron. They're on it. Here we go. They're doing Five it. Five seconds on Jim. the Baron. And I think they're going to let it go. I think it's possible. And there's the turn. They have Baron aggro. They have to make a choice. Are they going to turn or not? Syndra TP'd in. Here we go. Uh, really good. Seraphine out there gets a double charm. Soraka alt comes out, keeping people alive. Soraka will be the first one to go down. And CSUDH running away here. Just running. Orn going to go down. Oh. So it's 0 for 2. Over, I'm sorry. Yeah, 0 for 2 at the moment. The side of the Redbirds. Jinx with a oh. great rocket, but they will get the Syndra in behind. Looking to possibly get something. And there's the Amumu. So Jinx in the back trying to carry. They get a slow on to the Mundo. So it turns into a 2. I'm sorry. A th yeah, a 2 for 3 at the moment. So CSUDH not quite giving up everything we thought they were going to give up as Alejandro. I called him out in game one about his ultimates, proving me wrong here in game two as a second straight Jinx rocket, finding a target, getting a kill, and then following it up with a second kill uh, to the Amumu. Amumu, Seraphine, and Mundo getting kills there. Notably, Bane does not gym. That's going to be big. We see this Jinx starting to snowball. This Jinx is starting to get kills. Like you said, Alexandro is playing a much, much better game than they did in game number one. And Carmel's just not keeping pace right now. I mean, I'm, that's just, we're going to call it what it is. Carmel is not finding the kills these fights. Having a great game. Don't get me wrong. Four, one, and three. Absolutely fantastic. S scary thought. Slightly out farmed. Slightly being out killed. Slight, uh, scary thought here, Ethan. Alejandro has more gold right now than Carmel on the vein. Mm. Scary thought. Jinx has picked up six kills since Vayne's last kill. Since Vayne hit four kills, Alejandro on the Jinx has picked up six. Although the big the big scale right now is Mundo, 2,000 gold up on his counterpart. Uh, 1,200 gold up is the Amumu in the jungle. Uh, but 1,000 gold lead for Syndra in the mid lane. And the supports are very close, and they're both playing support, so their money doesn't really matter quite as much. But look for this Jinx to try to carry. Jinx with the Kraken. Jinx with the Hurricane. That's what they need. The two-item spike there for Jinx. Those rockets are going to be hot and heavy coming in during team fights. As hot another and Drake, heavy, indeed. As yeah, another they're, they're Drake, setting up. less than 45 seconds away from another Drake, Orn has his teleport, so Orn will be able to get here. He has a couple of good targets to teleport to. Good, to They do have some good targets. The wards are coming through here, Jim. They're going to have to contest it from the backside of Pit, though. That is the only thing. You need Alexandro to get in there and do the dirty work. They may have an engage right here, but it kind of falls off. Nothing is found. Retreating. Drag spawning in 25 seconds. And as a five stack moving here, oh, oh, there it is. They called it. They, they knew they were going to go for that control ward. They moved. They protected the ward. The blast cone goes in, so no blast code to go over with. They almost grabbed themselves a pick there. That would have been huge. All of the ultimates available. So 10 ultimates available. We have two five stacks looking for a team fight. Giving up a soul against a Dr. Mundo would be a disaster. This is it. Jim, this feels like it, uh, much of the game comes down to this drag fight. I, I think you're right here, Ethan. And we're going to see where the engage is going to be. You see Vayne sitting in the back. Carmel on the Vayne, sitting in the back where they're supposed to be. 
And let's see where the engage is. The dragon has been aggroed. The dragon has been started. And they're going to see it now. They go in onto the Soraka. She gets dropped. She's going to have to blow her all early. She will blow the all early. Amuu and Soraka both going down. Jarvan going to go down. Tower goes down. I didn't even see where a tower was. Dr. Mundo going to have to try to bail on that one. Scatter the Weak comes out. A lot of damage onto the vein. Syndra trying to run away from the Galio. She's going to get damage down there. She's looking for a little bit more. The Drake did go the way of the Redbirds. Redbirds lost one. Four lost on the side of CSUDH. And not only that, the Dragon Soul goes the way of the Redbirds. Big fight. Bigger objective secured. Scatter of the Week. Not going to find its target there. They're going to continue to be able to push him. They're going to get so much healing and shielding here from this soul. The sustain is just absolutely unreal. And unfortunate there. I thought Cinder might have had enough damage. If she kills that Vayne, she turns on the Galio and kills the Galio as well. Vayne lived by the skin of her teeth. You do notice, though, Vayne on the Kraken this game, not on the shield bow. Yeah, on the Kraken, indeed. Having a similar comp, so may have just come to a bit more wisdom. Maybe see something that they are less scared of in this game, engage-wise. Although, they have a lot more engage here with Nano being on that Jarvan, with that Ornhorn. So, I think that you were right last game. Shouldn't have gone or should have gone with the Kraken, finally comes to the right decision here. More importantly, Jim, they are eyeing up fair in here. This feels like another big fight, but a tough one to win when you aren't the ones with the drag soul. You're going to have to wait till they aggro on Baron. You need the Baron to be doing your heavy lifting for you. Yeah, I, I think it's absolutely right. Not only Baron doing the heavy lifting, but have them put abilities as we have TF Wolfie seeing right there some issues with the support. I guess these keys won't work is what we see in chat. Um, heading back to our camera view, if you'll notice in the background, my green screen did fall. The game got a little too intense, so forgive me. Uh, it's kind of all over the place, but, you know, we'll make it happen. Jim, just, just what do you think some, about this game? Doing some camping there, Ethan? Just a little camping, your tent fell down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a little, little bit of camping. You know, I, I used to be a Boy Scout, so I kind of know what I'm doing, but... Uh, you know, if you my were a Boy Scout, your tent wouldn't have fallen and, down. Yeah, my tent falling here, my tent falling in Boy Scout may be related. I was I was more of like the guy that would sing the songs, you know, the repeat after me songs. So I kept the spirit high, not the tent poles. There you go. Uh, look at this one. I, at this point, I, I'm giving it to the Mundo right now. Just being everywhere, being so tanky, just being a menace to try to kill. Um... Amumu, not, I mean, don't get me wrong, Amumu's still great, but not as useful in this one as he was in game number one. Yeah, absolutely true. The Amumu not doing as much here, Jim. Still being pretty vital. Barely got their alt off in that last fight. Almost died, or did eventually die. I think it was the one return kill. Um, Didn't quite get the effectiveness that we're talking about. Double bandage toss, not as apparent here. Maybe it's not as broke as we think. Maybe, maybe we could cool with all the Silence. rhetoric about the sad mummy <laughs> as we were going to pause at 30-60 once we get going here again. So, your, you know, uh, Mr. Producer, you know what another word for 30-60 is? 31 minutes. <laughs> That's okay. My grandfather used to tell people he was 5 foot 13 inches tall. So, <laughs> do yep. math, Ethan. Do math. Yeah, there. We, I, I'm not a math major. I study video production. All right. Um... <laughs> That's all. There's there's nothing else to that bit. I'm just not nothing else. I'm, nothing I'm, else. Okay. I just suck at math. That's all. But no, this Baron fight. If if the if the soul fight was probably going to be the game. If there's a team fight at Baron, if it goes the way of the Redbirds, we could probably stick a fork in this one. It might be done. Definitely is looking that way. The Redbirds are so strong right now, Jim. They have a gold lead. Is it? Pause at 31 there. I'm all paused and we're ready to rumble. I am also paused. In a lot of places. And even though Jinx is starting to get their feet under them, still down on gold. But it's going to come out to this team fight and vision being cleared, vision being placed. And it's going to have to be a perfect engage here. Going to have to be a perfect engage for a nice little damage coming through there. Taunt. Oh, no. But going to have to. Gonna have to be uh, gonna have to be pretty perfect here. I saw a flash there. Who flashed? Um, not sure, but but the fights continue on the it. front end. I don't see any flashes that were recently used, so it may have been a, a trick of the ears. It, 
May have been. Uh, but this is going to have to be definitely a perfect engage from CSUDH. They're going to have to let the Baron do the heavy lifting. They're going to need all the help they can get. Either that or they just have to give up the Baron. It looks like giving up the Baron might be the call. Jinx ulti? Do we see Rocket coming through? That's, that's the only way. Do we see way. Rocket? Do we see Rocket? I, I don't, I Let's don't go see find some yet. Rockets. No rocket. Let's go find some Rockets. No, no Rocket. Jarvan, though, waiting. Oh, and a stun there stuns the Galio out of his dash. So, a little bit. Ornhorn comes out. Oh, my gosh. And Jarvan goes oh down. Oh, gosh. everyone. That curse of the sad mummy was ridiculous. T take it away, Ethan. I believe there was a fire somewhere. Where do you like to tell people it was? <laughs> there was a fire in the Tumbleweed Factory, and no one was there to put it out, Jim. The hopes of the Tauros up in smoke right there beautiful ulti from the amumu you called them out said they weren't performing but the big alt finger on the r button that, that's all there is to it this game is over not even gonna respawn on the side of csudh this one's just over uh this was a much closer game i i think uh, the redbirds might have puckered up a little bit on that one as there were a couple of team fights that CSUDH definitely took. Much closer indeed. Uh, we gotta love what we see out of that game, as you can see. <laughs> uh, I, and I think it really started in picks and bands. They, they drafted a much better, a much smarter composition, a composition that actually had a focus, right? They had a goal. Uh, the Toros can do that and practice those type of compositions more with high synergy. I think this could be a team that could pick up some wins and get down the stretch, but it, all, it was all Redbirds tonight. It really was. As much as that Jinx was doing work, and Alejandro much better in Game 2 than in Game 1. Much better Game 2 than Game 1. I would have liked to have seen somebody longer range to try to punish the Vayne pick. If you're going into a Vayne, you have to punish it. You can't let her farm, especially she was up farm the entire game. You got to pick a Caitlyn. You got to pick a Varus. Somebody with range. A Jin. Uh, you talked about Jin in game one. Just somebody that can punish the vein for playing a short ranged marksman. And Jinx just doesn't have the range to punish going into the Galio. Just doesn't have it. So, uh, as well as they played the Jinx, I would have liked to have seen a little bit longer range. And I loved Junior in game one on the Nautilus. I thought they played a very smart game. And I think they got targeted here in game number two. I couldn't agree more. The, the Redbirds really brought the heat, Jim. One thing I really love from their gameplay, I'm excited to see if this is a common thing, if we see this in weeks to come, their objective control and how how decisive they are, right? If they didn't get the objectives, we'd be calling them greedy. Guess what? They got them every single time. They set up well. They baited well. They took them well. This is a team that will be dangerous in this division, Jim, if they continue to do that well, because it's such a simple part of the game that has layers of complexity and really determines what teams get big leads. It really does. Looking at the scoreboard here, the big one to point out, and this is a final scoreboard, so this is after the last team fight. Josh is cool on the Mundo. 4,000 gold up on his lane partner. 4,000 gold up on his lane partner. Michigan, two and a half thousand gold up on his lane partner. TF Wolf on the Galio, two thousand gold up on his lane partner. ADC and mid laners, those were closer, but the other three, so far up, that is the entirety of the gold advantage. And if you have three people that just can't go against their their opposing number, you're not going to get a lot done. Yeah, you're just simply not going to get much done, Jim and. I don't think we're doing anything else tonight. We're not getting anything else done as that was our last match of the night. Do you have any parting words to the people who stuck around in chat? We love you. We love you. Don't get it twisted. We, we love, love chat. You. Oh, yeah, we, we love, love chat. Chat, chat knows chat. that. Chat knows we love them. I, I, I hope they know. I hope they know. But do oh, you yeah. have any parting words for chat? It is such sweet sorrow. Uh, I'm just glad to be back. I, I will say that uh, we watched uh, a great Redbird Academy team here going, uh, just dismantling Dominguez Hills which is not something I see a lot. I see Dominguez Hills in Valorant, in Overwatch, in other games, and I see Dominguez Hills running over people. So it was weird to be talking about Dominguez Hills be, be getting beat. They're so good at so many games. Uh, but it was a fun one to watch. Redbirds 
uh, proved that they're going to be tough to beat in that division. But it's just great to be back. It's great to be back. It's great to be sitting virtually next to you, Ethan. Oh, yeah. I love calling games with you. And uh, we're going to have fun this year. At the NECC on Twitter tonight, right now, if you just want to see Jim and I together again, I don't know what the schedule is. I don't know what it looks like. That's not my job. But if you want to see Jim and I together at the NECC, just do it. Just do it. Dad, Bod, God, and the pants. That's the tweet. You get what? What's your emoji? There's a pants emoji. What? What is the dad, God, Bod emoji? Choose one. Uh, I I don't think they've made one for me yet. All right. Well, we'll, we'll when we figure it's that out. It's being in the process. Our our producer producer tells me they're in the process of the dad, Bod, God. Uh, they should also just make a big red X for Coach Jim is wrong, uh, because I'm wrong a lot. That's why I have my own hashtag. Oh gosh, you are wrong a lot. Like I said, yeah, get, get with the NECC if you want to see us two together in the future. But tonight we will be parting our separate ways from you, from each other, from our fantastic production team. We appreciate everyone sticking around this long for our last match of the night. We will catch you next Friday.